The chief cause of failure and unhappiness is trading what you want most for what you want right now. Zig Ziglar Courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes it's the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. Do not ruin an apology with an excuse. True love is born from understanding. Buddha. No evil propensity of the human heart is so powerful that it may not be subdued by discipline. A moment of patience and a moment of anger saves from a thousand minutes of regret. The path to success is to take massive determined action. Tony Robbins Tragedies were at first brought in and instituted to put men in mind of worldly chances and casualties that these things in the ordinary course of nature did so happen that men that were much pleased and delighted by such accidents upon this stage would not by the same things in a greater stage be grieved and afflicted for here you see what is the end of all such things and that even they that cry out so mournfully to Cytheron must bear them for all their cries and exclamations as well as others and in very truth many good things are spoken by these poets as that for example is an excellent passage never go to the past not for happiness not for justification not for excuses let go a little and just let life happen To be ignorant of what occurred before you were born is to remain always a child. Cicero Just because you got away with a bad decision doesn't make it a good decision. No one knows what his powers are until he uses them. Every person is a god in embryo. Its only desire is to be born. Deepak Chopra Failure Failure is an expected part of life. It's how you deal with these setbacks that determines how they will affect you. The key to living a stoic life is to find the successes in the midst of failure. The silver linings in a setback. It's your perspective that makes a situation either positive or negative. Whether or not you can see the good in experiences, while understanding and accepting the situation, is what will ultimately make you a stronger person. Instead of allowing detrimental situations to define you and your attitude, you must realize that as a human being, you have the ability to choose how you respond to situations and that the way in which you perceive these challenges has a tremendous effect on the quality of your life. Anyone who has suffered a great trauma knows firsthand that you cannot control or change what has happened, but you can control how you cope with the incident. Oftentimes, individuals who have been through the greatest challenges have markedly more positive outlooks than those whose lives have been comparatively easy. The goal of a life well lived is not to eliminate failure, but rather to use our failures as information and gain an understanding as to why we failed, what went wrong. When you can do that, you can alter your viewpoint which will make it easier for you to choose how you respond in the future. Being stoic does not mean you don't feel. It simply means you are accepting your failure and choosing how to react in a way that will benefit you, rather than hinder you. Acceptance is a vital part in making the most out of your situations.
Sometimes you must yield in order to win, and sometimes maintaining a low place leads you to win. Men cheat because they don't feel needed. Women because they don't feel loved. The most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Ronald Reagan. Happiness doesn't diminish when you share it. Never compare yourself to others. No one can play your role better than you. Be miserable or motivate yourself. Whatever has to be done, it's always your choice. Wayne Dyer If we had never been troubled by celestial and atmospheric phenomena, nor by fears about death, nor by our ignorance of the limits of pains and desires, we should have had no need of natural science. There is no other quality so essential to success of any kind as the quality of perseverance. It overcomes almost everything, even nature. One of the fastest ways to improve your life is to simply do what you said you were going to do. Homo homini lupus. Man is a wolf to man. Plautus. If you cannot have a faithful friend, be your own friend. Laziness travels so slowly that poverty soon overtakes him. You are controlled by the one who makes you angry. When you want to do something, close your eyes, imagine yourself, and feel it. Jay Shetty Not as though thou hadst thousands of years to live. Death hangs over thee, whilst yet thou livest, whilst thou mayest be good. If you cannot have a faithful friend, be your own friend. Laziness travels so slowly that poverty soon overtakes him. Life has a funny way of surprising us when we're not looking for it. Love is a serious mental disease. Plato. This quote reflects Plato's belief that romantic love can be a powerful force, capable of both uplifting and corrupting the soul. Sometimes a person doesn't want to hear the truth because they don't want their illusions destroyed. Adversity is like a strong wind. It tears away from us all but the things that cannot be torn so that we see ourselves as we really are. Successful people are always looking for opportunities to help others. Unsuccessful people are always asking, what's in it for me? Brian Tracy If the things that produce the pleasures of profligate men really freed them from fears of the mind concerning celestial and atmospheric phenomena, the fear of death and the fear of pain, if further they taught them to limit their desires, we should never have any fault to find with such persons, for they would then be filled with pleasures from every source and would never have pain of body or mind, which is what is bad. Focus on what you can control and let go of what you cannot. Circumstances make man not man's circumstances.
The ultimate aim of martial arts is not having to use them. Get beyond love and grief. Exist for the good of man. Miyamoto Musashi When you stop seeing the world in terms of what you like and what you dislike, and see things for what they truly are in themselves, you would find a great deal more peace in your life. Experience is the teacher of all things. Those who are without compassion cannot see what is seen with the eyes of compassion. Thich Nhat Han. Chance seldom interferes with the wise man. His greatest and highest interests have been, are, and will be directed by reason throughout his whole life. The more thankful you are, the more you attract things to be thankful for. The person who cares less has the most power in a relationship. For we are made for cooperation. Marcus Aurelius Do yourself a favor, get rich. Life gets easier with money, not time. You want to control someone? All you have to do is make them feel afraid. Go for it now. The future is promised to no one. Wayne Dyer A black or malign disposition, an effeminate disposition, an hard, inexorable disposition, a wild, inhuman disposition, a sheepish disposition, a childish disposition, a blockish, a false, a scurril, a fraudulent, a tyrannical. What then? If he be a stranger in the world that knows not the things that are in it, why not be a stranger as well that wonders at the things that are done in it? The heaviest burden we carry is the weight of our expectations. We are not rich by what we possess, but by what we can do without. A fool is known by his speech, and a wise man by silence. Pythagoras Your deepest, darkest moment may be the best thing that ever happens to you. It does not require many words to speak the truth. Let go of the search for truth. What you seek is already within you. Muji How happy is man in this his power that hath been granted unto him, that he needs not do anything but what God shall approve, and that he may embrace contentedly whatsoever God doth send unto him. Leave the house messy, the yard unmowed for the weekend. You will remember the fun, not the clean house or yard. Make time for fun. What the caterpillar calls the end, the rest of the world calls a butterfly. The mind is everything, what you think you become, Buddha. Nowhere can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul. Always place your becoming above your current being. The world is a reflection of your own mind. Muji.
did you not lately contend with me and say that you are free, but Aprula has hindered me? Tell the truth then, slave, and do not run away from your masters, nor deny nor venture to produce anyone to assert your freedom when you have so many evidences of your slavery. And indeed, when a man is compelled by love to do something contrary to his opinion, and at the same time sees the better but has not the strength to follow it, one might consider him still more worthy of excuse as being held by a certain violent and in a manner a divine power. But who could endure you who are in love with old women and old men, and wipe the old women's noses, and wash them and give them presents, and also wait on them like a slave when they are sick, and at the same time wish them dead, and question the physicians whether they are sick unto death? And again, when in order to obtain these great and much admired magistracies and honors, you kiss the hands of these slaves of others, and so you are not the slave even of free men. Then you walk about before me in stately fashion, praetor or a consul. Do I not know how you became a praetor? By what means you got your consulship? Who gave it to you? I would not even choose to live if I must live by help of Felician and endure his arrogance and servile insolence. For I know what a slave is, who is fortunate, as he thinks, and puffed up by pride. You then, a man may say, are you free? I wish by the gods and pray to be free, but I am not yet able to face my masters. I still value my poor body. I value greatly the preservation of it entire, though I do not possess it entire. But I can point out to you a free man that you may no longer seek an example. Diogenes was free. How was he free? Not because he was born of free parents, but because he was himself free, because he had cast off all the handles of slavery, and it was not possible for any man to approach him, nor had any man the means of laying hold of him to enslave him. He had everything easily loosed, everything only hanging to him. If you laid hold of his property, he would rather have let it go and be yours than he would have followed you for it. If you had laid hold of his leg, he would have let go his leg. If of all his body, all his poor body, his intimates, friends, country, just the same. For he knew from whence he had them, and from whom, and on what conditions. His true parents indeed, the gods, and his real country he would never have deserted, nor would he have yielded to any man in obedience to them or to their orders, nor would any man have died for his country more readily, for he was not used to inquire when he should be considered to have done anything on behalf of the whole of things. But he remembered that everything which is done comes from thence, and is done on behalf of that country, and is commanded by him who administers it. Therefore, see what Diogenes himself says and writes. For this reason, he says, Diogenes, it is in your power to speak both with the king of the Persians and with Archidamus, the king of the Lacedaemonians, as you please. Was it because he was born of free parents? I suppose all the Athenians and all the Lacedaemonians, because they were born of slaves, could not talk with them as they wished but feared and paid court to them. Why then does he say that it is in his power? Because I do not consider the poor body to be my own, because I want nothing, because law is everything to me and nothing else is. These were the things which permitted him to be free, and that you may not think that I show you the example of a man who is a solitary person, who has neither wife nor children, nor country, nor friends, nor kinsmen, by whom he could be bent and drawn in various directions, take Socrates and observe that he had a wife and children, but he did not consider them as his own, that he had a country, so long as it was fit to have one, and in such a manner as was fit, friends and kinsmen also, but he held all in subjection to law and to the obedience due to it. 
For this reason he was the first to go out as a soldier, when it was necessary, and in war he exposed himself to danger most unsparingly, and when he was sent by the tyrants to seize Leon, he did not even deliberate about the matter, because he thought that it was a base action, and he knew that he must die if it so happened. And what difference did that make to him? For he intended to preserve something else, not his poor flesh, but his fidelity, his honorable character. These are things which could not be assailed nor brought into subjection. Then, when he was obliged to speak in defense of his life, did he behave like a man who had children, who had a wife? No, but he behaved like a man who has neither. And what did he do when he was to drink the poison, and when he had the power of escaping from prison, and when Crito said to him, Escape for the sake of your children? What did Socrates say? Did he consider the power of escape as an unexpected gain? By no means. He considered what was fit and proper. But the rest he did not even look at or take into the reckoning. For he did not choose, he said, to save his poor body, but to save that which is increased and saved by doing what is just, and is impaired and destroyed by doing what is unjust. Socrates will not save his life by a base act. He who would not put the Athenians to the vote when they clamored that he should do so. He who refused to obey the tyrants. He who discoursed in such a manner about virtue and right behavior. It is not possible to save such a man's life by base acts, but he is saved by dying, not by running away. For the good actor also preserves his character by stopping when he ought to stop, better than when he goes on acting beyond the proper time. What then shall the children of Socrates do? If, said Socrates, I had gone off to Thessaly, would you have taken care of them? And if I depart to the world below, will there be no man to take care of them? See how he gives to death a gentle name and mocks it. But if you and I had been in his place, we should have immediately answered as philosophers that those who act unjustly must be repaid in the same way. And we should have added, I shall be useful to many if my life is saved, and if I die, I shall be useful to no man. For if it had been necessary, we should have made our escape by slipping through a small hole. And how in that case should we have been useful to any man? For where would they have been then staying? Or if we were useful to men while we were alive? Should we not have been much more useful to them by dying when we ought to die, and as we ought? And now, Socrates being dead, no less useful to men, and even more useful, is the remembrance of that which he did or said when he was alive. Think of these things, these opinions, these words. Look to these examples if you would be free, if you desire the thing according to its worth, and what is the wonder if you buy so great a thing at the price of things so many and so great? For the sake of this which is called liberty, some hang themselves, others throw themselves down precipices, and sometimes even whole cities have perished. And will you not for the sake of the true and unassailable and secure liberty give back to God when he demands them the things which he has given? Will you not, as Plato says, study not to die only, but also to endure torture and exile and scourging and, in a word, to give up all which is not your own? If you will not, you will be a slave among slaves, even you be ten thousand times a consul. And if you make your way up to the palace, you will no less be a slave. And you will feel that perhaps philosophers utter words which are contrary to common opinion, as Cleanthes also said, but not words contrary to reason. For you will know by experience that the words are true, and that there is no profit from the things which are valued and eagerly sought to those who have obtained them. And to those who have not yet obtained them, there is an imagination that when these things are come, all that is good will come with them. 
Then, when they are come, the feverish feeling is the same, the tossing to and fro is the same, the satiety, the desire of things which are not present. For freedom is acquired not by the full possession of the things which are desired, but by removing the desire. And that you may know that this is true, as you have labored for those things, so transfer your labor to these. Be vigilant for the purpose of acquiring an opinion which will make you free. Pay court to a philosopher instead of to a rich old man. Be seen about a philosopher's doors. You will not disgrace yourself by being seen. You will not go away empty nor without profit if you go to the philosopher as you ought. And if not, try at least. The trial is not disgraceful. You have two choices, evolve or repeat. Emotion, which is suffering, ceases to be suffering as soon as we form a clear and precise picture of it. Let your speech be better than silence, or be silent. Dionysius If you punish a child for what is bad and reward for what is good, then he will do good for the sake of profit. Do more. The race is won by the horse that outstrips its rivals by a head. If you don't make peace with your past, it will keep showing up in your present. Wayne Dyer Of Tranquility Consider, you who are going into court, what you wish to maintain and what you wish to succeed in. For if you wish to maintain a will conformable to nature, you have every security, every facility, you have no troubles. For if you wish to maintain what is in your own power and is naturally free, and if you are content with these, what else do you care for? For who is the master of such things? Who can take them away? If you choose to be modest and faithful, who shall not allow you to be so? If you choose not to be restrained or compelled, who shall compel you to desire what you think that you ought not to desire? Who shall compel you to avoid what you do not think fit to avoid? But what do you say? The judge will determine against you something that appears formidable, but that you should also suffer in trying to avoid it. How can he do that? When then the pursuit of objects and the avoiding of them are in your power, what else do you care for? Let this be your preface, this your narrative, this your confirmation, this your victory, this your peroration, this your applause. Therefore Socrates said to one who was reminding him to prepare for his trial, Do you not think then that I have been preparing for it all my life? By what kind of preparation? I have maintained that which was in my own power. How then? I have never done anything unjust either in my private or in my public life. But if you wish to maintain externals also, your poor body, your little property, and your little estimation, I advise you to make from this moment all possible preparation, and then consider both the nature of your judge and your adversary. If it is necessary to embrace his knees, embrace his knees. If to weep, weep. If to groan, groan. For when you have subjected to externals what is your own, then be a slave and do not resist, and do not sometimes choose to be a slave, and sometimes not choose. But with all your mind be one or the other, either free or a slave, either instructed or uninstructed, either a well-bred cock or a mean one, either endure to be beaten until you die, or yield at once, and let it not happen to you to receive many stripes, and then to yield. But if these things are base, determine immediately, 
Where is the nature of evil and good? It is where truth is. Where truth is and where nature is, there is caution. Where truth is, there is courage where nature is. For what do you think? Do you think that if Socrates had wished to preserve externals, he would have come forward and said, Anitus and Melitus can certainly kill me, but to harm me, they are not able. Was he so foolish as not to see that this way leads not to the preservation of life and fortune, but to another end? What is the reason then that he takes no account of his adversaries and even irritates them? Just in the same way my friend Heraclitus, who had a little suit in Rhodes about a bit of land and had proved to the judges that his case was just, said when he had come to the peroration of his speech, I will neither entreat you nor do I care what we judgment you will give, and it is you rather than I who are on your trial. And thus he ended the business. What need was there of this? Only do not entreat, but do not also say, I do not entreat, unless there is a fit occasion to irritate purposely the judges, as was the case with Socrates. And you, if you are preparing such a peroration, why do you wait? Why do you obey the order to submit to trial? For if you wish to be crucified, wait, and the cross will come. But if you choose to submit and to plead your cause as well as you can, you must do what is consistent with this object, provided you maintain what is your own. For this reason also, it is ridiculous to say, suggest something to me. What should I suggest to you? Well, form my mind so as to accommodate itself to any event. Why, that is just the same as if a man who is ignorant of letters should say, Tell me what to write when any name is proposed to me. For if I should tell him to write Dion, and then another should come and propose to him not the name of Dion, but that of Theon, what will be done? What will he write? But if you behave practiced writing, you are also prepared to write anything that is required. If you are not, what? Can I now suggest? For if circumstances require something else, what will you say, or what will you do? Remember then this general precept, and you will need no suggestion. But if you gape after externals, you must of necessity ramble up and down in obedience to the will of your master. And who is the master? He who has the power over the things which you seek to gain or try to avoid. Genius lies in the ability to distinguish the difficult from the impossible. Mistakes are proof that you're trying. If someone succeeds in provoking you, realize that your mind is complicit in the provocation. Epictetus What we do now echoes in eternity. No matter how hard you work, you can't have everything you want. Eventually, most of us end up settling in some part of our life. The pendulum of the mind oscillates between sense and nonsense, not between right and wrong. Carl Jung No man can hinder thee to live as thy nature doth require. Nothing can happen unto thee but what the common good of nature doth require. Hope for the best, plan for the worst. Hardship often prepares an ordinary person for an extraordinary destiny. That which isn't good for the hive isn't good for the bee. Marcus Aurelius Never make a permanent decision based on temporary feelings.
be selfish with your time. Feelings, whether of compassion or irritation, should be welcomed, recognized and treated on an absolutely equal basis, because both are ourselves. Tishnat Han Word after word, every one by itself, must the things that are spoken be conceived and understood, and so the things that are done, purpose after purpose, every one by itself likewise. And as in matter of purposes and actions, we must presently see what is the proper use and relation of every one. So of words must we be as ready to consider of every one what is the true meaning and signification of it according to truth and nature, however it be taken in common use. Expect nothing. Appreciate everything. Be grateful for the little things in your life to find inner peace. At first you choose a partner based on appearance and enjoy it until you realize that your children will be raised not based on appearance but based on values. Memento mori. Remember that you must die. Latin proverb. Do not set yourself on fire to keep others warm. No one can construct for you the bridge upon which precisely you must cross the stream of life. No one but yourself alone. The sense of I is the most basic experience and the root of all experiences. Nisargadatta Maharaj Consider how many different things, whether they concern our bodies or our souls in a moment of time come to pass in every one of us, and so thou wilt not wonder if many more things, or rather all things that are done, can at one time subsist and coexist in that both one and general, which we call the world. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. There is no ending to true love. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Franklin D. Roosevelt The time for action is now. It's never too late to do something. The most exquisite pleasure is giving pleasure to others. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Rumi Mastery Self-mastery is a vital component of freedom. If you do not have mastery over yourself, you will never be truly free from conflict, dilemma, or self-doubt. Freedom and self-mastery allow you to be self-determining, which in turn empowers you to be the master of your own life, your own journey, and your own destiny. The skill of mastery gives you the ability to control your emotions, your perspectives, and your reactions while self-mastery makes it capable for you to determine your own actions and not allow external actions to control you. Learning how to be a master of your emotions frees you from negative mood dysregulation while increasing your ability to better manage your reactions and coping strategies. Self-mastery is seen as the final goal in living a stoic life. To have mastery over yourself is to truly know and accept the things you can and cannot control.
Keep your personal life private and not telling everyone everything even when you have a lot to say is top tier self care. You need enemies to succeed. The first rule is to keep an untroubled spirit. The second is to look things in the face and know them for what they are. Marcus Aurelius Make more moves and less announcements. The most exquisite pleasure is giving pleasure to others. Leadership requires belief in the mission and unyielding perseverance to achieve victory. Jocko Willink Cast away from the opinion, and thou art safe. And what is it that hinders thee from casting of it away? When thou art grieved at anything, Hast thou forgotten that all things happen according to the nature of the universe, and that him only it concerns who is in fault, and moreover that what is now done is that which from ever hath been done in the world, and will ever be done, and is now done everywhere? How nearly all men are allied one to another by a kindred not of blood, nor of seed, but of the same mind. Thou hast also forgotten that every man's mind partakes of the deity, and issueth from thence, and that no man can properly call anything his own, no, not his son, nor his body, nor his life. For that they all proceed from that one who is the giver of all things, that all things are but opinion, that no man lives properly, but that very instant of time which is now present, and therefore that no man, whensoever he dieth, can properly be said to lose any more than an instant of time. There is a healthy amount of distrust to have in everyone. You cannot change the direction of the wind, but you can adjust your sails to reach your destination. In anger, we should refrain both from speech and action. Pythagoras One of the most dangerous things you can do is compare your life to somebody else's. It's not a race. It's your journey. Don't allow your mind to tell your heart what to do. The mind gives up easily. The more you are grateful for what you have, the more you will have to be grateful for. Zig Ziglar There never was such a thing as absolute justice, but only agreements made in mutual dealings among men in whatever places at various times, providing against the infliction or suffering of harm. Learning to let go should be learned from learning to get it. One secret of success in life is for a man to be ready for his opportunity when it comes. The worst form of inequality is to try to make unequal things equal. Aristotle Surround yourself with people who inspire you to become even better. Life is just a race against time, so have a good time. The more you know yourself, the more clarity there is. Self-knowledge has no end. Eckhart Tolle Of him that brought me up, not to be fondly addicted to either of the two great factions of the courses in the circus, called Prasini and Venity, nor in the amphitheater partially to favor any of the gladiators or fencers, 
as either the parmulari or the secutores. Moreover, to endure labor, nor to need many things, when I have anything to do, to do it myself rather than by others, not to meddle with many businesses, and not easily to admit of any slander. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. If you conquer not yourself, you will be conquered by yourself. There are no constraints on the human mind, no walls around the human spirit, no barriers to our progress except those we ourselves erect. Ronald Reagan Do not spend time beating on a wall hoping to transform it into a door. Everything outside of this moment is just imagination. You cannot tailor make the situations in life, but you can tailor make the attitudes to fit those situations. Zig Ziglar Of everything that presents itself unto thee, to consider what the true nature of it is, and to unfold it, as it were, by dividing it into that which is formal, that which is material, the true use or end of it, and the just time that it is appointed to last. Be like the cliff against which the waves continually break, but it stands firm and tames the fury of the water around it. Use things, not people. Love people, not things. I am not bound to win, but I am bound to be true. I am not bound to succeed, but I am bound to live by the light that I have. Abraham Lincoln Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. When you come to the end of the journey, you realize there was no journey. Muji. To a certain rhetorician who was going up to Rome on a suit. When a certain person came to him who was going up to Rome on account of a suit which had regard to his rank, Epictetus inquired the reason of his going to Rome, and the man then asked what he thought about the matter. Epictetus replied, If you ask me what you will do in Rome, whether you will succeed or fall, I have no rule about this. But if you ask me how you will fare, I can tell you. If you have right opinions, you will fare well. If they are false, you will fare ill. For to every man the cause of his acting is opinion. For what is the reason why you desired to be elected governor of the Nasians? Your opinion. What is the reason that you are now going up to Rome? Your opinion, and going in winter, and with danger and expense. I must go. What tells you this? Your opinion. Then if opinions are the causes of all actions, and a man has bad opinions, such as the cause may be, such also is the effect. Have we then all sound opinions, both you and your adversary? And how do you differ? But have you sounder opinions than your adversary? Why? You think so. And so does he think that his opinions are better. And so do madmen. This is a bad criterion. But show to me that you have made some inquiry into your opinions, and have taken some pains about them. And as now, you are sailing to Rome in order to become governor of the Canossians, and you are not content to stay at home with the honors which you had, but you desire something greater and more conspicuous. So when did you ever make a voyage for the purpose of examining your own opinions and casting them out, if you have any that are bad? 
Whom have you approached for this purpose? What time have you fixed for it? What age? Go over the times of your life by yourself, if you are ashamed of me. When you were a boy, did you examine your own opinions? And did you not then, as you do all things now, do as you did do? And when you were become a youth and attended the rhetoricians, and yourself practiced rhetoric, what did you imagine that you were deficient in? And when you were a young man and engaged in public matters, and pleaded causes yourself, and were gaining reputation, who then seemed your equal? And when would you have submitted to any man examining and show that your opinions are bad? What then do you wish me to say to you? Help me in this matter. I have no theorem, rule, for this. Nor have you, if you came to me for this purpose, come to me as a philosopher, but as to a seller of vegetables or a shoemaker. For what purpose then have philosophers' theorems? For this purpose, that whatever may happen, our ruling faculty may be and continue to be conformable to nature. Does this seem to you a small thing? No, but the greatest. What then? Does it need only a short time? And is it possible to seize it as you pass by? If you can, seize it. Then you will say, I met with Epictetus as I should meet with a stone or a statue. For you saw me and nothing more. But he meets with a man as a man who learns his opinions, and in his turn shows his own. Learn my opinions, show me yours, and then say that you have visited me. Let us examine one another. If I have any bad opinion, take it away. If you have any, show it. This is the meaning of meeting with a philosopher. Not so, but this is only a passing visit. And while we are hiring the vessel, we can also see Epictetus. Let us see what he says. Then you go away and say, Epictetus was nothing. He used solecisms and spoke in a barbarous way. For of what else do you come as judges? Well, but a man may say to me, If I attend to such matters, I shall have no land, as you have none. I shall have no silver cups, as you have none, nor fine beasts, as you have none. In answer to this, it is perhaps sufficient to say, I have no need of such things. But if you possess many things, you have need of others. Whether you choose or not, you are poorer than I am. What then have I need of? of that which you have not, of firmness, of a mind which is conformable to nature, of being free from perturbation. Whether I have a patron or not, what is that to me? But it is something to you. I am richer than you. I am not anxious what Caesar will think of me. For this reason I flatter no man. This is what I possess instead of vessels of silver and gold. You have utensils of gold, but your discourse, your opinions, your assents, your movements, your desires are of earthenware. But when I have these things conformable to nature, why should I not employ my studies also upon reason? For I have leisure. My mind is not distracted. What shall I do since I have no distraction? What more suitable to a man have I than this? When you have nothing to do, you are disturbed, you go to the theater, or you wander about without a purpose. Why should not the philosopher labor to improve his reason? You employ yourself about crystal vessels. I employ myself about the syllogism named the living. You about marine vessels. I employ myself about the syllogism named the denying. To you, everything appears small that you possess. To me, all that I have appears great. Your desire is insatiable. Mine is satisfied. To children who put their hand into a narrow-necked earthen vessel and bring out figs and nuts, this happens. If they fill the hand, they cannot take it out, and then they cry. Drop a few of them, and you will draw things out. And do you part with your desires? Do not desire many things, and you will have what you want. 
You don't have to win every argument. Agree to disagree. Beware of sugar that is mixed with poison. Beware of the fly that sat on a dead snake. Flecteris inequeo superos acheronta movebo. If I cannot move heaven, I will raise hell. Virgil. The more you are interested in others, the more interesting they find you to be. To be interesting, be interested. You may not get the answer, so you just have to wing it. The universe is a reflection of your own consciousness. Deepak Chopra From Alexander the Grammarian To be unreprovable myself and not reproachfully to reprehend any man for a barbarism or a solecism or any false pronunciation but dexterously by way of answer or testimony or confirmation of the same matter taking no notice of the word, to utter it as it should have been spoken, or by some other such close and indirect admonition, handsomely and civilly to tell him of it. We learn not in school but in life. Believe nothing you hear and only one half that you see. Do not fear death. Resentment and complaint are appropriate neither for oneself nor others. Do nothing that is of no use. Miyamoto Musashi Never let your failures go to your head, or your successes go to your head. You can start your life over any time you want. You can start being the person you actually want to be today, right now. Move out of your comfort zone. You can only grow if you are willing to feel awkward and uncomfortable when you try something new. Brian Tracy It is impossible to live a pleasant life without living wisely and honorably and justly, and it is impossible to live wisely and honorably and justly without living pleasantly. Whenever any one of these is lacking, when, for instance, the man is not able to live wisely, though he lives honorably and justly, it is impossible for him to live a pleasant life. Progress is not achieved by luck or accident, but by working on yourself daily. Before you act, decide. Before you decide, think. Before you think, focus. He who conquers his passions is master of his own worlds. Hierocles. Never leave till tomorrow that which you can do today. A man who knows more than others, he becomes lonely. If you believe it will work out, you'll see opportunities. If you believe it won't, you will see obstacles. Wayne Dyer When you have made this preparation and have practiced this discipline to distinguish that which belongs to another from that which is your own, the things which are subject to hindrance from those which are not, to consider the things free from hindrance to concern yourself and those which are not free not to concern yourself, to keep your desire steadily fixed to the things which do concern yourself and turned from the things which do not concern yourself, do you still fear any man? No one. For about what will you be afraid? 
about the things which are your own, in which consists the nature of good and evil, and who has power over these things, who can take them away, who can impede them. No man can, no more than he can impede God. But will you be afraid about your body and your possessions, about things which are not yours, about things which in no way concern you? And what else have you been studying from the beginning than to distinguish between your own and not your own? The things which are in your power and not in your power? The things subject to hindrance and not subject? And why have you come to the philosophers? Was it that you may nevertheless be unfortunate and unhappy? You will then in this way, as I have supposed you to have done, be without fear and disturbance. And what is grief to you? For fear comes from what you expect, but grief from that which is present. But what further will you desire? For of the things which are within the power of the will, as being good and present, you have a proper and regulated desire. But of the things which are not in the power of the will, you do not desire anyone, and so you do not allow any place to that which is irrational and impatient and above measure hasty. When, then, you are thus affected toward things, what man can any longer be formidable to you? For what has a man which is formidable to another, either when you see him or speak to him or finally are conversant with him? Not more than one horse has with respect to another, or one dog to another, or one bee to another bee. Things indeed are formidable to every man, and when any man is able to confer these things on another or to take them away, then he too becomes formidable. How then is an Acropolis demolished? Not by the sword, not by fire, but by opinion. For if we abolish the Acropolis which is in the city, can we abolish also that of fever and that of beautiful women? Can we, in a word, abolish the Acropolis which is in us and cast out the tyrants within us, whom we have dally over us, sometimes the same tyrants, at other times different tyrants? But with this we must begin, and with this we must demolish the Acropolis and eject the tyrants by giving up the body, the parts of it, the faculties of it, the possessions, the reputation, magisterial offices, honors, children, brothers, friends, by considering all these things as belonging to others. And if tyrants have been ejected from us, why do I still shut in the Acropolis by a wall of circumvallation? at least on my account. For if it still stands, what does it do to me? Why do I still eject guards? For where do I perceive them? Against others, they have their fasces and their spears and their swords. But I have never been hindered in my will, nor compelled when I did not will. And how is this possible? I have placed my movements toward action in obedience to God, is it his will that I shall have fever? It is my will also. Is it his will that I should move toward anything? It is my will also. Is it his will that I should obtain anything? It is my wish also. Does he not will? I do not wish. Is it his will that I be put to the wreck? It is my will then to die. It is my will then to be put to the wreck. Who then is still able to hinder me contrary to my own judgment or to compel me? No more than he can hinder or compel Zeus. Thus the more cautious of travelers also act. A traveler has heard that the road is infested by robbers. He does not venture to enter on it alone, but he waits for the companionship on the road, either of an ambassador or of a quester or of a proconsul. And when he has attached himself to such persons, he goes along the road safely. So in the world the wise man acts. There are many companies of robbers, tyrants, storms, difficulties, losses of that which is dearest. Where is there any place of refuge? How shall he pass along without being attacked by robbers? What company shall he wait for that he may pass along in safety? To whom shall he attach himself? To what person generally? To the rich man? 
to the man of consular rank, and what is the use of that to me? Such a man is stripped himself, groans and laments. But what if the fellow companion himself turns against me and becomes my robber? What shall I do? I will be a friend of Caesar. When I am Caesar's companion, no man will wrong me. In the first place, that I may become illustrious, what things must I endure and suffer? How often and by how many must I he rob? Then if I become Caesar's friend, he also is mortal. And if Caesar from any circumstance becomes my enemy, where is it best for me to retire? Into a desert? Well, does fever not come there? What shall be done then? Is it not possible to find a safe fellow traveler, a faithful one, strong, secure against all surprises? Thus he considers and perceives that if he attaches himself to God, he will make his journey in safety. How do you understand attaching yourself to God? In this sense, that whatever God wills, a man also shall will, and what God does not will, a man shall not will. How, then, shall this he done? In what other way than by examining the movements of God and his administration? What has he given to me as my own and in my own power? What has he reserved to himself? He has given to me the things which are in the power of the will. He has put them in my power, free from impediment and hindrance. How was he able to make the earthly body free from hindrance? And accordingly, he has subjected to the revolution of the whole, possessions, household things, house, children, wife. Why then do I fight against God? Why do I will what does not depend on the will? Why do I will to have absolutely what is not granted to Ma? But how ought I to will to have things in the way in which they are given and as long as they are given? But he who has given takes away. Why then do I resist? I do not say that I shall be fool if I use force to one who is stronger, but I shall first be unjust. For whence had I things when I came into the world? My father gave them to me. And who gave them to him? And who made the sun? And who made the fruits of the earth? And who the seasons? And who made the connection of men with one another and their fellowship? Then, after receiving everything from another and even yourself, are you angry and do you blame the giver if he takes anything from you? Who are you? And for what purpose did you come into the world? Did not he introduce you here? Did he not show you the light? Did he not give you fellow workers and perception and reason? And as whom did he introduce you here? Did he not introduce you as a subject to death and as one to live on the earth with a little flesh and to observe his administration and to join with him in the spectacle and the festival for a short time? Will you not then, as long as you have been permitted, after seeing the spectacle and the solemnity, when he leads you out, go with adoration of him and thanks for what you have seen and heard? No but I would still enjoy the feast. The initiated too would wish to be longer in the initiation, and perhaps also those at Olympia to see other athletes. But the solemnity is ended. Go away like a grateful and modest man. Make room for others. Others also must be born as you were, and being born they must have a place and houses and necessary things. And if the first do not retire, what remains? Why are you insatiable? Why are you not content? Why do you contract the world? Yes, but I would have my little children with me and my wife. What, are they yours? Do they not belong to the giver and to him who made you? Then will you not give up what belongs to others? Will you not give way to him who is superior? Why then, did he introduce me into the world on these conditions? And if the conditions do not suit you, depart. He has no need of a spectator who is not satisfied. He wants those who join in the festival, those who take part in the chorus, 
that they may rather applaud, admire, and celebrate with hymns the solemnity. But those who can bear no trouble, and the cowardly he will not willingly see absent from the great assembly, for they did not, when they were present, behave as they ought to do at a festival, nor fill up their place properly, but they lamented, found fault with the deity, fortune their companions, not seeing both what they had, and their own powers, which they received for contrary purposes, the powers of magnanimity, of a generous mind, manly spirit, and what we are now inquiring about, freedom. For what purpose, then, have I received these things? To use them. How long? So long as he who has lent them chooses. What if they are necessary to me? Do not attach yourself to them, and they will not be necessary. Do not say to yourself that they are necessary, and then they are not necessary. This study you ought to practice from morning to evening, beginning with the smallest things and those most liable to damage, with an earthen pot, with a cup. Then proceed in this way to a tunic, to a little dog, to a horse, to a small estate and land, then to yourself, to your body, to the parts of your body, to your brothers. Look all round and throw these things from you. Man conquers the world by conquering himself. While we wait for life, life passes. The one who is unaffected by pleasure and pain, who is steady in success and failure, and who remains undisturbed by the changing conditions of life, is a true yogi. Bhagavad Gita It is not thoughts that need to be taught, but thinking. Do not think you are destined to live forever. You are mortal, and your time is limited. Use it wisely. When you catch a glimpse of your potential, that's when passion is born. Zig Ziglar Every particular nature hath content when in its own proper course it speeds. A reasonable nature doth then speed, when first in matter of fancies and imaginations, it gives no consent to that which is either false or uncertain. Secondly, when in all its motions and resolutions it takes its level at the common good only, and that it desireth nothing and flieth from nothing, bet what is in its own power to compass or avoid. And lastly, when it willingly and gladly embraceth whatsoever is dealt and appointed unto it by the common nature, for it is part of it, even as the nature of any one leaf is part of the common nature of all plants and trees. But that the nature of a leaf is part of a nature both unreasonable and unsensible, and which in its proper end may be hindered, or which is servile and slavish, whereas the nature of man is part of a common nature which cannot be hindered, and which is both reasonable and just. From whence also it is that according to the worth of everything, she doth make such equal distribution of all things, as of duration, substance form, operation, and of events and accidents. But herein consider not whether thou shalt find this equality in everything absolutely and by itself, but whether in all the particulars of some one thing taken together, and compared with all the particulars of some other thing, and them together likewise. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. The awake share a common world, but the asleep turn aside into private worlds. Heraclitus
Knowledge is not power until it is applied. To be the best, you must be able to handle the worst. There are no traffic jams on the extra mile. Zig Ziglar. That which doth not hurt the city itself cannot hurt any citizen. This rule thou must remember to apply and make use of upon every conceit and apprehension of wrong. If the whole city be not hurt by this, neither am I certainly. And if the whole be not, why should I make it my private grievance? Consider rather what it is wherein he is overseen that is thought to have done the wrong. Again, often meditate how swiftly all things that subsist and all things that are done in the world are carried away and as it were conveyed out of sight. For both the substance themselves, we see as a flood, are in a continual flux, and all actions in a perpetual change, and the causes themselves, subject to a thousand alterations, neither is there anything almost that may ever be said to be now settled and constant. Next unto this, and which follows upon it, consider both the infiniteness of the time already past, and the immense vastness of that which is to come, wherein all things are to be resolved and annihilated. Art not thou then a very fool, who for these things art either puffed up with pride, or distracted with cares, or canst find in thy heart to make such moans as for a thing that would trouble thee for a very long time? Consider the whole universe, whereof thou art but a very little part, and the whole age of the world together whereof but a short and very momentary portion is allotted unto thee, and all the fates and destinies together, of which how much is it that comes to thy part and share? Again, another doth trespass against me. Let him look to that. He is master of his own disposition and of his own operation. I, for my part, am in the meantime in possession of as much as the common nature would have me to possess and that which mine own nature would have me do, I do. The more thankful you are, the more you attract things to be thankful for. There was never a bad peace or a good war. If you light a lamp for someone else, it will also brighten your path, Buddha. Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. Not everything in this world should be your problem. Some things are simply none of your business. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself, Rumi. Whatsoever is was made for something, as a horse, a vine. Why wonderest thou? The sun itself will say of itself, I was made for something, and so hath every god its proper function. What then were then made for? To disport and delight thyself? See how even common sense and reason cannot brook it. Blessed are those who do not fear solitude, who are not afraid of their own company who are not always desperately looking for something to do, something to amuse themselves with, something to judge. Thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably the reason so few engage in it. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Marcus Aurelius. Do not let yesterday take up too much of today. A river cuts through rock not because of its power, 
but because of its persistence. The source of suffering is a false belief in permanence and the existence of separate selves, Tiknatan. From Claudius Maximus, in all things to endeavor to have power of myself, and in nothing to be carried about, to be cheerful and courageous in all sudden chances and accidents, as in sicknesses, to love mildness and moderation and gravity, and to do my business, whatsoever it be, thoroughly and without querulousness. Whatsoever he said, all men believed him that as he spake, so he thought, and whatsoever he did, that he did it with a good intent. His manner was, never to wonder at anything, never to be in haste and yet never slow, nor to be perplexed or dejected, or at any time unseemly or excessively to laugh, nor to be angry or suspicious, but ever ready to do good and to forgive and to speak truth. And all this as one that seemed rather of himself to have been straight and right than ever to have been rectified or redressed Neither was there any man that ever thought himself undervalued by him, or that could find in his heart to think himself a better man than he. He would also be very pleasant and gracious. The pain you feel today will be the strength you feel tomorrow. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. The greatness comes not when things go always good for you, but the greatness comes when you are really tested, when you take some knocks, some disappointments, when sadness comes. Because only if you've been in the deepest valley can you ever know how magnificent it is to be on the highest mountain. Richard Nixon Nothing is irreplaceable. Don't let anyone know what you're doing until it's done. There are no extra pieces in the universe. Everyone is here because he or she has a place to fill, and every piece must fit itself into the big jigsaw puzzle. Deepak Chopra For whatsoever it be, that is now present, shall ever be embraced by me as a fit and seasonable object, both for my reasonable faculty and for my sociable or charitable inclination to work upon. And that which is principal in this matter is that it may be referred either unto the praise of God or to the good of men. For either unto God or man, whatsoever it is that doth happen in the world, hath in the ordinary course of nature its proper reference. Neither is there anything that in regard of nature is either new or reluctant and intractable, but all things both usual and easy. A brave man dies but once, a coward many times. When you laugh, people laugh with you, and when you cry, you cry alone. There are two vices much darker and more serious than the rest. Lack of persistence and lack of self-control. Marcus Aurelius The first step to getting anywhere is deciding you're not willing to stay where you are. Be careful who you trust. Salt and sugar look the same. The word no is a complete sentence. Jack Canfield. As occasion shall require, either to thine own understanding, or to that of the universe, or to his whom thou hast now to do with, 
let thy refuge be with all speed. To thine own, that it resolve upon nothing against justice. To that of the universe, that thou mayest remember part of whom thou art. Of his, that thou mayest consider whether in the estate of ignorance or of knowledge. And then also must thou call to mind that he is thy kinsman. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. When you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. When you realize how perfect everything is, you will tilt your head back and laugh at the sky. Buddha No one knows what his powers are until he uses them. There are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. The chief cause of failure and unhappiness is trading what you want most for what you want right now. Zig Ziglar From the gods I received that I had good grandfathers and parents, a good sister, good masters, good domestics, loving kinsmen, almost all that I have and that I never through haste and rashness transgressed against any of them, notwithstanding that my disposition was such, as that such a thing, if occasion had been, might very well have been committed by me, but that it was the mercy of the gods to prevent such a concurring of matters and occasions as might make me to incur this blame, that I was not long brought up by the concubine of my father, that I preserved the flower of my youth, that I took not upon me to be a man before my time, but rather put it off longer than I needed, that I lived under the government of my lord and father, who would take away from me all pride and vain glory, and reduce me to that conceit and opinion that it was not impossible for a prince to live in the court without a troop of guards and followers, extraordinary apparel, such and such torches and statues, and other like particulars of state and magnificence, but that a man may reduce and contract himself almost to the state of a private man, and yet for all that not to become the more base and remiss in those public matters and affairs wherein power and authority is requisite, that I have had such a brother who by his own example might stir me up to think of myself, and by his respect and love, delight, and please me, that I have got ingenuous children, and that they were not born distorted, nor with any other natural deformity, that I was no great proficient in the study of rhetoric and poetry, and of other faculties, which perchance I might have dwelt upon, if I had found myself to go on in them with success, that I did by times prefer those by whom I was brought up to such places and dignities which they seemed unto me most to desire, and that I did not put them off with hope and expectation, that, since that they were yet but young, I would do the same hereafter, that I ever knew Apollonius and Rusticus and Maximus, that I have had occasion often and effectually to consider and meditate with myself concerning that life which is according to nature, what the nature and manner of it is, so that, as for the gods and such suggestions, helps and inspirations, as might be expected from them, nothing did hinder, but that I might have begun long before to live according to nature, or that even now, that I was not yet partaker and in present possession of that life, that I myself, in that I did not observe those inward motions and suggestions, yea, and almost plain and apparent instructions and admonitions of the gods, was the only cause of it, that my body in such a life 
hath been able to hold out so long, that I never had to do with Benedicta and Theodotus. Yea, and afterwards, when I fell into some fits of love, I was soon cured. That having been often displeased with Rusticus, I never did him anything for which afterwards I had occasion to repent. That it being so that my mother was to die young, yet she lived with me all her latter years, that as often as I had a purpose to help and succor any that either were poor or fallen into some present necessity, I never was answered by my officers that there was not ready money enough to do it, and that I myself never had occasion to require the like succor from any other, that I have such a wife, so obedient, so loving, so ingenuous, that I had choice of fit and able men to whom I might commit the bringing up of my children, that by dreams I have received help as for other things, so in particular, how I might stay my casting of blood and cure my dizziness, as that also that happened to thee in Cajeta, as unto Chrysis when he prayed by the seashore. And when I did first apply myself to philosophy, that I did not fall into the hands of some sophists, or spent my time either in reading the manifold volumes of ordinary philosophers, nor in practicing myself in the solution of arguments and fallacies, nor dwelt upon the studies of the meteors and other natural curiosities. All these things without the assistance of the gods and fortune could not have been. Because the thing seems difficult for you, do not think it impossible for anyone to accomplish. Only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Sapere Aude, dare to know, Horace. It has been my observation that most people get ahead during the time that others waste. It is a reflection of your lack of willpower, discipline, and your piss-poor life choices. No great thing is created suddenly, any more than a bunch of grapes or a fig. If you go to work on your goals, your goals will go to work on you. If you go to work on your plan, your plan will go to work on you. Whatever good things we build, end up building us. Jim Rohn All those things for matter of experience are usual and ordinary, for their continuance but for a day, and for their matter most base and filthy. As they were in the days of those whom we have buried, so are they now also and no otherwise. When you were born, you cried, and the world rejoiced. Live your life so that when you die, the world cries, and you rejoice. It is easy to love your friend, but sometimes the hardest lesson to learn is to love your enemy. Believe you can and you're halfway there. Theodore Roosevelt Think of tomorrow, the past can't be mended. Do not be afraid to take risks and try new things. Life is too short to always play it safe. When another person makes you suffer, it is because he suffers deeply within himself, and his suffering is spilling over. He does not need punishment. He needs help. That's the message he is sending. Thich Nhat Han. If then thou shalt separate from thyself, that is from thy mind, whatsoever other men either do or say, 
or whatsoever thou thyself hast heretofore either done or said, and all troublesome thoughts concerning the future, and whatsoever, as either belonging to thy body or life, is without the jurisdiction of thine own will, and whatsoever in the ordinary course of human chances and accidents doth happen unto thee, so that thy mind, keeping herself loose and free from all outward coincidental entanglements, always in a readiness to depart, shall live by herself and to herself, doing that which is just, accepting whatsoever doth happen, and speaking the truth always. If, I say, thou shalt separate from thy mind whatsoever by sympathy might adhere unto it, and all time, both past and future, and shalt make thyself in all points and respects, like unto Empedocles his allegorical sphere, all round and circular, and shalt think of no longer life than that which is now present, then shalt thou be truly able to pass the remainder of thy days without troubles and distractions, nobly and generously disposed, and in good favor and correspondency with that spirit which is within thee. Never jump to conclusions. Be discerning and let people show you their true colors. He who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. Buddha. Do not allow anyone to treat you badly just because you love them. Everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. Everything is perfect in the universe, even your desire to improve it. Wayne Dyer How excellent useful are these lively fancies and representations of things, thus penetrating and passing through the objects to make their true nature known and apparent. This must thou use all thy life long, and upon all occasions, and then especially, when matters are apprehended as of great worth and respect, thy art and care must be to uncover them, and to behold their vileness, and to take away from them all those serious circumstances and expressions under which they made so grave a show. For outward pomp and appearance is a great juggler, and then especially art thou most in danger to be beguiled by it, when, to a man's thinking, thou most seemest to be employed about matters of moment. Time truly flies. Be grateful always, because it can always be worse. Learn as if you were to live forever. Every morning we are born again. What we do today is what matters most. Buddha Good things come to those who wait. Learn to heal without venting to everyone. Change is inevitable. Progress is optional. Tony Robbins To those who recommend persons to philosophers, Diogenes said well to one who asked from him letters of recommendation, that you are a man, he said, he will know as soon as he sees you, and he will know whether you are good or bad, if he is by experience skillful to distinguish the good and the bad. But if he is without experience, he will never know. If I write to him ten thousand times, for it is just the same as if a drachma asked to be recommended to a person to be tested. If he is skillful in testing silver, he will know what you are, for you will recommend yourself. 
We ought then in life also to have some skill, as in the case of silver coin, that a man may be able to say, like the judge of silver, Bring me any drachma and I will test it. But in the case of syllogisms I would say, Bring any man that you please, and I will distinguish for you the man who knows how to resolve syllogisms and the man who does not. Why? Because I know how to resolve syllogisms. I have the power which a man must have who is able to discover those who have the power of resolving syllogisms. But in life how do I act? At one time I call a thing good and at another time bad. What is the reason? The contrary to that which is in the case of syllogisms, ignorance and inexperience. Get yourself together before you get any older. The older you are, the harder it is to change. Great is the man who has not lost his childlike heart. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Aristotle He who fears death will never do anything worthy of a man who is alive. If each of us sweeps right under our feet, the whole world will be clean. The more you see yourself as what you'd like to become and act as if what you want is already there, the more you'll activate those dormant forces that will collaborate to transform your dream into your reality. Wayne Dyer Reason and rational power are faculties which content themselves with themselves and their own proper operations. And as for their first inclination and motion that they take from themselves, but their progress is right to the end and object, which is in their way, as it were, and lieth just before them, that is, which is feasible and possible, whether it be that which at the first they propose to themselves or no for which reason also such actions are termed catathoses, to intimate the directness of the way by which they are achieved. Nothing must be thought to belong to a man which doth not belong unto him as he is a man. These, the event of purposes, are not things required in a man. The nature of man doth not profess any such things. The final ends and consummations of actions are nothing at all to a man's nature. The end, therefore, of a man, or the summum bonum whereby that end is fulfilled, cannot consist in the consummation of actions purposed and intended. Again, concerning these outward worldly things, were it so that any of them did properly belong unto man, then would it not belong unto man? to condemn them, and to stand in opposition with them. Neither would he be praiseworthy that can live without them, or he good, if these were good indeed, who of his own accord doth deprive himself of any of them. But we see contrariwise, that the more a man doth withdraw himself from these wherein external pomp and greatness doth consist, or any other like these, or the better he doth bear with the loss of these, the better he is accounted. There is nothing impossible to him who will try. A house is not a home unless it contains food and fire for the mind as well as the body. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Marcus Aurelius Never hit it at all if it is honorably possible to avoid hitting, but never hit soft. Remember to be grateful always because it can always be worse.
Do not say that I'll depart tomorrow because even today I still arrive. Thich not hun. See what Crates pronounceth concerning Xenocrates himself. Success is a loner's journey. You must learn to accept loss and make compromises. If you don't let go of the wrong people, you'll never meet the right people. An idea that is developed and put into action is more important than an idea that exists only as an idea. Buddha. When someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. Most people spend more time and energy going around problems than in trying to solve them. The self is not a concept. It is your true nature. Papaji. Let it always appear and be manifest unto thee that solitariness and desert places by many philosophers so much esteemed of and affected are of themselves but thus and thus, and that all things are them to them that live in towns and converse with others as they are the same nature everywhere to be seen and observed, to them that have retired themselves to the top of mountains and to desert havens or what other desert and inhabited places soever. For anywhere it thou wilt, mayest thou quickly find and apply that to thyself which Plato saith of his philosopher, in a place as private and retired, saith he, as if he were shut up and enclosed about in some shepherd's lodge on the top of a hill, there by thyself to put these questions to thyself or to enter in these considerations. What is my chief and principal part which hath power over the rest? What is now the present estate of it as I use it? And what is it? that I employ it about. Is it now void of reason or no? Is it free and separated? Or so affixed, so congealed and grown together as it were with the flesh, that it is swayed by the motions and inclinations of it? Time heals almost everything. Give it time. Realize you cannot control everything or everyone but you can control yourself, and that's even better. Love is born into every human being. It calls back the halves of our original nature together. It tries to make one out of two and heal the wound of human nature. Plato, the Symposium. Whoever attaches a lot of value to the opinions of others pays them too much honor. Never compare your life with others. They may seem better than you, but they have some problems which are never ever heard by you. Knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darknesses of other people. Carl Jung When you make use of divination, remember that you do not know how events will turn out. This is what you have come to learn from the diviner. But if you really are a philosopher, you know before you come what sort of thing it is. For if it is one of the things that are not in our power, then necessarily what will happen will be neither good nor bad. 2. Therefore do not bring desire and aversion to the diviner, for if you do, you will be fearful of what you may hear. But go with the understanding that everything that happens will be indifferent and of no concern to you. For whatever it may be, it is in your power to make good use of it, and that no one can hinder you in this.
go with confidence to the gods as your counselors. And afterwards, when some advice has been given, remember from whom you have received it and whose counsel you will be disregarding if you disobey. 3. Approach the diviner in the way Socrates thought appropriate, that is, only in those cases when the whole question turns upon the outcome of events, and when there are no means afforded by reason or any other art for discovering what is going to happen. Therefore, when it is your duty to share a danger with a friend or with your country, do not ask the diviner whether you should share the danger. For even if the diviner should happen to tell you that the omens are unfavorable, that death is foretold, or mutilation to some part of the body, or exile, even at this risk, reason requires you to stand by your friend or share the danger with your country. Pay attention, therefore, to the greater diviner, Pythian Apollo, who threw from the temple the man who did not help his friend when he was being murdered. Genius is a mind that knows its limits. You don't want everybody as a friend anyway. It is thus with farming. If you do one thing late, you will be late in all your work. Cato the Elder Tell me, and I will forget. Show me, and I may remember. Involve me, and I will understand. People inspire you or they drain you. Pick them wisely. Assume the feeling of being that which you want to be, and observe the results. Neville Goddard We must remember that the future is neither wholly ours nor wholly not ours, so that neither must we count upon it as quite certain to come, nor despair of it as quite certain not to come. Just because it's taking time doesn't mean it's not happening. Folks are usually about as happy as they make up their minds to be. It is thus with farming. If you do one thing late, you will be late in all your work. Cato the Elder The best way to gain self-confidence is to do what you are afraid to do. If you don't let go of the wrong people, you'll never meet the right people. The greatest tragedy of the family is the unlived lives of the parents, Carl Jung. That we can derive advantage from all external things. In the case of appearances which are objects of the vision, nearly all have allowed the good and the evil to be in ourselves and not in externals. No one gives the name of good to the fact that it is day, nor bad to the fact that it is night, nor the name of the greatest evil to the opinion that three are four. But what do men say? They say that knowledge is good and that error is bad so that even in respect of falsehood itself there is a good result, the knowledge that it is falsehood, so it ought to be in life also. Is health a good thing, and is sickness a bad thing? No, man. But what is it? To be healthy and healthy in a right way is good. To be healthy in a bad way is bad, so that it is possible to gain advantage even from sickness, I declare. For is it not possible to gain advantage even from death? And is it not possible to gain advantage from mutilation? Do you think that Menokius gained little by death? Could a man who says so gain so much as Menokius gained? 
become man did he not maintain the character of being a lover of his country, a man of great mind, faithful, generous? And if he had continued to live, would he not have lost all these things? Would he not have gained the opposite? Would he not have gained the name of coward, ignoble, a hater of his country, a man who feared death? Well, do you think that he gained little by dying? I suppose not. But did the father of Admetus gain much by prolonging his life so ignobly and miserably? Did he not die afterward? Cease, I adjure you, by the gods to admire things. Cease to make yourselves slaves, first of things, then on account of things, slaves of those who are able to give them or take them away. Can advantage then be derived from these things, from all, and from him who abuses you? Wherein does the man who exercises before the combat profit the athlete very greatly? This man becomes my exerciser before the combat. He exercises me in endurance, in keeping my temper, in mildness. You say no, but he who lays hold of my neck and disciplines my loins and shoulders does me good. And the exercise master does right when he says, raise him up with both hands, and the heavier he is, so much the more is my advantage. But if a man exercises me in keeping my temper, does he not do good? This is not knowing how to gain an advantage from men. Is my neighbor bad? Bad to himself, but good to me. He exercises my good disposition, my moderation. Is my father bad? Bad to himself, but to me good. This is the rod of Hermes. Touch with it what you please, as the saying is, and it will be of gold. I say not so, but bring what you please and I will make it good. Bring disease, bring death, bring poverty, bring abuse, bring trial on capital charges. All these things through the rod of Hermes shall be made profitable. What will you do with death? Why? What else than that it shall do you honor, or that it shall show you by act through it? What a man is who follows the will of nature? What will you do with disease? I will show its nature. I will be conspicuous in it. I will be firm. I will be happy. I will not flatter the physician. I will not wish to die. What else do you seek? Whatever you shall give me, I will make it happy, fortunate, honored, a thing which a man shall seek. You say no, but take care that you do not fall sick. It is a bad thing. This is the same as if you should say, take care that you never receive the impression that three are four. That is bad. Man, how is it bad? If I think about it as I ought, how shall it then do me any damage? And shall it not even do me good? If then, I think about poverty as I ought to do, about disease, about not having office, is not that enough for me? Will it not be an advantage? How then ought I any longer to look to seek evil and good in externals? What happens these doctrines are maintained here, but no man carries them away home. But immediately everyone is at war with his slave, with his neighbors, with those who have sneered at him, with those who have ridiculed him. Good luck to Lesbius, who daily proves that I know nothing. Pay close attention to those who say they love you, because so often they don't. They only use you. Trust in yourself and your first instinct on decisions. Do not go broke trying to impress broke people. The one who is unaffected by pleasure and pain, who is steady in success and failure, and who remains undisturbed by the changing conditions of life is a true yogi. Bhagavad Gita Forget them. The ones who ask the most from you are the ones who do the least for you. Talking without thinking is like shooting without aiming.
You leave old habits behind by starting out with the thought, I release the need for this in my life. Wayne Dyer Miscellaneous When some person asked him how it happened that since reason has been more cultivated by the men of the present age, the progress made in former times was greater. In what respect, he answered, has it been more cultivated now, and in what respect was the progress greater then? For in that in which it has now been more cultivated, in that also the progress will now be found. At present it has been cultivated for the purpose of resolving syllogisms, and progress is made. But in former times it was cultivated for the purpose of maintaining the governing faculty in a condition conformable to nature, and progress was made. Do not, then, mix things which are different, and do not expect, when you are laboring at one thing, to make progress in another. But see if any man among us, when he is intent, see I upon this, the keeping himself in a state conformable to nature and living so always, does not make progress. For you will not find such a man. The good man is invincible. For he does not enter the contest where he is not stronger. If you want to have his land and all that is on it, take the land, take his slaves, take his magisterial office, take his poor body. But you will not make his desire fail in that which it seeks, nor his aversion fall into that which he would avoid. The only contest into which he enters is that about things which are within the power of his will. How then will he not be invincible? Some person having asked him what is common sense, Epictetus replied, As that may be called a certain common hearing which only distinguishes vocal sounds, and that which distinguishes musical sounds is not common, but artificial. So there are certain things which men who are not altogether perverted see by the common notions which all possess. Such a constitution of the mind is named common sense. It is not easy to exhort weak young men, for neither is it easy to hold cheese with a hook. But those who have a good natural disposition, even if you try to turn them aside, cling still more to reason. Wherefore Rufus generally attempted to discourage and he used this method as a test of those who had a good natural disposition and those who had not. For, it was his habit to say, as a stone, if you cast it upward, will be brought down to the earth by its own nature. So the man whose mind is naturally good, the more you repel him, the more he turns toward that to which he is naturally inclined. What is not started today is never finished tomorrow. We suffer more in imagination than in reality. Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. Confucius Your friends want you to do good, but not better than them. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Expect the best. Prepare for the worst. Capitalize on what comes. Zig Ziglar Where the matter may be affected agreeably to that reason, which both unto the gods and men is common, there can be no just cause of grief or sorrow. For where the fruit and benefit of an action well begun and prosecuted according to the proper constitution of man may be reaped and obtained, or is sure and certain, it is against reason that any damage should there be suspected. In all places and at all times, it is in thy power religiously to embrace whatsoever, by God's appointment, 
is happened unto thee, and justly to converse with those men whom thou hast to do with, and accurately to examine every fancy that presents itself, that nothing may slip and steal in before thou hast rightly apprehended the true nature of it. Let it go. Putting off until tomorrow is your weakness. The first and greatest victory is to conquer yourself. Plato. You don't need to be right all the time. You learn nothing from life if you think you're right all the time. Don't be scared because you don't have all the answers right away. You will learn through your experiences and find your own way to happiness. Look for the good in every person and every situation. You'll almost always find it. Brian Tracy Let opinion be taken away, and no man will think himself wronged. If no man shall think himself wronged, then is there no more any such thing as wrong. That which makes not man himself the worse, cannot make his life the worse. Neither can it hurt him either inwardly or outwardly. It was expedient in nature that it should be so, and therefore necessary. Except whatever comes to you woven in the pattern of your destiny, or what could more aptly fit your needs? Beware of those who come to you with tears in their eyes and a story ready to tell. Bis dat qui cito dat, he gives twice, who gives promptly, Publilius Cyrus. Buy real estate, land, anything you can afford. The less possessions you own, the happier and less burden you will have in your life. Don't work after 50 because money won't let you know yourself. Spend time wisely, then you will be extended. The most important trait of a good leader is humility. Jocko Willink. One who not often, nor without some great necessity tending to some public good, mindeth what any other either speaks or doth or purposeth. For those things only that are in his own power, or that are truly his own, are the objects of his employments and his thoughts are ever taken up with those things, which of the whole universe are by the fates or providence destinated and appropriated unto himself, those things that are his own, and in his own power he himself takes order, for that they be good. And as for those that happen unto him, he believes them to be so. For that lot and portion which is assigned to everyone, as it is unavoidable and necessary, so is it always profitable. He remembers besides that whatsoever partakes of reason is akin unto him, and that to care for all men generally is agreeing to the nature of a man. But as for honor and praise, that they ought not generally to be admitted and accepted of from all, but from such only, who live according to nature. As for them that do not, what manner of men they be at home or abroad, day or night, how condition themselves with what manner of conditions, or with men of what conditions they moil and pass away the time together, he knoweth and remembers. Right well, he therefore regards not such praise and approbation as proceeding from them who cannot like and approve themselves. Confine yourself to the present. Your self-respect has to be stronger than your feelings.
Think of yourself as dead. You have lived your life. Now take what's left and live it properly. Marcus Aurelius Your enemies can kill you, but only your friends can hurt you. Haters are confused admirers who can't understand why everybody else likes you. The primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation but your thoughts about it. Eckhart Tolle Shiro, my heart smiled within me. They will accuse even virtue herself with heinous and opprobrious words. The roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. Life is a race against time, so have a good time. Do not sabotage yourself by unwittingly adopting negative, unproductive attitudes through your associations with others. Epictetus Everything comes to you at the right time. Be patient and trust the process. Plan for what is difficult while it is easy. Do what is great while it is small. In the absence of orders, go find something and kill it. Jocko Willink. To live happily is an inward power of the soul when she is affected with indifferency towards those things that are by their nature indifferent. To be thus affected, she must consider all worldly objects both divided and whole, remembering with all that no object can of itself beget any opinion in us, neither can come to us, but stands without still and quiet, but that we ourselves beget, and as it were print in ourselves opinions concerning them. Now it is in our power not to print them, and if they creep in and lurk in some corner, it is in our power to wipe them off. Remembering, moreover, that this care and circumspection of thine is to continue but for a while, and then thy life will be at an end. And what should hinder but that thou mayest do well with all these things? For if they be according to nature, rejoice in them, and let them be pleasing and acceptable unto thee. But if they be against nature, seek thou that which is according to thine own nature, and whether it be for thy credit or no, use all possible speed for the attainment of it, for no man ought to be blamed for seeking his own good and happiness. It is easy to hate, and it is difficult to love. This is how the whole scheme of things works. All good things are difficult to achieve, and bad things are very easy to get. You are responsible for your own happiness. If you expect others to make you happy, you will always be disappointed. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. Buddha suffers more than necessary who suffers before it is necessary. Letting go means to come to the realization that some people are a part of your history, but not a part of your destiny. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. Eckhart Tolle No man can admire thee for thy sharp, acute language, such is thy natural disability that way. Be it so, yet there be many other good things, for the want of which thou canst not plead the want or natural ability. Let them be seen in thee which depend wholly from thee, sincerity, gravity, laboriousness, contempt of pleasures, 
be not querulous, be content with little, be kind, be free. Avoid all superfluity, all vain prattling, be magnanimous. Dost not thou perceive how many things there be, which notwithstanding any pretense of natural indisposition and unfitness, thou mightest have performed and exhibited, and yet still thou doest voluntarily continue drooping downwards? Or wilt thou say that it is through defect of thy natural constitution, that thou art constrained to murmur, to be base and wretched to flatter, now to accuse and now to please and pacify thy body, to be vainglorious, to be so giddy-headed and unsettled in thy thoughts? Nay, witnesses be the gods, of all these thou mightest have been rid long ago, only this thou must have been contented with, to have borne the blame of one that is somewhat slow and dull, wherein thou must so exercise thyself, as one who neither doth much take to heart. This is natural defect, nor yet pleaseth himself in it. Don't stop when you're tired. Stop when you are done. Hurry before 30. Have kids before 35. Work and earn actively and sufficiently until and before 40. Make passive income workable before 50. Plan to retire from work activity before 60. Do everything for family, but expect nothing from it, not even from your spouse. To be even-minded is the greatest virtue. Heraclitus For it is better to be alone than in bad company. The world is what it is. You are what you are. You have to execute. You have to do it. Jocko Willing Whatsoever dieth and falleth, however, and wheresoever it die and fall, it cannot fall out of the world. Here it have its abode and change. Here also shall it have its dissolution into its proper elements. The same are the world's elements, and the elements of which thou dost consist. And they, when they are changed, they murmur not. Why shouldest thou? When you can't go back, you have to worry only about the best way of moving forward. We are not rich by what we possess, but by what we can do without. The superior man acts before he speaks, and afterwards speaks according to his actions. Confucius Never take anything personally. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality. The longer we dwell on our misfortunes, the greater is their power to harm us. Let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will not lead you astray, Rumi. For every dissolution is either a mere dispersion of the elements into those elements again whereof everything did consist, or a change of that which is more solid into earth, and of that which is pure and subtile or spiritual into air, so that by this means nothing is lost, but all resumed again into those rational generative seeds of the universe, and this universe either after a certain period of time to lie consumed by fire, or by continual changes to be renewed, and so forever to endure. Now that solid and spiritual that we speak of, thou must not conceive it to be that very same, which at first was when thou wert born. For alas, all this that now thou art in either kind, either for matter of substance or of life, hath but two or three days ago partly from meats eaten, and partly from air breathed in, received all its influx, 
being the same then in no other respect than a running river, maintained by the perpetual influx and new supply of waters, is the same. That therefore which thou hast since received, not that which came from thy mother, is that which comes to change and corruption. But suppose that that for the general substance and more solid part of it should still cleave unto thee never so close, yet what is that to the proper qualities and affections of it by which persons are distinguished, which certainly are quite different? The best way to respect yourself is to discipline yourself. Be careful who you trust. When you are performing your duties, do so with full awareness and detachment. Bhagavad Gita Time is everything, and one day it will define you. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Every time you judge someone else, you reveal an unhealed part of yourself. Jay Shetty Against those who eagerly seek preferment at Rome. If we applied ourselves as busily to our own work as the old men at Rome do to those matters about which they are employed, perhaps we also might accomplish something. I am acquainted with a man older than myself who is now superintendent of corn at Rome and remember the time when he came here on his way back from exile and what he said as he related the events of his former life and how he declared that with respect to the future after his return he would look after nothing else than passing the rest of his life in quiet and tranquility. For how little of life, he said, remains for me. I replied, you will not do it, but as soon as you smell Rome, you will forget all that you have said, and if admission is allowed even into the imperial palace, you will gladly thrust yourself in and thank God. If you find me, Epictetus, he answered, setting even one foot within the palace, think what you please. Well, what then did he do? Before he entered the city, he was met by letters from Caesar, and as soon as he received them, he forgot all, and ever after has added one piece of business to another. I wish that I were now by his side to remind him of what he said when he was passing this way, and to tell him how much better a seer I am than he is. Well then, do I say that man is an animal made for doing nothing? Certainly not. But why are we not active? For example, as to myself, as soon as day comes, in a few words I remind myself of what I must read over to my pupils. Then forthwith I say to myself, But what is it to me how a certain person shall read? The first thing for me is to sleep. And indeed, what resemblance is there between what other persons do and what we do? If you observe what they do, you will understand. And what else do they do all day long than make up accounts, inquire among themselves, give and take advice about some small quantity of grain, a bit of land, and such kind of profits? Is it then the same thing to receive a petition and to read in it? I entreat you to permit me to export a small quantity of corn, and one to this effect. I entreat you to learn from Chrysippus, what is the administration of the world, and what place in it the rational animal holds. Consider also who you are, and what is the nature of your good and bad. Are these things like the other? Do they require equal care, and is it equally base to neglect these and those? Well then, are we the only persons who are lazy and love sleep? No, but much rather you young men are. For we old men, when we see young men amusing themselves, are eager to play with them. And if I saw you active and zealous, much more should I be eager myself to join you in your serious pursuits.
When a man does not know what harbor he is making for, no wind is the favorable wind. It's easy to hate, and it's difficult to love. He needs little who desires but little, Calenthes. If someone is trying to bring you down, they are already below you. Be grateful always because it can always be worse. Live like there's no tomorrow and do what you love. You leave old habits behind by starting out with the thought, I release the need for this in my life, Wayne Dyer. Remember that thy mind is of that nature as that it becometh altogether unconquerable. When once recollected in herself, she seeks no other content than this, that she cannot be forced, yea, though it so fall out, that it be even against reason itself, that it cloth bandy, how much less when by the help of reason she is able to judge of things with discretion, and therefore let thy chief fort and place of defense be a mind free from passions, a stronger place, whereunto to make his refuge and so to become impregnable, and better fortified than this hath no man. He that seeth not this is unlearned. He that seeth it and betaketh not himself to this place of refuge is unhappy. Prioritizing yourself is not selfish. Make my enemy brave and strong so that if defeated, I will not be ashamed. To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist, that is all. Oscar Wilde Stop doing what is easy or popular. Start doing what is right. Do not ruin an apology with an excuse. Don't measure yourself by what you've accomplished, but by what you should have accomplished with your ability. Alex Hormozzi If so be that the souls remain after death, say they that will not believe it, how is the air from all eternity able to contain them? How is the earth, say I, ever from that time able to contain the bodies of them that are buried? For as here the change and resolution of dead bodies into another kind of subsistence, whatsoever it be, makes place for other dead bodies, so the souls after death transferred into the air, after they have conversed there a while, are either by way of transmutation or transfusion or conflagration received again into that original rational substance from which all others do proceed and so give way to those souls who before coupled and associated unto bodies now begin to subsist single. This upon a supposition that the souls after death do for a while subsist single may be answered and here besides the number of bodies so buried and contained by the earth, we may further consider the number of several beasts eaten by us men and by other creatures. For notwithstanding that such a multitude of them is daily consumed, and as it were buried in the bodies of the eaters, yet is the same place and body able to contain them by reason of their conversion, partly into blood, partly into air and fire. What in these things is the speculation of truth? To divide things into that which is passive and material, and that which is active and formal. Never hit it at all if it is honorably possible to avoid hitting, but never hit soft. A salary is the drug they give you to forget your dreams.
The mind that is anxious about future events is miserable. Seneca A life without cause is a life without effect. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. If you love someone but rarely make yourself available to him or her, that is not true love. Tishnat Han. Take me and throw me where thou wilt. I am indifferent. For there also I shall have that spirit which is within me propitious, that is well pleased and fully contented both in that constant disposition and with those particular actions which to its own proper constitution are suitable and agreeable. Remember five years ago you dreamed about being where you are now. Think about it. What is a good man but a bad man's teacher? What is a bad man but a good man's job? As a matter of self-perseveration, a man needs good friends or ardent enemies, for the former instruct him and the latter take him to task. Diogenes Beware of those who come to you with tears in their eyes and a story ready to tell. You meet every single person for a reason. Just let it be. You never know when a moment and a few sincere words can have an impact on a life. Zig Ziglar To look back upon things of former ages, as upon the manifold changes and conversions of several monarchies and commonwealths, we may also foresee things future, for they shall all be of the same kind. Neither is it possible that they should leave the tune, or break the concert that is now begun, as it were, by these things that are now done and brought to pass in the world. It comes all to one, therefore, whether a man be a spectator of the things of this life but forty years, or whether he see them ten thousand years together, for what shall he see more? And as for those parts that came from the earth, they shall return unto the earth again, and those that came from heaven, they also shall return unto those heavenly places. Whether it be a mere dissolution and unbinding of the manifold intricacies and entanglements of the confused atoms, or some such dispersion of the simple and incorruptible elements. With meats and drinks and divers charms, they seek to divert the channel, that they might not die. Yet must we needs endure that blast of wind that cometh from above, though we toil and labor never so much. Stop putting too much trust in them. Don't let anyone know what you're doing until it's done. Love your neighbor as yourself. Everything lasts for a day, the one who remembers and the remembered. Marcus Aurelius All cruelty springs from weakness. You cannot open a book without learning something. You have everything you need for complete peace and total happiness right now, Wayne Dyer. Some things hasten to be and others to be no more. And even whatsoever now is, some part thereof hath already perished. Perpetual fluxes and alterations renew the world, as the perpetual course of time doth make the age of the world of itself infinite, to appear always fresh and new. In such a flux and course of all things, 
What of these things that hasten so fast away should any man regard, since among all there is not any that a man may fasten and fix upon? As if a man would settle his affection upon some ordinary sparrow living by him, who is no sooner seen than out of sight. For we must not think otherwise of our lives than as a mere exhalation of blood or of an ordinary respiration of air. For what in our common apprehension is to breathe in the air and to breathe it out again, which we do daily, so much is it and no more, at once to breathe out all thy respirative faculty into that common air, from whence but lately, as being but from yesterday, and today thou didst first breathe it in, and with it life. Before something great happens, everything falls apart. Stop telling people everything. Most people don't care, and some secretly want you to fail. Qui tacet consentire videtur, he who is silent seems to consent. Latin proverb. There will always be someone who doesn't see your worth. Don't let it be you. It is better to have $480 in a wallet that costs $20 than to have $20 in a wallet that costs $480. Ego clouds and disrupts everything, Jocko Willink. Let us do our best endeavors to persuade them. But however, if reason and justice lead thee to it, do it, though they be never so much against it. But if any shall by force withstand thee, and hinder thee in it, convert thy virtuous inclination from one object unto another, from justice to contented equanimity, and cheerful patience, so that what in the one is thy hindrance, thou mayest make use of it for the exercise of another virtue. And remember that it was with due exception and reservation that thou didst at first incline and desire, for thou didst not set thy mind upon things impossible. Upon what then? That all thy desires might ever be moderated with this due kind of reservation. And this thou hast and mayst always obtain, whether the thing desired be in thy power or no. And what do I care for more, if that for which I was born and brought forth into the world, to rule all my desires with reason and discretion, may be. Life is a journey, not a destination. Do not explain your philosophy. Embody it. The way is not in the sky. The way is in the heart. Buddha. Let the improvement of yourself keep you so busy that you have no time to criticize others. You should never sacrifice what you could be for what you are. If you don't make peace with your past, it will keep showing up in your present. Wayne Dyer What art and profession soever thou hast learned, endeavor to effect it, and comfort thyself in it, and pass the remainder of thy life as one who from his whole heart commits himself and whatsoever belongs unto him, unto the gods. And as for men, carry not thyself either tyrannically or servilely towards any. He who has injured thee was either stronger or weaker than thee. If weaker, spare him. If stronger, spare thyself. Life has a funny way of surprising us when we're not looking for it.
Choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. Confucius Anyone you love can die any time. Cherish them. We live only now. Everything else is either past or is unknown. Imagine no limitations. Decide what's right and desirable before you decide what's possible. Brian Tracy Against those who embrace philosophical opinions only in words. The argument called the ruling argument appears to have been proposed from such principles as these. There is in fact a common contradiction between one another in these three positions, each two being in contradiction to the third. The propositions are that everything past must of necessity be true, that an impossibility does not follow a possibility, and that thing is possible which neither is nor t at a t will be true. Diodorus, observing this contradiction, employed the probative force of the first two for the demonstration of this proposition, that nothing is possible which is not true and never will be. Now another will hold these two, that something is possible which is neither true nor ever will be, and that an impossibility does not follow a possibility, but he will not allow that everything which is past is necessarily true, as the followers of Cleanthes seem to think, and Antipater copiously defended them. But others maintain the other two propositions, that a thing is possible which is neither true nor will he true, and that everything which is past is necessarily true. But then they will maintain that an impossibility can follow a possibility, but it is impossible to maintain these three propositions because of their common contradiction. If then any man should ask me which of these propositions do I maintain, I will answer him that I do not know. But I have received this story that Diodorus maintained one opinion, the followers of Panthoides, I think, and Cleanthes maintained another opinion, and those of Chrysippus a third. What then is your opinion? I was not made for this purpose to examine the appearances that occur to me and to compare what others say and to form an opinion of my own on the thing. Therefore I differ not at all from the grammarian. Who was Hector's father? Priam. Who were his brothers? Alexander and Dephobus. Who was their mother? Hecuba. I have heard this story. From whom? From Homer. And Hellanicus also, I think, writes about the same things, and perhaps others like him. And what further have I about the ruling argument? Nothing. But if I am a vain man, especially at a banquet, I surprise the guests by enumerating those who have written on these matters. Both Chrysippus has written wonderfully in his first book about possibilities, and Cleanthes has written specially on the subject and Archidemus. Antipater also has written not only in his work about possibilities, but also separately in his work on the ruling argument. Have you not read the work? I have not read it. Read. And what profit will a man have from it? He will be more trifling and impertinent than he is now. For what else have you reigned by reading it? What opinion have you formed on this subject? None, but you will tell us of Helen and Priam, and the island of Calypso, which never was and never will be. And in this matter, indeed, it is of no great importance if you retain the story, but have formed no opinion of your own. But in matters of morality, this happens to us much more than in these things of which we are speaking. Speak to me about good and evil. Listen, the wind from Ilium to Siconian shores brought me, of things some are good, some are bad, and others are indifferent. The good, then, are the virtues and the things which partake of the virtues, the bad are the vices and the things which partake of them, 
and the indifferent are the things which lie between the virtues and the vices, wealth, health, life, death, pleasure, pain. Whence do you know this? Hellenicus says it in his Egyptian history. For what difference does it make to say this, or to say that Diogenes has it in his ethic, or Chrysippus or Cleanthes? Have you then examined any of these things and formed an opinion of your own? Show how you are used to behave in a storm on shipboard? Do you remember this division? When the sail rattles and a man who knows nothing of times and seasons stands by you when you are screaming and says, Tell me, I ask you by the gods what you were saying just now. Is it a vice to suffer shipwreck? Does it participate in vice? Will you not take up a stick and lay it on his head? What have we to do with you, man? We are perishing and you come to mock us? But if Caesar sent for you to answer a charge, do you remember the distinction? If when you are going in, pale and trembling, a person should come up to you and say, Why do you tremble, man? What is the matter about which you are engaged? Does Caesar who sits within give virtue and vice to those who go into him? You reply, Why do you also mock me and add to my present sorrows? Still tell me, philosopher, tell me why you tremble. Is it not death of which you run the risk, or a prison, or pain of the body, or banishment, or disgrace? What else is there? Is there any vice or anything which partakes of vice? What then did you use to say of these things? What have you to do with me, man? My own evils are enough for me. And you say right. Your own evils are enough for you. Your baseness, your cowardice, your boasting which you showed when you sat in the school. Why did you decorate yourself with what belonged to others? Why did you call yourself a Stoic? Observe yourselves thus in your actions, and you will find to what sect you belong. You will find that most of you are Epicureans, a few peripatetics, and those feeble. For wherein will you show that you really consider virtue equal to everything else or even superior? But show me a Stoic if you can, where or how. But you can show me an endless number who utter small arguments of the Stoics. For do the same persons repeat the Epicurean opinions any worse? And the peripatetic, do they not handle them also with equal accuracy? Who then is a Stoic? As we call a statue Phidiac, which is fashioned according to the art of Phidias. So show me a man who is fashioned according to the doctrines which he utters. Show me a man who is sick and happy in danger and happy, dying and happy, in exile and happy, in disgrace and happy. Show him, I desire by the gods to see a Stoic. You cannot show me one fashion so, but show me at least one who is forming, who has shown a tendency to be a Stoic. Do me this favor. Do not grudge an old man seeing a sight which I have not seen yet. Do you think that you must show me the Zeus of Phidias? or the Athena, a work of ivory and gold? Let any of you show me a human soul ready to think as God does, and not to blame either God or man, ready not to be disappointed about anything, not to consider himself damaged by anything, not to be angry, not to be envious, not to be jealous. And why should I not say it direct? Desirous from a man to become a God, and in this poor mortal body, thinking of his fellowship with Zeus. Show me the man, but you cannot. Why then do you delude yourselves and cheat others? And why do you put on a guise which does not belong to you, and walk about being thieves and pilferers of these names and things which do not belong to you? And now I am your teacher, and you are instructed in my school, and I have this purpose to make you free from restraint, compulsion, hindrance, to make you free, prosperous, happy, looking to God in everything small and great. And you are here to learn and practice these things. Why then do you not finish the work, if you also have such a purpose as you ought to have, and if I, in addition to the purpose, also have such qualification as I ought to have? 
what is that which is wanting? When I see an artificer and material by him, I expect the work. Here then, is the artificer, here the material, what is it that we want? Is not the thing one that can be taught? It is. Is it not then in our power? The only thing of all that is in our power. Neither wealth is in our power, nor health, nor reputation, nor in a word anything else except the right use of appearances. This is by nature free from restraint. This alone is free from impediment. Why then do you not finish the work? Tell me the reason. For it is either through my fault that you do not finish it, or through your own fault, or through the nature of the thing. The thing itself is possible, and the only thing in our power. It remains then that the fault is either in me or in you, or what is nearer the truth in both. Well then, are you willing that we begin at last to bring such a purpose into this school and to take no notice of the past? Let us only make a beginning. Trust to me and you will see. Very often a change of self is needed more than a change of scene. If life were predictable, it would cease to be life and be without flavor. Justice is the interest of the stronger. Republic. This quote, often misinterpreted, refers to the ruling class's responsibility to ensure the well-being and harmony of the whole society, not their own personal gain. What we do now echoes in eternity. You may not realize this, but the people you love are your biggest weaknesses. The person we believe ourselves to be will always act in a manner consistent with our self-image. Brian Tracy Once they reach the age of 14 years, women are addressed by men as ladies. Accordingly, when they see that there is nothing else but pleasing men with sex, they begin to use makeup and dress up, and to place all their hopes in that. It is worth our while, then, to make sure they understand that they are valued for nothing other than their good behavior and self-respect. Never tolerate disrespect, not even from yourself. Sometimes you just have to let go, even if you are right. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. John Quincy Adams Set high standards for yourself and live up to your own expectations. Do not cling to a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it. The universe is not outside of you. Look inside yourself. Everything that you want, you already are. Rumi If you want to make progress, Submit to appearing foolish and stupid with regard to external things. Do not wish to appear knowledgeable about anything, and if others think you amount to something, distrust yourself. For you should know that it is not easy both to keep your moral character in accordance with nature, and to keep secure external things. For in attending to one, you will inevitably neglect the other. God knows when to send you exactly what you need. Embrace every opportunity, for regrets come from the chances we didn't take.
Hang on to your youthful enthusiasms. You'll be able to use them better when you're older. Seneca Time discovers truth. If you light a lamp for someone else, it will also brighten your path. The self is the ultimate truth. Everything else is illusion. Nisargadatta Maharaj Know that the most important thing regarding devotion to the gods is to have the right opinions about them, that they exist and administer the universe well and justly, to stand ready to obey them, to submit to everything that happens and to follow it willingly as something being accomplished by the most perfect intelligence. Do this, and you will never blame the gods, nor accuse them of neglecting you. 2. But you will not be able to do this unless you remove the notions of good and bad from things that are not in our power. For if you believe that anything not in our power is good or bad, then when you fail to get what you want or get what you do not want, it is inevitable that you will blame and hate those responsible. 3. For every living thing naturally flees and avoids things that appear harmful and their causes, and pursues and admires things that are beneficial and their causes. It is impossible, then, for someone who thinks they are being harmed to take delight in what they suppose is causing the harm, just as it is impossible for them to take delight in the harm itself. 4. This is why even a father is reproached by his son when he does not give him a share of those things the son regards as good. Thus, in thinking a king's throne to be something good, Eteocles and Polynices became enemies. This is why the farmer reproaches the gods, and so too the sailor, the merchant, and those who lose their wives and children. For people are devoted to what they find advantageous, Therefore, whoever takes proper care of their desires and aversions, at the same time also cares properly for their devotion. 5. But it is everyone's duty to offer libations, sacrifices, and first fruits according to tradition, with a pure disposition, not slovenly or carelessly, neither too meanly nor beyond our means. Never underestimate the power of stupid people. Don't moan, don't complain. Learn to be thick-skinned. Make the most of what you can. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. Plato Respect yourself and others will respect you. Focus your attention on creating the life you want, instead of distracting yourself from your current life. If you want to know yourself, stop thinking about yourself and just be... Muji. He who is greedy of credit and reputation after his death doth not consider that they themselves by whom he is remembered shall soon after every one of them be dead, and they likewise that succeed those, until at last all memory, which hitherto by the succession of men admiring and soon after dying hath had its course, be quite extinct. But suppose that both they that shall remember thee and thy memory with them should be immortal, what is that to thee? I will not say to thee after thou art dead, but even to thee living, what is thy praise? But only for a secret and politic consideration which we call economian or dispensation. For as for that, that it is the gift of nature, whatsoever is commended in thee, what might be objected from thence, let that now that we are upon another consideration be omitted as unseasonable that which is fair and goodly, whatsoever it be, 
and in what respect soever it be, that it is fair and goodly, it is so of itself and terminates in itself, not admitting praise as a part or member, that therefore which is praised is not thereby made either better or worse. This I understand even of those things that are commonly called fair and good as those which are commended either for the matter itself or for curious workmanship. As for that which is truly good, what can it stand in need of more than either justice or truth, or more than either kindness and modesty, which of all those either becomes good or fair, because commended or dispraised suffers any damage? Doth the emerald become worse in itself, or more vile if it be not commended? Doth gold or ivory or purple? Is there anything that doth though never so common as a knife, a flower, or a tree? Do not hang on to your mistakes just because you spent a lot of time making them. If you are anxious, you are living in the future. If you are at peace, you are living in the present. Anyone who can make you angry becomes your master. Epictetus Whoever talks a lot often fails. Men are moved by two levers only, fear and self-interest. The only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. Alan Watts Of the things which are in our power and not in our power. Of all the faculties you will find not one which is capable of contemplating itself, and consequently, not capable either of approving or disapproving. How far does the grammatic art possess the contemplating power, as far as forming a judgment about what is written and spoken? And how far music, as far as judging about melody? Does either of them then contemplate itself? By no means. But when you must write something to your friend, grammar will tell you what words you must write. But whether you should write or not, grammar will not tell you. And so it is with music as to musical sounds. But whether you should sing at the present time and play on the lute, or do neither, music will not tell you. What faculty then will tell you? That which contemplates both itself and all other things. And what is this faculty? The rational faculty. For this is the only faculty that we have received which examines itself, what it is, and what power it has, and what is the value of this gift, and examines all other faculties. For what else is there which tells us that golden things are beautiful? For they do not say so themselves. Evidently it is the faculty which is capable of judging of appearances. What else judges of music, grammar, and other faculties proves their uses and points out the occasions for using them? Nothing else. As then it was fit to be so, that which is best of all and supreme over all is the only thing which the gods have placed in our power, the right use of appearances. But all other things they have not placed in our power. Was it because they did not choose? I indeed think that if they had been able, they would have put these other things also in our power, but they certainly could not. For as we exist on the earth, and are bound to such a body and to such companions, how was it possible for us not to be hindered as to these things by externals? But what says Zeus, Epictetus, if it were possible, I would have made both your little body and your little property free and not exposed to hindrance. But now be not ignorant of this, this body is not yours, but it is clay finely tempered. And since I was not able to do for you what I have mentioned, 
I have given you a small portion of us. This faculty of pursuing an object and avoiding it, and the faculty of desire and aversion, and in a word the faculty of using the appearances of things. And if you will take care of this faculty and consider it your only possession, you will never be hindered, never meet with impediments. You will not lament, you will not blame, you will not flatter any person. Well, do these seem to you small matters? I hope not. Be content with them then and pray to the gods. But now, when it is in our power to look after one thing and to attach ourselves to it, we prefer to look after many things and to be bound to many things, to the body and to property, and to brother and to friend, and to child and to slave. Since then we are bound to many things. We are depressed by them and dragged down. For this reason, when the weather is not fit for sailing, we sit down and torment ourselves and continually look out to see what wind is blowing. It is north. What is that to us? When will the west wind blow? When it shall choose, my good man, or when it shall please Iolus? For God has not made you the manager of the winds, but Iolus. What then? We must make the best use that we can of the things which are in our power, and use the rest according to their nature. What is their nature then? As God may please. Must I then alone have my head cut off? What? Would you have all men lose their heads that you may be consoled? Will you not stretch out your neck as Lateranus did at Rome, when Nero ordered him to be beheaded? For when he had stretched out his neck and received a feeble blow, which made him draw it in for a moment, he stretched it out again. And a little before, when he was visited by Epaphroditus, Nero's freedman, who asked him about the cause of offense which he had given, he said, If I choose to tell anything, I will tell your master. What then should a man have in readiness in such circumstances? What else then, what is mine, and what is not mine, and permitted to me, and what is not permitted to me? I must die. Must I then die lamenting? I must be put in chains. Must I then also lament? I must go into exile. Does any man then hinder me from going with smiles and cheerfulness and contentment? Tell me the secret which you possess. I will not, for this is in my power. But I will put you in chains. Man, what are you talking about? Me in chains? You may fetter my leg, but my will not even Zeus himself can overpower. I will throw you into prison. My poor body, you mean. I will cut your head off. When then have I told you that my head alone cannot be cut off? These are the things which philosophers should meditate on, which they should write daily, in which they should exercise themselves. Thrasea used to say, I would rather be killed today than banished tomorrow. What then did Rufus say to him? If you choose death as the heavier misfortune, how great is the folly of your choice? But if as the lighter, who has given you the choice? Will you not study to be content with that which has been given to you? What then did Agrippinus say? He said, I am not a hindrance to myself. When it was reported to him that his trial was going on in the Senate, he said, I hope it may turn out well, but it is the fifth hour of the day. This was the time when he was used to exercise himself and then take the cold bath. Let us go and take our exercise. After he had taken his exercise, one comes and tells him, You have been condemned. To banishment, he replies, or to death. To banishment. What about my property? It is not taken from you. Let us go to Aresia then, he said, and dine. This it is to have studied what a man ought to study, to have made desire, aversion, free from hindrance, and free from all that a man would avoid. I must die. If now, 
I am ready to die. If after a short time I now dine because it is the dinner hour, after this I will then die. How? Like a man who gives up what belongs to another. Resentment is like drinking poison and then hoping it will kill your enemies. Create and stick to a personal budget. Nothing is more active than thought, for it travels over the universe, and nothing is stronger than necessity for all must submit to it. Thales Overthinking, depression, saying no to important things, revenge, ruining your own life, observing, increase in wisdom, forgiving, healing, Letting go, peace of mind. They are not dead who live in the hearts they leave behind. The source of suffering is a false belief in permanence and the existence of separate selves. Tiknatan. This also, among other things, may serve to keep thee from vainglory, if thou shalt consider that thou art now altogether incapable of the commendation of one who all his life long, or from his youth at least, hath lived a philosopher's life. For both unto others, and to thyself especially, it is well known that thou hast done many things contrary to that perfection of life. Thou hast therefore been confounded in thy course, and henceforth it will be hard for thee to recover the title and credit of a philosopher. And to it also is thy calling and profession repugnant. If therefore thou dost truly understand what it is that is of moment indeed, as for thy fame and credit, take no thought or care for that. Let it suffice thee if all the rest of thy life, be it more or less, thou shalt live as thy nature requireth, or according to the true and natural end of thy making. Take pains, therefore, to know what it is that thy nature requireth, and let nothing else distract thee. Thou hast already had sufficient experience, that of those many things that hitherto thou hast erred and wandered about, thou couldst not find happiness in any of them, not in syllogisms and logical subtleties, not in wealth, not in honor and reputation, not in pleasure, in none of all these. Wherein, then, is it to be found? in the practice of those things which the nature of man, as he is a man, doth require. How then shall he do those things, if his dogmata, or moral tenets and opinions, from which all motions and actions do proceed, be right and true? Which be those dogmata, those that concern that which is good or evil, as that there is nothing truly good and beneficial unto man, but that which makes him just, temperate, courageous, liberal, and that there is nothing truly evil and hurtful unto man, but that which causeth the contrary effects. Hard times will always reveal true friends. Just because you got away with a bad decision doesn't make it a good decision. The goal of life is to live in accordance with reason. Zeno believed that reason should guide our actions and decisions, leading us towards a life of virtue and fulfillment. People willingly believe what they want to believe. You can fall in love more than once. Everything you want also wants you, but you have to take action to get it. Jack Canfield Loss and corruption is in very deed nothing else but change and alteration, and that is it which the nature of the universe doth most delight in, by which, and according to which, whatsoever is done, 
is well done. For that was the estate of worldly things from the beginning, and so shall it ever be. Or wouldest thou rather say, that all things in the world have gone ill from the beginning for so many ages, and shall ever go ill? And then among so many deities, could no divine power be found all this while, that could rectify the things of the world? Or is the world, to incessant woes and miseries, forever condemned? Don't let people know too much about you. Most people don't care, and some secretly want you to fail. Better 50% now than 100% never. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Abraham Lincoln Don't ever let the same people disappoint you twice. Expect nothing, appreciate everything. The key to wealth is delayed gratification. Alex Hormozzi On no occasion call yourself a philosopher, and do not talk a great deal amongst uneducated people about philosophical principles, but do what follows from those principles. For example, at a banquet do not talk about how people ought to eat, but eat as someone should. Remember how Socrates had so completely eliminated ostentation that people would come to him wanting him to introduce them to philosophers, and he would take them off to other philosophers. So little did he care about being overlooked. 2. And if a discussion about philosophical principles should arise in uneducated people, keep silent for the most part, for there is great danger that you will immediately vomit up what you have not yet digested. And when someone says to you that you know nothing, and you are not offended, then know that you have begun your work. For sheep do not present their fodder to the shepherd to show how much they have eaten, but they digest their food within to produce wool and milk on the outside. So do not display your philosophical principles to uneducated people, but show them the actions that result from the principles when you digest them. Never be afraid of being different. Be afraid of being the same as everyone else. Do it now. Sometimes later becomes never. What we achieve inwardly will change outer reality. Plutarch. Value you. You need something to fall back on when you get depressed. Find something you love. Something you can lean on to. Something that would keep you going. The ultimate reason for setting goals is to entice you to become the person it takes to achieve them. Jim Rohn In what a man ought to be exercised who has made proficiency and that we neglect the chief things. There are three things in which a man ought to exercise himself who would be wise and good. The first concerns the desires and the aversions, that a man may not fail to get what he desires, and that he may not fall into that which he does not desire. The second concerns the movements toward, and the movements from an object, and generally in doing what a man ought to do that he may act according to order, to reason, and not carelessly. The third thing concerns freedom from deception and rashness in judgment, and generally it concerns the assents. Of these topics the chief and the most urgent is that which relates to the affects. For an affect is produced in no other way than by a failing to obtain that which a man desires, 
or of falling into that which a man would wish to avoid. This is that which brings in perturbations, disorders, bad fortune, misfortunes, sorrows, lamentations and envy, that which makes men envious and jealous. And by these causes we are unable even to listen to the precepts of reason. The second topic concerns the duties of a man, for I ought not to be free from affects like a statue, but I ought to maintain the relations natural and acquired, as a pious man, as a son, as a father, as a citizen. The third topic is that which immediately concerns those who are making proficiency, that which concerns the security of the other two, so that not even in sleep any appearance unexamined may surprise us, nor in intoxication, nor in melancholy. This, it may be said, is above our power. But the present philosophers, neglecting the first topic and the second, employ themselves on the third, using sophistical arguments, making conclusions from questioning, employing hypotheses, lying. For a man must, as it is said, when employed on these matters, take care that he is not deceived. Who must? The wise and good man. This then is all that is wanting to you. Have you successfully worked out the rest? Are you free from deception in the matter of money? If you see a beautiful girl, do you resist the appearance? If your neighbor obtains an estate by will, are you not vexed? Now is there nothing else wanting to you except unchangeable firmness of mind? Wretch, you hear these very things with fear and anxiety that some person may despise you, and with inquiries about what any person may say about you. And if a man come and tell you that in a certain conversation in which the question was, Who is the best philosopher? A man who was present said that a certain person was the chief philosopher, your little soul, which was only a finger's length, stretches out to two cubits. But if another who is present, you are mistaken. It is not worthwhile to listen to a certain person, for what does he know? He has only the first principles and no more. Then you are confounded. You grow pale. You cry out immediately. I will show him who I am, that I am a great philosopher. It is seen by these very things. Why do you wish to show it by others? Do you not know that Diogenes pointed out one of the sophists in this way by stretching out his middle finger? And then when the man was wild with rage, this, he said, is the certain person. I pointed him out to you. For a man is not shown by the finger as a stone or a piece of wood, but when any person shows the man's principles, then he shows him as a man. Let us look at your principles also, for is it not plain that you value not at all your own will, but you look externally to things which are independent of your will? For instance, what will a certain person say, and what will people think of you? Will you be considered a man of learning? Have you read Chrysippus or Antipater? For if you have read Archidemus also, you have everything. Why are you still uneasy, lest you should not show us who you are? Would you let me tell you what manner of man you have shown us that you are? You have exhibited yourself to us as a mean fellow, querulous, passionate, cowardly, finding fault with everything, blaming everybody, never quiet, vain. This is what you have exhibited to us. Go away now and read Archidemus. Then, if a mouse should leap down and make a noise, you are a dead man. For such a death awaits you as it did. What was the man's name? Crinus. And he too was proud, because he understood Archidemus. Wretch, will you not dismiss these things that do not concern you at all? These things are suitable to those who are able to learn them without perturbation, to those who can say, I am not subject to anger, to grief, to envy, I am not hindered, I am not restrained. What remains for me? I have leisure, I am tranquil. Let us see how we must deal with sophistical arguments. Let us see how when a man has accepted an hypothesis, he shall not be led away to anything absurd. 
To them such things belong. To those who are happy it is appropriate to light a fire, to dine, if they choose, both to sing and to dance. But when the vessel is sinking, you come to me and hoist the sails. Life becomes easier when you learn to accept the apology you never got. Action is ten times more valuable than reading and planning. So it is with men too. Even if they don't want to, they will be compelled to follow what is destined. Zeno Be silent for the most part, or if you speak, say only what is necessary in a few words. Give a man power and you will find out who he is. With integrity you have nothing to fear, since you have nothing to hide. With integrity you will do the right thing, so you will have no guilt. Zig Ziglar Either all things by the providence of reason happen unto every particular as a part of one general body, and then it is against reason that a part should complain of anything that happens for the good of the whole. Or if, according to Epicurus, atoms be the cause of all things, and that life be nothing else but an accidentary confusion of things, and death nothing else but a mere dispersion, and so of all other things, what doest thou trouble thyself for? Being alone gives us an opportunity to reconnect with ourselves. Time flies. One day you are 30, the next you are 50. Plan now for what you want 50 to look like. If you don't have consistent goal in life, you can't live it in a consistent way. Marcus Aurelius It's not worth killing yourself over a company that'll replace you in two days if you're gone. At some point you will realize no one else has a say in your life unless you let them. Our intention creates our reality. Wayne Dyer Against those who wish to be admired. When a man holds his proper station in life, he does not gape after things beyond it. Man, what do you wish to happen to you? I am satisfied if I desire and avoid conformably to nature. If I employ movements toward and from an object as I am by nature formed to do, and purpose and design and assent, why then do you strut before us as if you had swallowed a spit? My wish has always been that those who meet me should admire me, and those who follow me should exclaim, O oh, the great philosopher, who are they by whom you wish to be admired? Are they not those of whom you are used to say that they are mad? Well then, do you wish to be admired by madmen? Don't tell people more than they need to know. Do not let the shadows of your past darken the doorstep of your future. The unexamined life is not worth living. Apology. This statement encapsulates the Socratic method and Plato's belief in the pursuit of knowledge and self-reflection. It encourages us to question our assumptions and strive for a life of understanding. We live only now. Everything else is either past or is unknown. You can't go back and change the beginning, 
but you can start where you are and change the ending. You are not a problem to be solved, Eckhart Tolle. Why should any of these things that happen externally so much distract thee, give thyself leisure to learn some good thing and cease roving and wandering to and fro? Thou must also take heed of another kind of wandering, for they are idle in their actions, who toil and labor in this life and have no certain scope to which to direct all their motions and desires. If you tell me that you desire a fig, I answer that there must be time. Let it first blossom, then bear fruit, then ripen. Surround yourself with people who talk about visions and ideas, not people. In the confrontation between the stream and the rock, the stream always wins, not through strength, but by perseverance. Buddha. Having a weak body is a reflection of your broken mind. It is a reflection of your lack of willpower, discipline, and your piss-poor life choices. It is better to offer no excuse than a bad one. There are no facts, only interpretations. Friedrich Nietzsche. Now much time and leisure doth he gain, who is not curious to know what his neighbor hath said, or hath done, or hath attempted, but only what he doth himself that it may be just and holy. Or to express it in Agathos' words, not to look about upon the evil conditions of others, but to run on straight in the line without any loose and extravagant agitation. If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it. And this you have the power to revoke at any moment. You will find the key to success under the alarm clock. Fortes Fortuna Adjuvat. Fortune favors the brave. Terence. Better to make an approximately correct decision than to make a precise mistake. If you want to be successful, you must respect one rule. Never lie to yourself. The less you open your heart to others, the more your heart suffers. Deepak Chopra That the faculties are not safe to the uninstructed. In as many ways as we can change things which are equivalent to one another, in just so many ways we can change the forms of arguments and in thymemes in argumentation. This is an instance. If you have borrowed and not repaid, you owe me the money. You have not borrowed and you have not repaid. Then you do not owe me the money. To do this skillfully is suitable to no man more than to the philosopher. For if the enthymeme is all imperfect syllogism, it is plain that he who has been exercised in the perfect syllogism must be equally expert in the imperfect also. Why then do we not exercise ourselves and one another in this manner? Because, I reply, at present, though we are not exercised in these things and not distracted from the study of morality, by me at least, Still we make no progress in virtue. What then must we expect if we should add this occupation? And particularly as this would not only be an occupation which would withdraw us from more necessary things, but would also be a cause of self-conceit and arrogance, and no small cause. 
for great is the power of arguing and the faculty of persuasion, and particularly if it should be much exercised, and also receive additional ornament from language. And so universally, every faculty acquired by the uninstructed and weak brings with it the danger of these persons being elated and inflated by it. For by what means could one persuade a young man who excels in these matters that he ought not to become an appendage to them, but to make them an appendage to himself? Does he not trample on all such reasons and strut before us elated and inflated, not enduring that any man should reprove him and remind him of what he has neglected and to what he has turned aside? What then was not Plato a philosopher, I reply, and was not Hippocrates a physician? But you see how Hippocrates speaks. Does Hippocrates then speak thus in respect of being a physician? Why do you mingle things which have been accidentally united in the same men? And if Plato was handsome and strong, ought I also to set to work and endeavor to become handsome or strong, as if this was necessary for philosophy, because a certain philosopher was at the same time handsome and a philosopher? Will you not choose to see and to distinguish in respect to what men become philosophers, and what things belong to belong to them in other respects? And if I were a philosopher, ought you also to be made lame? What then? Do I take away these faculties which you possess? By no means, for neither do I take away the faculty of seeing. But if you ask me what is the good of man, I cannot mention to you anything else than that it is a certain disposition of the will with respect to appearances. People will disappoint you, so never put all your trust in anyone. The things you think about determine the quality of your mind. Your soul takes on the color of your thoughts. Man conquers the world by conquering himself. Zeno of Cetium. When you arise in the morning, think of what a privilege it is to be alive, to think, to enjoy, to love. Do not trust your money to a person who likes to count other people's money. I promise myself that I will enjoy every minute of the day that is given me to live. Tishnahat Han How we ought to use divination. Through an unreasonable regard to divination, many of us omit many duties. For what more can the diviner see than death or danger or disease, generally things of that kind? If then I must expose myself to danger for a friend, and if it is my duty even to die for him, what need have I then for divination? Have I not within me a diviner who has told me the nature of good and of evil, and has explained to me the signs of both? What need have I then to consult the viscera of victims or the flight of birds, and why do I submit when he says, it is for your interest? For does he know what is for my interest? Does he know what is good? And as he has learned the signs of the viscera, has he also learned the signs of good and evil? For if he knows the signs of these, he knows the signs both of the beautiful and of the ugly, and of the just and of the unjust. Do you tell me, man, what is the thing which is signified for me? Is it life or death, poverty or wealth? But whether these things are for my interest or whether they are not, I do not intend to ask you. Why don't you give your opinion on matters of grammar, and why do you give it here about things on which we are all in error and disputing with one another? The woman, therefore, who intended to send by a vessel a month's provisions to Gratilla in her banishment, 
made a good answer to him who said that Domitian would seize what she sent. I would rather, she replied, that Domitian should seize all than that I should not send it. What then leads us to frequent use of divination? Cowardice, the dread of what will happen. This is the reason why we flatter the diviners. Pray, Master, shall I succeed to the property of my father? Let us see. Let us sacrifice on the occasion. Yes, Master, as fortune chooses. When he has said, You shall succeed to the inheritance, we thank him as if we received the inheritance from him. The consequence is that they play upon us. What then should we do? We ought to come without desire or aversion as the wayfarer asks of the man whom he meets which of two roads leads to his journey's end without any desire for that which leads to the right rather than to the left, for he has no wish to go by any road except the road which leads to his end. In the same way ought we to come to God also as a guide, as we use our eyes, not asking them to show us rather such things as we wish, but receiving the appearances of things such as the eyes present them to us. But now we trembling take the auger by the hand, and while we invoke God, we entreat the augur and say, Master, have mercy on me. Suffer me to come safe out of this difficulty. Wretch, would you have then anything other than what is best? Is there then anything better than what pleases God? Why do you, so far as in your power, corrupt your judge and lead astray your adviser? You can lie down for people to walk on you and they will still complain that you are not flat enough. Don't depend too much on anyone in this world, because even your own shadow leaves you when you are in darkness. The only real mistake is the one from which we learn nothing. Henry Ford It can ruin your life only if it ruins your character. Otherwise, it cannot harm you inside or out. Call it what you want, but it's one day in retrospect the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. You are not stuck where you are unless you decide to be. Wayne Dyer Whatsoever doth happen in the world doth happen justly, and so if thou dost well take heed, thou shalt find it. I say not only in right order by a series of inevitable consequences, but according to justice, and as it were by way of equal distribution, according to the true worth of everything. Continue then to take notice of it, as thou hast begun, and whatsoever thou dost, do it not without this proviso, that it be a thing of that nature that a good man, as the word good is properly taken, may do it. This observe carefully in every action. You really don't want everybody as a friend anyway. Pay close attention to those who say they love you because so often they don't. They only use you. The willing are led by fate, the reluctant dragged. Clanthas. Marrying is not at all difficult. It is difficult to be married. Never force. Don't beg and don't chase. You are the self, the one without a second, Papa G. When thou hast done well, and another is benefited by thy action, must thou like a very fool look for a third thing besides, as that it may appear unto others also that thou hast done well, or that thou mayest in time 
receive one good turn for another. No man useth to be weary of that which is beneficial unto him, but every action according to nature is beneficial. Be not weary then of doing that which is beneficial unto thee, whilst it is so unto others. Better to be alone than in bad company. Genius lies in the ability to distinguish the difficult from the impossible. Misfortune nobly born is good fortune. Marcus Aurelius What one man calls God, another calls the laws of physics. Your friends' problems become your problems. The smaller your social circle, the fewer problems you have. The search for truth ends when you realize you are already the truth. Papa G. What pain soever thou art in, let this presently come to thy mind that it is not a thing whereof thou needest to be ashamed, neither is it a thing whereby thy understanding, that hath the government of all, can be made worse. For neither in regard of the substance of it, nor in regard of the end of it, which is to intend the common good, can it alter and corrupt it. This also of Epicurus mayst thou in most pains find some help of, that it is neither intolerable nor eternal. So thou keep thyself to the true bounds and limits of reason, and give not way to opinion. This also thou must consider, that many things there be which oftentimes unsensibly trouble and vex thee, as not armed against them with patience, because they go not ordinarily under the name of pains, which in very deed are of the same nature as pain, as to slumber unquietly, to suffer heat, to want appetite. When therefore any of these things make thee discontented, check thyself with these words. Now hath pain given thee the foil, thy courage hath failed thee. The trouble is, you think you have time. Never lend money, because you might lend it to friends for a few days, but retrieve it from fools for years. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. Plato Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Life is a journey, not a destination. Sometimes you may feel like you are just about to realize your goal only to fall short. That is no reason to quit. Defeat happens only to those who refuse to try again. Nick Vujicic Alexander of Macedon, and he that dressed his mules, when once dead, both came to one. For either they were both resumed into those original rational essences from whence all things in the world are propagated, or both after one fashion were scattered into atoms. In any given moment we have two options, to step forward into growth or step back into safety. If you look at the people in your circle and you don't get inspired, you don't have a circle. You have a cage. The greatest obstacle to living is expectancy, which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. Seneca. If something bothers you, change it. If it is beyond your control, learn to live with it. Accept it. Change yourself. That is the only thing you can influence.
never ruin an apology with an excuse. If you can dream it, you can achieve it. Zig Ziglar They contemn one another, and yet they seek to please one another. And while as they seek to surpass one another in worldly pomp and greatness, they most debase and prostitute themselves in their better part, one to another. We must never stop dreaming. Dreams provide nourishment for the soul, just as a meal does for the body. There is no disgrace in honest failure. There is disgrace in fearing to fail. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. Buddha. He who reflects too much will accomplish little. Kindness without honesty is manipulation. If you take responsibility for yourself, you will develop a hunger to accomplish your dreams. Les Brown Again, we regard independence of outward things as a great good, not so as in all cases to use little but so as to be contented with little if we have not much, being honestly persuaded that they have the sweetest enjoyment of luxury, who stand least in need of it, and that whatever is natural is easily procured and only the vain and worthless hard to win. Plain fare gives as much pleasure as a costly diet when once the pain of want has been removed, while bread and water confer the highest possible pleasure when they are brought to hungry lips. To habituate oneself, therefore, to simple and inexpensive diet supplies all that is needful for health and enables a man to meet the necessary requirements of life without shrinking, and it places us in a better condition when we approach at intervals a costly fare and renders us fearless of fortune. Trust wisely and not blindly. Remember, some things have to end for better things to begin. Let us prepare our minds as if we'd come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Seneca People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Remember, no amount of guilt can change the past, and no amount of anxiety can change the future. You are the only real obstacle in your path to a fulfilling life. Les Brown To these ever-present helps and mementos let one more be added, ever to make a particular description and delineation as it were of every object that presents itself to thy mind, that thou mayest wholly and throughly contemplate it in its own proper nature, bare and naked, wholly and severally, divided into its several parts and quarters, and then by thyself in thy mind to call both it and those things of which it doth consist, and in which it shall be resolved by their own proper true names and appellations. For there is nothing so effectual to beget true magnanimity as to be able truly and methodically to examine and consider all things that happen in this life, and so to penetrate into their natures, that at the same time this also may concur in our apprehensions what is the true use of it, and what is the true nature of this universe, to which it is useful, how much in regard of the universe may it be esteemed, 
How much in regard of man, a citizen of the supreme city, of which all other cities in the world are as it were but houses and families? In every success story you will find someone who has made a courageous decision. If you stopped seeing the world in terms of what you like and what you dislike, and saw things for what they truly are in themselves, you would find a great deal more peace in your life. Let us rise up and be thankful. For if we didn't learn a lot today, at least we learned a little. And if we didn't learn a little, at least we didn't get sick. And if we got sick, at least we didn't die. So, let us all be thankful. Buddha Life is a race against time, so have a good time. Good people do not need laws to tell them to act responsibly, while bad people will find a way around the laws. The quality of your life is the quality of your relationships. Tony Robbins From some high place as it were to look down, and to behold here flocks, and their sacrifices without number, and all kind of navigation, some in a rough and stormy sea, and some in a calm, the general differences, or different estates of things, some that are now first upon being, the several and mutual relations of those things that are together, and some other things that are at their last, their lives also, who were long ago, and theirs who shall be hereafter, and the present estate and life of those many nations of barbarians that are now in the world, thou must likewise consider in thy mind, and how many there be, who never so much as heard of thy name, how many that will soon forget it, how many who but even now did commend thee, within a very little while perchance will speak ill of thee, so that neither fame, nor honor, nor anything else that this world doth afford, is worth the while. The sum then of all, whatsoever doth happen unto thee, whereof God is the cause, to accept it contentedly, whatsoever thou doest, whereof thou thyself art the cause, to do it justly, which will be, if both in thy resolution and in thy action, thou have no further end than to do good unto others, as being that, which by thy natural constitution as a man, thou art bound unto. Don't say yes to everyone to make them comfortable. Check with yourself too before you commit. Hold to your true aspirations, no matter what is going on around you. To conquer oneself is a greater victory than to conquer thousands in a battle. Buddha Study the past if you would define the future. Keep your eyes wide open before marriage, half shut afterwards. Believe that you possess a basic goodness, which is the foundation for the greatness you can ultimately achieve. Les Brown Illness interferes with one's body, but not with one's moral character, unless one so wishes. Lameness interferes with one's leg, but not with one's moral character. Say this to yourself regarding everything that happens to you, for you will find that what happens interferes with something else, but not with you. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Do not let yesterday take up too much of today.
To be wronged is nothing unless you continue to remember it. Confucius. There is no better way to save yourself than saving money every day. Compound interest can do wonders. It is better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. Now I see that if one doesn't know how to die, one can hardly know how to live, because death is a part of life. Tishnat Han. Of Catulus, not to contemn any friend's expostulation, though unjust, but to strive to reduce him to his former disposition, freely and heartily to speak well of all my masters upon any occasion, as it is reported of Domitius and Athenodotus, and to love my children with true affection. People who do not understand your silence will never understand your words. Fear not death, for the sooner we die, the longer we shall be immortal. The only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. Socrates, this quote emphasizes the importance of humility and the recognition of the limits of human knowledge. What is not started today is never finished tomorrow. The snow goose needs not bathe to make itself white. Neither need you do anything but be yourself. You are doomed to make choices. This is life's greatest paradox. Wayne Dyer Theophrastus, where he compares sin with sin, as after a vulgar sense such things I grant may be compared, says well and like a philosopher that those sins are greater which are committed through lust than those which are committed through anger. For he that is angry seems with a kind of grief and close contraction of himself to turn away from reason. But he that sins through lust, being overcome by pleasure, doth in his very sin bewray a more impotent and unmanlike disposition. Well then, and like a philosopher doth he say, that he of the two is the more to be condemned that sins with pleasure than he that sins with grief. For indeed this latter may seem first to have been wronged, and so in some manner through grief thereof to have been forced to be angry, whereas he who through lust doth commit anything did of himself merely resolve upon that action. Positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. No matter how much suffering you went through, you never wanted to let go of those memories. Sometimes even to live is an act of courage, Seneca. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. There are only two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. You can't win if you don't play, Alex Hormozzi. Lucilla buried Varus. Then was Lucilla herself buried by others. So Secunda Maximus, then Secunda herself. So Epitynchanus Diotimus, then Epitynchanus himself. So Antoninus Pius, Faustina his wife, then Antoninus himself. This is the course of the world. First seller, Adrianus, then Adrianus himself. And those austere ones, those that foretold other men's deaths, those that were so proud and stately, where are they now? Those austere ones I mean such as were Carax and Demetrius the Platonic, 
and Eudaemon, and others like unto those. They were all but for one day, all dead and gone long since, some of them no sooner dead than forgotten, others soon turned into fables. Of others, even that which was fabulous is now long since forgotten. This thereafter thou must remember, that whatsoever thou art compounded of shall soon be dispersed, and that thy life and breath or thy soul shall either be no more or shall ranslated, spi, and appointed to some certain place and station. Women are meant to be loved, not to be understood. Why should you feel anger at the world, as if the world would notice? The unexamined life is not worth living. Apology. This statement encapsulates the Socratic method and Plato's belief in the pursuit of knowledge and self-reflection. It encourages us to question our assumptions and strive for a life of understanding. Have patience and trust the process. The harder you work, the luckier you will get. Better 50% now than 100% never. You are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream, Les Brown. Injustice is not an evil in itself, but only in consequence of the fear which is associated with the apprehension of being discovered by those appointed to punish such actions. The man who moves a mountain begins by carrying away small stones. You have two choices, to control your mind or to let your mind control you. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic cords of memory will swell when again touched, as surely they will be, by the better angels of our nature. Abraham Lincoln If it keeps you happy, keep it quiet. Be selfish with your time. Keeping your body healthy is an expression of gratitude to the whole cosmos, the trees, the clouds, everything. Tishnat Han As long as the foot doth that which belongeth unto it to do, and the hand that which belongs unto it, their labor, whatsoever it be, is not unnatural. So a man, as long as he doth that which is proper unto a man, his labor cannot be against nature, and if it be not against nature, then neither is it hurtful unto him. But if it were so that happiness did consist in pleasure, how came notorious robbers, impure, abominable livers, parasites and tyrants in so large a measure to have their part of pleasures? A slip of the foot you may soon recover, but a slip of the tongue you may never get over. Stop worrying about what other people think. Honestly, who gives a damn? A disciplined mind brings happiness. Buddha. Do not hang on to your mistakes just because you spent a lot of time making them. You can lie down for people to walk on you and they will still complain that you are not flat enough. You are the master of your own destiny. Neville Goddard.
He that knoweth not what the world is, knoweth not where he himself is. And he that knoweth not what the world was made for, cannot possibly know either what are the qualities or what is the nature of the world. Now he that in either of these is to seek, for what he himself was made is ignorant also. What then dost thou think of that man, who proposeth unto himself, as a matter of great moment, the noise and applause of men, who both where they are and what they are themselves, are altogether ignorant? Dost thou desire to be commended of that man, who thrice in one hour perchance doth himself curse himself? Dost thou desire to please him who pleaseth not himself? Or dost thou think that he pleaseth himself, who doth use to repent himself almost of everything that he doth? Control your thoughts, or your thoughts will control you. It is good to be generous, benign, and magnanimous, but there's a limit, or you'll be taken for granted. Peace comes from within. Do not seek it without. Buddha. All cruelty springs from weakness. The family you create is more important than the family you come from. You are already that which you seek. Papaji. He who understands the limits of life knows that it is easy to obtain that which removes the pain of want and makes the whole of life complete and perfect. Thus he has no longer any need of things which involve struggle. It's easy to say you want something but it's hard to actually make it happen. If you believe it will work out, you'll see opportunities. If you believe it won't, you will see obstacles. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think to enjoy, to love. Marcus Aurelius Your friends' problems become your problems. The smaller your social circle, the fewer problems you have. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself, Rumi. As often as a father kisseth his child, he should say secretly with himself, said Epictetus, tomorrow perchance shall he die. But these words be ominous, no words ominous, said he that signify anything that is natural, in very truth indeed not more ominous than this, to cut down grapes when they are ripe, green grapes, ripe grapes, dried grapes, or raisins, so many changes and mutations of one thing, not into that which was not absolutely, but rather so many several changes and mutations, not into that which hath no being at all, but into that which is not yet in being. One has to understand that braveness is not the absence of fear, but rather the strength to keep on going forward despite the fear. Our life is what our thoughts make it. The purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. Ralph Waldo Emerson Life did not intend to make us perfect. 
Whoever is perfect belongs in a museum. If you are unhappy, you are doing something wrong. When you are truly present, you realize that you are in the right place at the right time. Eckhart Tolle As several members in one body united, so are reasonable creatures in a body divided and dispersed, all made and prepared for one common operation. And this thou shalt apprehend the better, if thou shalt use thyself often to say to thyself, I am Melus or a member of the mass and body of reasonable substances. But if thou shalt say, I am Maros, or a part, thou dost not yet love men from thy heart. The joy that thou takest in the exercise of bounty is not yet grounded upon a due ratiocination and right apprehension of the nature of things. Thou dost exercise it as yet upon this ground barely, as a thing convenient and fitting, not as doing good to thyself when thou dost good unto others. Do not envy other people's good qualities, but instill them in yourself through admiration. Mastery of reading and writing requires a master, still more so life. Time heals what reason cannot, Seneca. Most people are a complete waste of time. Mistakes are stepping stones, not stumbling blocks. Learn from them and move forward. You have to have the courage to go after your dreams because no one is going to do it for you. David Goggins It is not circumstances themselves that trouble people, but their judgments about those circumstances. For example, death is nothing terrible, for if it were, it would have appeared so to Socrates. But having the opinion that death is terrible, this is what is terrible. Therefore, whenever we are hindered or troubled or distressed, let us never blame others, but ourselves, that is, our own opinions. The uneducated person blames others for their failures. Those who have just begun to be instructed blame themselves. Those whose learning is complete blame neither others nor themselves. A man only begins to be valued when he is no longer there. Hard talk is often a blessing in disguise. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. Confucius Of all the thieves, idiots are the most harmful. They steal our time and mood from us. It can ruin your life only if it ruins your character. Otherwise, it cannot harm you inside or out. We should consider every day lost on which we have not danced at least once. Friedrich Nietzsche This, what is it in itself, and by itself, according to its proper constitution? What is the substance of it? What is the matter or proper use? What is the form or efficient cause? What is it for in this world, and how long will it abide? Thus must thou examine all things that present themselves unto thee. A man who suffers before it is necessary suffers more than is necessary. If you waste money, you can earn it again. But if you miss the moment, it can never be returned. Success is not final, 
Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill Man's manners are a mirror in which his portrait is reflected. Procrastination is the thief of time. Call it what you want. But one day in retrospect, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. The biggest risk is not taking any risk at all. Alex Hormozzi What is the nature of the good? God is beneficial, but the good also is beneficial. It is consistent then that where the nature of God is, there also the nature of the good should be. What then is the nature of God? Flesh? Certainly not. An estate in land? By no means. Fame? No. Is it intelligence, knowledge, right reason? Yes. Herein then simply seek the nature of the good. For I suppose that you do not seek it in a plant. No. Do you seek it in an irrational animal? No. If then you seek it in a rational animal, why do you still seek it anywhere except in the superiority of rational over irrational animals? Now plants have not even the power of using appearances, and for this reason you do not apply the term good to them. The good then requires the use of appearances. Does it require this use only? For if you say that it requires this use only, say that the good and that happiness and unhappiness are in irrational animals also. But you do not say this, and you do right. For if they possess even in the highest degree the use of appearances, yet they have not the faculty of understanding the use of appearances. And there is good reason for this, for they exist for the purpose of serving others, and they exercise no superiority. For the ass, I suppose, does not exist for any superiority over others. No, but because we had need of a back which is able to bear something, and in truth we had need also of his being able to walk. And for this reason he received also the faculty of making use of appearances, for otherwise he would not have been able to walk. And here then the matter stopped. For if he had also received the faculty of comprehending the use of appearances, it is plain that consistently with reason he would not then have been subjected to us, nor would he have done us these services, but he would have been equal to us and like to us. Will you not then seek the nature of good in the rational animal? For if it is not there, you not choose to say that it exists in any other thing. What then? Are not plants and animals also the works of God? They are, but they are not superior things, nor yet parts of the gods. But you are a superior thing. You are a portion separated from the deity. You have in yourself a certain portion of him. Why then are you ignorant of your own noble descent? Why do you not know whence you came? Will you not remember when you are eating, who you are, who eat, and whom you feed? When you are in conjunction with a woman, will you not remember who you are who do this thing? When you are in social intercourse, when you are exercising yourself, when you are engaged in discussion, know you not that you are nourishing a god, that you are exercising a god? Wretch, you are carrying about a god with you, and you know it not. Do you think that I mean some god of silver or of gold and external? You carry him within yourself, and you perceive not that you are polluting him by impure thoughts and dirty deeds. And if an image of God were present, you would not dare to do any of the things which you are doing. But when God himself is present within and sees all and hears all, you are not ashamed of thinking such things and doing such things, ignorant as you are of your own nature and subject to the anger of God. Then why do we fear when we are sending a young man from the school into active life, lest he should do anything improperly, eat improperly, have improper intercourse with women, and lest the rags in which he is wrapped should debase him, 
lest fine garments should make him proud. This youth does not know his own God. He knows not with whom he sets out. But can we endure when he says, I wish I had you with me? Have you not God with you? And do you seek for any other when you have him? Or will God tell you anything else than this? If you were a statue of Phidias, either Athena or Zeus, you would think broth of yourself and of the artist. And if you had any understanding, you would try to do nothing unworthy of him who made you or of yourself, and try not to appear in an unbecoming dress to those who look on you. But now because Zeus has made you, for this reason do you care not how you shall appear? And yet, is the artist like the artist in the other? Or the work in the one case like the other? And what work of an artist, for instance, has in itself the faculties which the artist shows in making it? Is it not marble or bronze or gold or ivory? And the Athena of Phidias, when she has once extended the hand and received in it the figure of victory, stands in that attitude forever. But the works of God have power of motion. They breathe. They have the faculty of using the appearances of things and the power of examining them. Being the work of such an artist, do you dishonor him? And what shall I say? Not only that he made you, but also entrusted you to yourself and made you a deposit to yourself. Will you not think of this too? But do you also dishonor your guardianship? But if God had entrusted an orphan to you, would you thus neglect him? He has delivered yourself to your care and says, I had no one fitter to entrust him to than yourself. Keep him for me, such as he is by nature, modest, faithful, erect, unterrified, free from passion and perturbation. And then you do not keep him such. But some will say, Whence has this fellow got the arrogance which he displays and these supercilious looks? I have not yet so much gravity as befits a philosopher, for I do not yet feel confidence in what I have learned and what I have assented to. I still fear my own weakness. Let me get confidence and the you shall see a countenance such as I ought to have and an attitude such as I ought to have. Then I will show to you the statue when it is perfected, when it is polished. What do you expect? A supercilious countenance? Does the Zeus at Olympia lift up his brow? No, his look is fixed as becomes him who is ready to say, Irrevocable is my word and shall not fail. Such will I show myself to you, faithful, modest, noble, free from perturbation. What, an immortal too, exempt from old age and from sickness? No, but dying as becomes a god, sickening as becomes a god. This power I possess. This I can do, but the rest I do not possess, nor can I do. I will show the nerves of a philosopher. What nerves are these? A desire never disappointed, an aversion which never falls on that which it would avoid, a proper pursuit, a diligent purpose, an assent which is not rash. These you shall see. The only time you should ever look back is to see how far you've come. You will never find a friend who will be as faithful as an old wife, an old dog, and ready money. Knowledge speaks, but wisdom listens. Jimi Hendrix Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Out of suffering have emerged the strongest souls. The most massive characters are seared with scars. I am determined to practice deep listening. I am determined to practice loving speech. Thich Nhat Hanh
I for my part will do what belongs unto me. As for other things, whether things unsensible or things irrational, or if rational yet deceived and ignorant of the true way, they shall not trouble or distract me. For as for those creatures which are not endued with reason and all other things and matters of the world, whatsoever I freely and generously, as one endued with reason, of things that have none, make use of them. And as for men, towards them as naturally partakers of the same reason, my care is to carry myself sociably. But whatsoever it is that thou art about, remember to call upon the gods. And as for the time how long thou shalt live to do these things, let it be altogether indifferent unto thee, for even three such hours are sufficient. Everyone at some time or another sits down to a banquet of consequences. Don't let someone who did you wrong make you think there's something wrong with you. Well begun is half done, Aristotle. Don't be afraid of a shadow. It just means there's a light nearby. Do not seek, otherwise you will lose. Do not seek, and you will find. To know the self is to know the ultimate freedom, Papaji. Introduction Everyone can benefit from the true meaning and philosophical teachings of Stoicism. Having the ability to choose how you react and respond can alleviate anxious and depressive symptoms. The Stoic way of thinking allows you to thoughtfully process and accept situations while giving you the power to choose how you react, handle, and cope. Stoicism allows you to control what you can and let go of what you cannot. It helps you to choose your attitude, to live in the moment, and make sense of your circumstances. Living a more stoic life will give you the opportunity to live a mentally healthier, more balanced, and overall happier life. The carefully curated quotations compiled here are wonderful tenets to live by and help illustrate specific lessons to improve yourself. We, the authors, have embarked on this exploration of Stoic philosophy in our writings and in our daily professions, where we assist individuals on their journeys of personal growth and recovery. We understand that this odyssey of continued self-education and improvement begins with you. All of us understand that Stoicism is one of the many tools you can use to help quell the suffering to have a better understanding of yourself and improve your approach to living. The things you think about determine the quality of your mind. Your soul takes on the color of your thoughts. It is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. He who is not contented with what he has, would not be contented with what he would like to have. Socrates It is less of a problem to be poor than to be dishonest. He who walks straight rarely falls. It's a lie to think you're not good enough. It's a lie to think you're not worth anything. Nick Vujicic Mortality While mortality may at first seem like a negative topic, it should instead be seen as a chance to embrace life, be grateful for what you have, and come to terms with the fact that nothing is forever. 
the idea of mortality as an ending point should be looked at in a positive manner. Time is finite. For this reason, it should be viewed as a precious resource. Learning to rethink mortality is a perfect example about the stoic practice of changing your mindset, expressing gratitude and accepting and living in agreement with your circumstances. Acceptance of your mortality will allow you to live each day to the fullest and appreciate each moment. Since mortality is something you cannot control in most circumstances, you must learn to view it with a new perspective and allow that new perspective to enrich your life, not hinder it. Acceptance and acknowledgement of what is to come and fully appreciating being in the present will allow you to live a more mindful and purposeful life. Always accept reality and focus on making the most out of any situation. One day all those late nights and early mornings will pay off. If you got away with a bad decision, it doesn't make it a good decision. If you wish to control others, you must first control yourself. Today is victory over yourself of yesterday. Tomorrow is your victory over lesser men. Miyamoto Musashi Do it alone. Do it broke. Do it tired. Do it scared. Just do it. Everyone has three faces. Firstly, the one we show to the world and strangers. Secondly, the one we show to family, spouses, and close friends. And thirdly, the one we show only to ourselves. I'm determined to practice deep listening. I'm determined to practice loving speech. Thich Nhat Hanh. Whatsoever thou doest hereafter aspire unto, thou mayest even now enjoy and possess, if thou doest not envy thyself thine own happiness. And that will be, if thou shalt forget all that is past, and for the future refer thyself wholly to the divine providence, and shalt bend and apply all thy present thoughts and intentions to holiness and righteousness, to holiness in accepting willingly whatsoever is sent, by the divine providence as being that which the nature of the universe hath appointed unto thee, which also hath appointed thee for that, whatsoever it be, to righteousness in speaking the truth freely and without ambiguity and in doing all things justly and discreetly. Now in this good course, let not other men's either wickedness or opinion or voice hinder thee. No, nor the sense of this thy pampered mass of flesh for let that which suffers look to itself. If therefore whensoever the time of thy departing shall come, thou shalt readily leave all things, and shalt respect thy mind only, and that divine part of thine, and this shall be thine only fear, not that some time or other thou shalt cease to live, but thou shalt never begin to live according to nature. Then shalt thou be a man indeed, worthy of that world, from which thou hadst thy beginning, then shalt thou cease to be a stranger in thy country, and to wonder at those things that happen daily, as things strange and unexpected, and anxiously to depend of divers things that are not in thy power. The harder you work, the luckier you will get. If you can survive your own thoughts, you can survive anything. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. May West No matter how thin you slice it, there will always be two sides. You don't notice your progress in life because you are always raising the bar.
You must have chaos within you to give birth to a dancing star. Friedrich Nietzsche thus spoke Z Whatsoever proceeds from the gods immediately, that any man will grant totally depends from their divine providence. As for those things that are commonly said to happen by fortune, even those must be conceived to have dependence from nature or from that first and general connection and concatenation of all those things, which more apparently by the divine providence are administered and brought to pass. All things flow from thence, and whatsoever it is that is, is both necessary and conducing to the whole, part of which thou art, and whatsoever it is that is requisite and necessary for the preservation of the general, must of necessity for every particular nature be good and be hopeful, and as for the whole, it is preserved, as by the perpetual mutation and conversion of the simple elements one into another, so also by the mutation and alteration of things mixed and compounded. Let these things suffice thee. Let them be always unto thee, as thy general rules and precepts. As for thy thirst after books, away with it with all speed, that thou die not murmuring and complaining, but truly meek and well satisfied, and from thy heart thankful unto the gods. Do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. What God doesn't give to you, you have to go and get for yourself. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Aristotle Learn as if you were not reaching your goal and as though you were scared of missing it. Whoever wishes to keep a secret must hide the fact that he possesses one. Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. Tony Robbins Is the cucumber bitter? Set it away. Brambles are in the way? Avoid them. Let this suffice. Add not presently speaking unto thyself what serve these things for in the world. For this one that is acquainted with the mysteries of nature will laugh at thee for it. As a carpenter would or a shoemaker, if meeting in either of their shops with some shavings or small remnants of their work, thou shouldest blame them for it. And yet those men, it is not for want of a place where to throw them that they keep them in their shops for a while. But the nature of the universe hath no such out place. But herein doth consist the wonder of her art and skill, that she, having once circumscribed herself within some certain bounds and limits, whatsoever is within her that seems either corrupted or old or unprofitable, she can change it into herself, and of these very things can make new things, so that she needeth not to seek elsewhere out of herself, either for a new supply of matter and substance, or for a place where to throw out whatsoever is irrecoverably putrid and corrupt. Thus she, as for place, so for matter and art is herself sufficient unto herself. If you would know the value of money, go and try to borrow some. Failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. I am a great believer in luck. I find the harder I work, the more I have of it. Thomas Jefferson Winners focus on winning. Losers focus on winners. Stop letting other people take advantage of you. Learn to say no and understand your rights.
A human being is like a television set with millions of channels. We cannot let just one channel dominate us. We have the seed of everything in us, and we have to recover our own sovereignty. Teach not Hanna. About reason, how it contemplates itself. Every art and faculty contemplates certain things especially. When then it is itself of the same kind with the objects which it contemplates, it must of necessity contemplate itself also. But when it is of an unlike kind, it cannot contemplate itself. For instance, the shoemaker's art is employed on skins, but itself is entirely distinct from the material of skins. For this reason it does not contemplate itself. Again, the grammarian's art is employed about articulate speech. Is then the art also articulate speech? By no means. For this reason it is not able to contemplate itself. Now reason, for what purpose has it been given by nature? For the right use of appearances. What is it then itself? A system of certain appearances. So by its nature it has the faculty of contemplating itself so. Again, sound sense. For the contemplation of what things does it belong to us, good and evil, and things which are neither, what is it then itself? Good. And want of sense, what is it? Evil. Do you see then that good sense necessarily contemplates both itself and the opposite? For this reason it is the chief and the first work of a philosopher to examine appearances and to distinguish them and to admit none without examination. You see, even in the matter of coin, in which our interest appears to be somewhat concerned, how we have invented an art, and how many means the assayer uses to try the value of coin, the sight, the touch, the smell, and lastly the hearing. He throws the coin down and observes the sound, and he is not content with its sounding once, but through his great attention, he becomes a musician. In like manner, where we think that to be mistaken and not to be mistaken make a great difference, there we apply great attention to discovering the things which can deceive. But in the matter of our miserable ruling faculty, yawning and sleeping, we carelessly admit every appearance, for the harm is not noticed. When then you would know how careless you are with respect to good and evil, and how active with respect to things which are indifferent. Observe how you feel with respect to being deprived of the sight of eyes, and how with respect of being deceived, and you will discover you are far from feeling as you ought to in relation to good and evil. But this is a matter which requires much preparation and much labor and study. Well then, do you expect to acquire the greatest of arts with small labor? And yet the chief doctrine of philosophers is brief. If you would know, read Zeno's writings and you will see. For how few words it requires to say man's end is to follow the gods, and that the nature of good is a proper use of appearances. But if you say what is God, what is appearance, and what is particular, and what is universal nature, then indeed many words are necessary. If then Epicurus should come and say that the good must be in the body, in this case also many words become necessary, and we must be taught what is the leading principle in us, and the fundamental and the substantial. And as it is not probable that the good of a snail is in the shell, is it probable that the good of a man is in the body? But you yourself, Epicurus, possess something better than this. What is that in you which deliberates? What is that which examines everything? What is that which forms a judgment about the body itself, that it is the principal part? And why do you light your lamp and labor for us and write so many books? Is it that we may not be ignorant of the truth, who we are and what we are with respect to you? Thus the discussion requires many words. Good things fall apart, so better things can fall together. You can hide memories, but you can't erase the history that produced them.
Ubi Concordia, Ibi Victoria, where there is unity, there is victory. Publilius Cirrus. If you do not conquer self, you will be conquered by yourself. Things won't happen in a certain way just because you want them to happen that way. Either you run the day or the day runs you. Jim Rohn Death is nothing to us, for that which has been dissolved into its elements experiences no sensations, and that which has no sensation is nothing to us. Never take the responsibility that does not belong to you. Be yourself. People don't have to like you, and you don't have to care. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Ralph Waldo Emerson Be the person you needed when you were younger. Sometimes, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. You cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude toward what happens to you, and in that, you will be mastering change rather than allowing it to master you. Brian Tracy We must consider both the ultimate end and all clear sensory evidence to which we refer our opinions for otherwise everything will be full of uncertainty and confusion. When in doubt, tell the truth. Do not indulge in dreams of having what you have not, but reckon up the chief of the blessings you do possess, and then thankfully remember how you would crave for them if they were not yours. For it's disgraceful for an old person, or one in sight of old age, to have only the knowledge carried in their notebooks. Zeno said this. What do you say? Clinthes said that. What do you say? How long will you be compelled by the claims of another? Take charge and stake your own claim. Something posterity will carry in its notebook. Seneca. Never take for granted the time you spend with the people you keep. It could be over any day. You can always rise above those who offend you by forgiving them. The essence of your being is boundless and infinite. Papaji He that seeth the things that are now hath seen all that either was ever or ever shall be, for all things are of one kind, and all like one unto another. Meditate often upon the connection of all things in the world, and upon the mutual relation that they have one unto another. For all things are after a sort folded and involved one within another, and by these means all agree well together. For one thing is consequent unto another, by local motion, by natural conspiration and agreement, and by substantial union, or reduction of all substances into one. To be truly happy, you have to be willing to let go of what makes you unhappy.
Each defeat, each heartbreak, each loss contains its own seed, its own lesson on how to improve your future. No man is more unhappy than he who never faces adversity, for he is not permitted to prove himself. Seneca Holding grudges will never harm the people you hate, only you. The best view comes after the hardest climb. Look for the good in every person and every situation. You'll almost always find it. Brian Tracy Out of Antisthenes It is a princely thing to do well and to be ill spoken of. It is a shameful thing that the face should be subject unto the mind, to be put into what shape it will, and to be dressed by it as it will, and that the mind should not bestow so much care upon herself as to fashion herself and to dress herself as best becometh her. Only two things can reveal life's great secrets, suffering and love. Everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms. To choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. John Wooden Humans have come into being for the sake of each other, so either teach them or learn to bear them. Kindness without honesty is manipulation. The only thing more contagious than a good attitude is a bad one. David Goggins To the stone that is cast up, when it comes down it is no hurt unto it, as neither benefit when it doth ascend. Do not compare your life to others. You have no idea what their journey is all about. Recognizing that you are not where you want to be is a starting point to begin changing your life. When setting out on a journey, do not seek advice from someone who never left home. Rumi Do not overshare. Privacy is power. From the point of view of youth, life is an endless future. From the point of view of old age, it is a very short past. Your true nature is boundless and infinite, beyond all form and limitation. Nisargadatta Maharaj I am formed by nature for my own good. I am not formed for my own evil. What then is the discipline for this purpose? First of all the highest and the principal and that which stands as it were the entrance is this when you are delighted with anything be delighted as with a thing which is not one of those which cannot be taken away but as with something of such a kind as an earthen pot is or a glass cup that when it has been broken you may remember what it was and may not be troubled so in this matter also if you kiss your own child or your brother or friend, never give full license to the appearance and allow not your pleasure to go as far as it chooses, but check it and curb it as those who stand behind men in their triumphs and remind them that they are mortal. 
do you also remind yourself in like manner that he whom you love is mortal and that what you love is nothing of your own. It has been given to you for the present, not that it should not be taken from you, nor has it been given to you for all time, but as a fig is given to you or a bunch of grapes at the appointed season of the year. But if you wish for these things in winter, you are a fool. So if you wish for your son or friend, when it is not allowed to you, you must know that you are wishing for a fig in winter. For such as winter is to a fig, such is every event which happens from the universe to the things which are taken away according to its nature. And further, at the times when you are delighted with a thing, place before yourself the contrary appearances. What harm is it while you are kissing your child to say with a lisping voice, Tomorrow you will die, and to a friend also. Tomorrow you will go away, or I shall, and never shall we see one another again. But these are words of bad omen, and some incantations also are of bad omen. But because they are useful, I don't care for this. Only let them be useful. But do you call things to be of bad omen except those which are significant of some evil? Cowardice is a word of bad omen, and meanness of spirit, and sorrow, and grief, and shamelessness. These words are of bad omen, and yet we ought not to hesitate to utter them in order to protect ourselves against the things. Do you tell me that a name which is significant of any natural thing is of evil omen? Say that even for the ears of corn to be reaped is of bad omen for it signifies the destruction of the ears, but not of the world. Say that the falling of the leaves also is of bad omen, and for the dried fig to take the place of the green fig, and for raisins to be made from the grapes. For all these things are changes from a former state into other states, not a destruction, but a certain fixed economy and administration. Such is going away from home and a small change, such is death, a greater change, not from the state which now is to that which is not, but to that which is not now. Shall I then no longer exist? You will not exist, but you be something else, of which the world now has need. For you also came into existence not when you chose, but when the world had need of you. Wherefore the wise and good man remembering who he is and whence he came, and by whom he was produced, is attentive only to this, how he may fill his place with due regularity and obediently to God. Dost thou still wish me to exist? I will continue to exist as free, as noble in nature, as thou hast wished me to exist, for thou hast made me free from hindrance in that which is my own. But hast thou no further need of me? I thank thee, and so far I have remained for thy sake, and for the sake of no other person, and now in obedience to thee I depart. How dost thou depart? Again I say, as thou hast pleased, as free as thy servant, as one who has known thy commands and thy prohibitions, and so long as I shall stay in thy service, whom dost thou will me to be? A prince or a private man, a senator or a common person? a soldier or a general, a teacher or a master of a family. Whatever place and position thou mayest assign to me, as Socrates says, I will die ten thousand times rather than desert them. And where dost thou will me to be? In Rome or Athens or Thebes or Giara. Only remember me there where I am. If thou sendest me to a place where there are no means for men living according to nature, I shall not depart in disobedience to thee, but as if thou wast giving me the signal to retreat, I do not leave thee. Let this be too from my intention, but perceive that thou hast no need of me. If means of living according to nature be allowed me, I will seek no other place than that in which I am, or other men than those among whom I am. Let these thoughts be ready to hand by night and by day, these you should write, 
these you should read, about these you should talk to yourself and to others. Ask a man, can you help me at all for this purpose? And further, go to another and to another. Then if anything that is said he, contrary to your wish, this reflection first will immediately relieve you, that it is not unexpected. For it is a great thing in all cases to say, I knew that I begot a son who is mortal. For so you also will say, I knew that I am mortal. I knew that I may leave my home. I knew that I may be ejected from it. I knew that I may be led to prison. Then if you turn round and look to yourself and seek the place from which comes that which has happened, you will forthwith recollect that it comes from the place of things which are out of the power of the will and of things which are not my own. What then is it to me? Then you will ask, and this is the chief thing, and who is it that sent it? The leader or the general, the state, the law of the state. Give it me then, for I must always obey the law in everything. Then, when the appearance pains you, for it is not in your power to prevent this, contend against it by the aid of reason, conquer it. Do not allow it to gain strength nor to lead you to the consequences by raising images such as it pleases and as it pleases. If you be in Giara, do not imagine the mode of living at Rome and how many pleasures there were for him who lived there and how many there would be for him who returned to Rome. But fix your mind on this matter, how a man who lives in Giara ought to live in Giara like a man of courage. And if you be in Rome, do not imagine what the life in Athens is, but think only of the life in Rome. Then in the place of all other delights substitute this, that of being conscious that you are obeying God, that not in word but in deed, you are performing the acts of a wise and good man. For what a thing it is for a man to be able to say to himself, Now, whatever the rest may say in solemn manner in the schools, and may be judged to be saying in a way contrary to common opinion, This I am doing, and they are sitting and are discoursing of my virtues and inquiring about me and praising me, and of this Zeus has willed that I shall receive from myself a demonstration, and shall myself know if he has a soldier such as he ought to have, a citizen such as he ought to have, and if he has chosen to produce me to the rest of mankind as a witness of the things which are independent of the will. See that you fear without reason, that you foolishly desire what you do desire. Seek not the good in things external, seek it in yourselves. If you do not, you will not find it. For this purpose he leads me at one time hither, at another time sends me thither, shows me to men as poor, without authority and sick, sends me to Giara, leads me into prison, not because he hates me, far from him be such a meaning, for who hates the best of his servants, nor yet because he cares not for me, for he does not neglect any even of the smallest things. But he does this for the purpose of exercising me and making use of me as a witness to others. Being appointed to such a service, do I still care about the place in which I am, or with whom I am, or what men say about me? And do I not entirely direct my thoughts to God and to his instructions and commands? Having these things always in hand, and exercising them by yourself, and keeping them in readiness, you will never be in want of one to comfort you and strengthen you. For it is not shameful to be without something to eat, but not to have reason sufficient for keeping away fear and sorrow. But if once you have gained exemption from sorrow and fear, will there any longer be a tyrant for you, or a tyrant's guard, or attendants on Caesar? Or shall any appointment to offices at court cause you pain, or shall those who sacrifice in the capital, on the occasion of being named to certain functions, cause pain to you who have received so great authority from Zeus? Only do not make a proud display of it, nor boast of it, 
but show it by your acts. And if no man perceives it, be satisfied that you are yourself in a healthy state and happy. Remember when you wanted what you currently have. If you look at the people in your circle and you don't get inspired, you don't have a circle. You have a cage. Confine yourself to the present. Marcus Aurelius Anyone who loves in the expectation of being loved in return is wasting their time. The master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. All truly great thoughts are conceived while walking. Friedrich Nietzsche, Twilight of the Idols. Purge your opinions so that nothing cleave to you of the things which are not your own. That nothing grow to you. That nothing give you pain when it is torn from you. And say while you are daily exercising yourself as you do there, not that you are philosophizing, for this is an arrogant expression, but that you are presenting an asserter of freedom, for this is really freedom. To this freedom Diogenes was called by Antisthenes, and he said that he could no longer be enslaved by any man. For this reason, when he was taken prisoner, how did he behave to the pirates? Did he call any of them master? And I do not speak of the name, for I am not afraid of the word but of the state of mind by which the word is produced. How did he reprove them for feeding badly their captives? How was he sold? Did he seek a master? No, but a slave. And when he was sold, how did he behave to his master? Immediately he disputed with him and said to his master that he ought not to be dressed as he was, nor shaved in such a manner. And about the children he told them how he ought to bring them up. And what was strange in this? For if his master had bought an exercise master, would he have employed him in the exercises of the palaestra as a servant or as a master? And so if he had bought a physician or an architect? And so in every matter it is absolutely necessary that he who has skill must be the superior of him who has not. Whoever, then, generally possesses the science of life, what else must he be than master? For who is master of a ship? The man who governs the helm. Why? Because he who will not obey him suffers for it. But a master can give me stripes. Can he do it, then, without suffering for it? So I also used to think. But because he cannot do it without suffering for it, for this reason it is not in his power, and no man can do what is unjust without suffering for it. And what is the penalty for him who puts his own slave in chains? What do you think that is? The fact of putting the slave in chains. And you also will admit this, if you choose to maintain the truth, that man is not a wild beast, but a tame animal. For when is a, a vine doing badly? when it is in a condition contrary to its nature. When is a cock just the same? Therefore a man also is so. What then is a man's nature? To bite, to kick, and to throw into prison and to behead? No, but to do good, to cooperate with others, to wish them well. At that time then, he is in a bad condition. Whether you choose to admit it or not, when he is acting foolishly, Socrates then did not fare badly? No, but his judges aid his accusers did, nor did Helvidius at Rome fare badly? No, but his murderer did. How do you mean? The same as you do when you say that a cock has not fared badly when he has gained the victory and been severely wounded, but that the cock has fared badly when he has been defeated and is unhurt. Nor do you call a dog fortunate who neither pursues game nor labors. But when you see him sweating, 
when you see him in pain and panting violently after running? What paradox do we utter if we say that the evil in everything's that which is contrary to the nature of the thing? Is that a paradox? For do you not say this in the case of all other things? Why then in the case of man only do you think differently? But because we say that the nature of man is tame and social and faithful, you will not say that this is a paradox? It is not. What then is it a paradox to say that a man is not hurt when he is whipped or put in chains or beheaded? Does he not, if he suffers nobly, come off even with increased advantage and profit? But is he not hurt, who suffers in a most pitiful and disgraceful way, who in place of a man becomes a wolf or viper or wasp? Well then, let us recapitulate the things which have been agreed on. The man who is not under restraint is free, to whom things are exactly in that state in which he wishes them to be. But he who can be restrained or compelled or hindered or thrown into any circumstances against his will is a slave. But who is free from restraint? He who desires nothing that belongs to others. And what are the things which belong to others? Those which are not in our power either to have or not to have, or to have of a certain kind, or in a certain manner. Therefore the body belongs to another, the parts of the body belong to another, possession belongs to another. If, then, you are attached to any of these things as your own, you will pay the penalty which it is proper for him to pay who desires what belongs to another. This road leads to freedom. That is the only way of escaping from slavery to be able to say at last with all your soul, lead me, O Zeus, and thou, O destiny, the way that I am bid by you to go. But what do you say, philosopher? The tyrant summons you to say something which does not become you. Do you say it or do you not? Answer me. Let me consider. Will you consider now? But when you were in the school, what was it which you used to consider? Did you not study what are the things that are good and what are bad, and what things are neither one nor the other? I did. What then was our opinion? That just and honorable acts were good, and that unjust and disgraceful acts were bad. Is life a good thing? No. Is death a bad thing? No. Is prison? No. But what did we think about mean and faithless words and betrayal of a friend and flattery of a tyrant? That they are bad. Well then, you are not considering, nor have you considered nor deliberated. For what is the matter for consideration? Is it whether it is becoming for me, when I have it in my power, to secure for myself the greatest of good things, and not to secure for myself the greatest evils? a fine inquiry indeed, and necessary, and one that demands much deliberation. Man, why do you mock us? Such an inquiry is never made. If you really imagine that base things were bad and honorable things were good, and that all other things were neither good nor bad, you would not even have approached this inquiry, nor have come near it but immediately you would have been able to distinguish them by the understanding as you would do by the vision. For when do you inquire if black things are white, if heavy things are light, and do not comprehend the manifest evidence of the senses? How then do you now say that you are considering whether things which are neither good nor bad ought to be avoided more than things which are bad? But you do not possess these opinions, and neither do these things seem to you to he neither good nor bad. But you think that they are the greatest evils, nor do you think those other things to be evils, but matters which do not concern us at all. For thus, from the beginning, you have accustomed yourself. Where am I? In the schools? And are any listening to me? I am discoursing among philosophers, but I have gone out of the school, away with this talk of scholars and fools. 
Thus a friend is overpowered by the testimony of a philosopher. Thus a philosopher becomes a parasite. Thus he lets himself for hire for money. Thus in the Senate a man does not say what he thinks. In private he proclaims his opinions. You are a cold and miserable little opinion, suspended from idle words as from a hair. But keep yourself strong and fit for the uses of life and initiated by being exercised in action. How do you hear? I do not say that your child is dead, for how could you bear that? But that your oil is spilled, your wine drunk up. Do you act in such a way that one standing by you while you are making a great noise may say this only? Philosopher, you say something different in the school. Why do you deceive us? Why, when you are only a worm, do you say that you are a man? I should like to be present when one of the philosophers is lying with a woman, that I might see how he is exerting himself, and what words he is uttering, and whether he remembers his title of philosopher, and the words which he hears, or says, or reads. And what is this to liberty? Nothing else than this, whether you who are rich choose or not. And who is your evidence for this? Who else than yourselves, who have a powerful master, and who live in obedience to his nod and motion, and who faint if he only looks at you with a scowling countenance? You who court old women and old men and say, I cannot do this, it is not in my power. Why is it not in your power? Our only limitations are those we set up in our own minds. You are lonely not because no one needs you, but because you care about who is next to you. Concern should drive us into action and not into depression. No man is free who cannot control himself. Pythagoras If a man knows more than others, he becomes lonely. Nowhere can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul. The past has no power over the present moment. Eckhart Tolle The ambitious supposeth another man's act, praise and applause, to be his own happiness, the voluptuous his own sense and feeling, but he that is wise, his own action. You'll never find a rainbow if you're looking down. In every situation, life is asking us a question, and our actions are the answer. Our job is simply to answer well. Nature does nothing in vain. Aristotle this quote reflects Aristotle's belief in the purposeful and teleological nature of the universe, where every part contributes to the functioning of the whole. Ignorance is the root and stem of every evil. Keep your secrets to yourself. One of the biggest mistakes we make is assuming that other people think the way we think. Jay Shetty Either thou dost continue in this kind of life, and that is it, which so long thou hast been used unto and therefore tolerable, or thou doest retire, or leave the world, and that of thine own accord, and then thou hast thy mind, or thy life is cut off and then mayst thou rejoice that thou hast ended thy charge. One of these must needs be. Be therefore of good comfort. Things are only impossible until they are not. If you don't clear your misunderstanding in time, they become the reason for distance forever.
Repetitio es mater studiorum. Repetition is the mother of learning. Latin proverb. Destiny grants us our wishes, but in its own way, in order to give us something beyond our wishes. Out of suffering have emerged the strongest souls. The most massive characters are seared with scars. Leadership is not about being in charge. It is about taking care of those in your charge. Jocko Willink After one consideration, man is nearest unto us, as we are bound to do them good and to bear with them. But as he may oppose any of our true proper actions, so man is unto me but as a thing indifferent, even as the sun or the wind or some wild beast. By some of these it may be, that some operation or other of mine may be hindered. However, of my mind and resolution itself, there can be no let or impediment by reason of that ordinary constant both exception or reservation wherewith it inclineth and ready conversion of objects from that which may not be to that which may be which in the prosecution of its inclinations as occasion serves it doth observe for by these the mind doth turn and convert any impediment whatsoever to be her aim and purpose, so that what before was the impediment is now the principal object of her working, and that which before was in her way is now her readiest way. Stay strong. I would rather be a swineherd understood by the swine than a poet misunderstood by men. Failure is not always a mistake. It may simply be the best one can do under the circumstances. The real mistake is to stop trying. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. Ronald Reagan America was not built on fear. America was built on courage on imagination and an unbeatable determination to do the job at hand. Harry S. Truman Fill your bowl to the brim and it will spill. Keep sharpening your knife and it will be blunt. Care about what other people think and you will always be their prisoner. The acceptance of oneself is the essence of the whole moral problem and the epitome of a whole outlook on life. Carl Jung How know we whether Socrates were so eminent indeed and of so extraordinary a disposition? For that he died more gloriously, that he disputed with the sophists more subtlety, that he watched in the frost more assiduously, that being commanded to fetch innocent Salaminius, he refused to do it more generously. All this will not serve, nor that he walked in the streets with much gravity and majesty, as was objected unto him by his adversaries, which nevertheless a man may well doubt of, whether it were so or no, or which above all the rest, if so be that it were true, a man would well consider of, whether commendable or discommendable. The thing, therefore, that we must inquire into is this. What manner of soul Socrates had, whether his disposition was such, as that all that he stood upon and sought after in this world was barely this, that he might ever carry himself justly towards men and holily towards the gods, neither vexing himself to no purpose at the wickedness of others, nor yet ever condescending to any man's evil fact or evil intentions, through either fear or engagement of friendship. Whether of those things that happened unto him by God's appointment, 
He neither did wonder at any when it did happen, or thought it intolerable in the trial of it. And lastly, whether he never did suffer his mind to sympathize with the senses and affections of the body. For we must not think that nature hath so mixed and tempered it with the body, as that she hath not power to circumscribe herself, and by herself to intend her own ends and occasions. There is time for everything. A man only begins to be valued when he is no longer there. You cannot hope to make progress in areas where you have taken no action. Epictetus Learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. If you want to see the world change, start with yourself. Accept responsibility for your life. Know that it is you who will get you where you want to go, no one else. Les Brown Every circumstance has two handles. Use one, and it may be carried, but use the other, and it cannot be carried. Therefore, whenever your brother treats you unjustly, do not take hold of the matter by the handle that he has wronged you, for this is the handle by which the matter cannot be carried, but rather by the other handle, that he is your brother, that you were raised up together, and you will take hold of it using the handle by which it may be carried. It is not about having what you want, but wanting what you have. Be equally indifferent to blame and praise. The earth repays those who cultivate her, both justly and well, multiplying what she received, endowing in abundance all the necessities of life to anyone willing to work, and all this without violating your dignity or self-respect. Musonius Rufus A man is but the product of his thoughts. What he thinks, he becomes. If you're brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. Help others achieve their dreams, and you will achieve yours. Les Brown Honor that which is chiefest and most powerful in the world, and that is it, which makes use of all things and governs all things. So also in thyself, honor that which is chiefest and most powerful, and is of one kind and nature, with that which we now spake of. For it is the very same, which being in thee, turneth all other things to its own use, and by whom also thy life is governed. Fake love is mighty convincing in a world where real love is mighty rare. Don't let success go to your head. Don't let failure go to your heart. I will reveal to you a love potion, without medicine, without herbs, without any witch's magic. If you want to be loved, then love. Hikado of Rhodes Fear is just excitement in need of an attitude adjustment. The only sad thing would be clinging to the past once it's out of reach. The moment you accept and assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled, the universe must conform. Neville Goddard Estoic Life 
simply defined. Stoicism is the endurance of pain or hardship, without display of feelings and without complaint. Stoicism is a human response to challenge made possible by the fact that we are not merely the byproducts of our circumstances. We are all thinking, self-actualizing beings who have the ability to selectively influence our emotional responses, which in turn shapes how we view the world, ourselves, and others. Stoicism is known as an eudaimonistic theory from the Greek eudaimonia, roughly meaning happiness or flourishing. This is meant to be the culmination of human endeavor, or end, telos, which the Stoics defined as living in agreement with nature. Nature is itself a complex and multivalent concept for the Stoics, which in turn means their definition of the goal or final end of human striving is very rich. For example, their idea of living in agreement with nature can also be explained as taking a deeper look into those situations that you can control and those which you cannot. Realizing the need to let go of what you can't control and accepting the facts rather than fighting results in a more harmonious, balanced, and thoughtful life. In modern times, living in agreement with nature means making a conscious effort to make the best of a given situation while being at peace with what you cannot change. There is no greater waste of time than justifying your actions to people who have a life you don't want. If you want to be happy, set a goal that commands your thoughts, liberates your energy, and inspires your hopes. Have patience. All things are difficult before they become easy. Sa'adi. When you're working for someone else's dream, you sacrifice your own. It's a slow process, but quitting won't speed it up. Begin with the end in mind. Start with the end outcome and work backwards to make your dream possible. Wayne Dyer Remember how long thou hast already put off these things, and how often a certain day and hour, as it were, having been set unto thee by the gods, thou hast neglected it. It is high time for thee to understand the true nature both of the world whereof thou art a part, and of that Lord and Governor of the world, from whom, as a channel from the spring, thou thyself didst flow, and that there is but a certain limit of time appointed unto thee, which if thou shalt not make use of to calm and allay the many distempers of thy soul, it will pass away, and thou with it, and never after return. Learn to heal without venting to everyone to avoid disappointment. You will have to make very practical decisions about what you want from life and what you're willing to give up. And if you don't make them, then life will make them for you. Let go of attachments and desires and you will find peace. Buddha Learn to say no without explaining yourself. Overthinking ruins you. It ruins the situation, twists things around, makes you worry about futile questions, and makes everything much worse than it actually is. If you talk about it, it's a dream. If you envision it, it's possible. If you schedule it, it's real. Tony Robbins Epicurus Letter to Menwakius Greetings Let no one be slow to seek wisdom when he is young nor weary in the search of it when he has grown old. 
for no age is too early or too late for the health of the soul. And to say that the season for studying philosophy has not yet come, or that it is past and gone, is like saying that the season for happiness is not yet, or that it is now no more. Therefore both old and young alike ought to seek wisdom, the former in order that, as age comes over him, he may be young in good things because of the grace of what has been, and the latter in order that, while he is young, he may at the same time be old because he has no fear of the things which are to come. So we must exercise ourselves in the things which bring happiness, since if that be present, we have everything, and if that be absent, all our actions are directed towards attaining it. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Never trust a lonely friend because, while some find strength in solitude, Others may lose their way in it. If you accomplish something good with hard work, the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. Musonius Rufus No one in this world will stand up for you like the way your parents do. Always be there for them. Not everyone will make it to your future. Some people are passing through to teach you life lessons. Success is a numbers game. Keep asking questions until you get a yes, Jack Canfield. Fronto to how much envy and fraud and hypocrisy the state of a tyrannous king is subject unto, and how they who are commonly called ephatridae, i.e., nobly born, are in some sort incapable or void of natural affection. Mountains cannot be surmounted except by winding paths. Remember, you train people how to treat you, unconsciously or not. I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. Carl Jung If you stay positive in a negative situation, you win. Out of your vulnerabilities will come your strength. Freedom is the recognition of your true nature. Papa G. Against those who on account of sickness go away home. I am sick here, said one of the pupils, and I wish to return home. At home, I suppose, you free from sickness. Do you not consider whether you are doing anything here which may be useful to the exercise of your will, that it may be corrected? For if you are doing nothing toward this end, it was to no purpose that you came. Go away. Look after your affairs at home. For if your ruling power cannot be maintained in a state conformable to nature, it is possible that your land can, that you will be able to increase your money. You will take care of your father in his old age, frequent the public place, hold magisterial office. Being bad, you will do badly anything else that you have to do. But if you understand yourself and know that you are casting away certain bad opinions and adopting others in their place, and if you have changed your state of life from things which are not within your will to things which are within your will, and if you ever say, alas, you are not saying what you say on account of your father or your brother, but on account of yourself, do you still allege your sickness? Do you not know that both disease and death must surprise us while we are doing something? 
the husbandman while he is tilling the ground, the sailor while he is on his voyage? What would you be doing when death surprises you? For you must be surprised when you are doing something. If you can be doing anything better than this when you are surprised, do it. For I wish to be surprised by disease or death when I am looking after nothing else than my that may be free from perturbation, own will that I may be free from hindrance, free from compulsion, and in a state of liberty. I wish to be found practicing these things that I may be able to say to God, Have I in any respect transgressed thy commands? Have I in any respect wrongly used the powers which thou gavest me? Have I misused my perceptions? or my preconceptions? Have I ever blamed thee? Have I ever found fault with thy administration? I have been sick because it was thy will, and so have others, but I was content to be sick. I have been poor because it was thy will, but I was content also. I have not filled a magisterial office because it was not thy pleasure that I should. I have never desired it. Hast thou ever seen me for this reason discontented? Have I not always approached thee with a cheerful countenance, ready to do thy commands and to obey thy signals? Is it now thy will that I should depart from the assemblage of men? I depart. I give thee all thanks that thou hast allowed me to join in this thy assemblage of men and to see thy works and to comprehend this thy administration. May death surprise me while I am thinking of these things while I am thus writing and reading. But my mother will not hold my head when I am sick. Go to your mother then, for you are a fit person to have your head held when you are sick. But at home I used to lie down on a delicious bed. Go away to your bed. Indeed you are fit to lie on such a bed even when you are in health. Do not then lose what you can do there. But what does Socrates say? As one man, he says, is pleased with improving his land, another with improving his horse, so I am daily pleased in observing that I am growing better. Better in what? In using nice little words? Man, do not say that. In little matters of speculation? What are you saying? And indeed I do not see what else there is on which philosophers employ their time. Does it seem nothing to you to have never found fault with any person, neither with God nor man, to have blamed nobody, to carry the same face always in going out and coming in? This is what Socrates knew, and yet he never said that he knew anything or taught anything. But if any man asked for nice little words or little speculations, he would carry him to Protagoras or to Hippias, and if any man came to ask for pot herbs, he would carry him to the gardener. Who then among you has this purpose? For if indeed you had it, you would both be content in sickness and in hunger and in death. If any among you has been in love with a charming girl, he knows that I say what is true. Don't be scared because you don't have all the answers right away. You will learn through your experiences and find your own way to happiness. A slip of the foot you may soon recover, but a slip of the tongue you may never get over. Holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Buddha Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Don't give up on yourself. There's a reason why you started. If you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. Zig Ziglar Under Above and about are the motions of the elements, but the motion of virtue is none of those motions, but is somewhat more excellent and divine, whose way to speed and prosper in it must be through a way that is not easily comprehended.
Do not be afraid to treat people the way they treat you. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated, Confucius. True greatness begins with understanding your own insignificance. You may delay, but time will not. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. Jack Canfield Is my reason and understanding sufficient for this, or no? If it be sufficient, without any private applause or public ostentation as of an instrument, which by nature I am provided of, I will make use of it for the work in hand, as of an instrument, which by nature I am provided of. If it be not, and that otherwise it belong not unto me particularly as a private duty, I will either give it over, and leave it to some other that can better effect it, or I will endeavor it, but with the help of some other, who with the joint help of my reason, is able to bring somewhat to pass, that will now be seasonable and useful for the common good. For whatsoever I do, either by myself or with some other, the only thing that I must intend is that it be good and expedient for the public. For as for praise, consider how many who once were much commended are now already quite forgotten, yea, they that commended them, how even they themselves are long since dead and gone. Be not therefore ashamed, whensoever thou must use the help of others. For whatsoever it be that lieth upon thee to effect, thou must propose it unto thyself, as the scaling of walls is unto a soldier. And what if thou through either lameness, or some other impediment art, not able to reach unto the top of the battlements alone, which with the help of another thou mayst, wilt thou therefore give it over, or go about it with less courage and alacrity, because thou canst not effect it all alone? Worry doesn't take away tomorrow's troubles. It takes away today's peace. Embrace stress as the opposite of apathy. He who conquers himself is the mightiest warrior, Confucius. Never lose hope. Storms make people stronger, and they never last forever. The hardest part is at the beginning of the journey. The rocket loses 90% of its fuel during takeoff. We do not grow absolutely, chronologically. We grow sometimes in one dimension, and not in another unevenly. Alan Watts. Against those who readily come to the profession of sophists, they who have taken up bare theorems immediately wish to vomit them forth, as persons whose stomach is diseased do with food. First digest the thing, then do not vomit it up thus. If you do not digest it, the thing become truly an emetic, a crude food and unfit to eat. But after digestion show us some chance in your ruling faculty, as athletes show in their shoulders by what they have been exercised and what they have eaten. As those who have taken up certain arts show by what they have learned. The carpenter does not come and say, hear me talk about the carpenter's art, but having undertaken to build a house, he makes it, and proves that he knows the art. You also ought to do something of the kind. Eat like a man, drink like a man, dress, marry, beget children, do the office of a citizen, endure abuse, bear unreasonable brother, bear with your father, 
bear with your son, neighbor, compassion. Show us these things that we may see that you have in truth learned something from the philosophers. You say, no, but come and hear me read commentaries. Go away and seek somebody to vomit them on. And indeed, I will expound to you the writings of Chrysippus as no other man can. I will explain his text most clearly. I will add also, if I can, the vehemence of Antipater and Archidemus. Is it then for this that young men shall leave their country and their parents, that they may come to this place and hear you explain words? Ought they not to return with a capacity to endure, to be active in association with others, free from passions, free from perturbation, with such a provision for the journey of life with which they shall be able to bear well the things that happen and derive honor from them? And how can you give them any of these things which you do not possess? Have you done from the beginning anything else than employ yourself about the resolution of syllogisms, of sophistical arguments, and in those which work by questions? But such a man has a school. Why should not I also have a school? These things are not done man in a careless way, nor just as it may happen. But there must be a fit age and life and God as a guide. You say no, but no man sails from a port without having sacrificed to the gods and invoked their help. Nor do men so without having called on Demeter. And shall a man who has undertaken so great a work undertake it safely without the gods? And shall they who undertake this work come to it with success? What else are you doing, man, than divulging the mysteries? You say, there is a temple at Eleusis and one here also. There is an hierophant at Eleusis, and I also will make an hierophant. There is a herald, and I will establish a herald. There is a torchbearer at Eleusis, and I also will establish a torchbearer. There are torches at Eleusis, and I will have torches here. The words are the same. How do the things done here differ from those done there? Most impious man, is there no difference? These things are done both in due place and in due time. And when accompanied with sacrifice and prayers, when a man is first purified, and when he is disposed in his mind to the thought that he is going to approach sacred rites and ancient rites. In this way the mysteries are useful. In this way we come to the notion that all these things were established by the ancients for the instruction and correction of life. But you publish and divulge them out of time, out of place, without sacrifices, without purity. You have not the garments which the Hierophant ought to have, nor the hair, nor the headdress, nor the voice, nor the age, nor have you purified yourself as he has but you have committed to memory the words only, and you say, sacred are the words by themselves. You ought to approach these matters in another way. The thing is great, it is mystical, not a common thing, nor is it given to every man. But not even wisdom perhaps is enough to enable a man to take care of youths. A man must have also a certain readiness and fitness for this purpose and a certain quality of body. And above all things, he must have God to advise him to occupy this office, as God advised Socrates to occupy the place of one who confutes error, Diogenes, the office of royalty and reproof, and the office of teaching precepts. But you open a doctor's shop, though you have nothing except physic. But where and how they should be applied you know not, nor have you taken any trouble about it. See, that man says, I too have salves for the eyes. Have you also the power of using them? Do you know both when and how they will do good and to whom they will do good? Why then do you act at hazard in things of the greatest importance? Why are you careless? Why do you undertake a thing that is in no way fit for you? Leave it to those who are able to do it, and to do it well. Do not yourself bring disgrace on philosophy through your own acts. 
and be not one of those who load it with a bad reputation. But if theorems please you, sit still and turn them over by yourself. But never say that you are a philosopher, nor allow another to say it. But say, he is mistaken, for neither are my desires different from what they were before, nor is my activity directed to other objects, nor do I assent to other things nor in the use of appearances have I altered at all from my former condition. This you must think and say about yourself, if you would think as you ought. If not, act at hazard and do what you are doing, for it becomes you. No man was ever wise by chance. Catch a good mood, it so rarely visits us. To move the world, we must first move ourselves. Socrates Better a broken promise than none at all. If you love someone, you must be prepared to set them free. The biggest risk is not taking any risk at all. Alex Hormozzi As a pig that cries and flings when his throat is cut, fancy to thyself every one to be, that grieves for any worldly thing and takes on. Such a one is he also, who upon his bed alone, doth bewail the miseries of this our mortal life. And remember this, that unto reasonable creatures only it is granted that they may willingly and freely submit unto providence, but absolutely to submit is a necessity imposed upon all creatures equally. Keep going. Trust in yourself and your first instinct on decisions. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Plato. This quote highlights Plato's belief that self-discovery and fulfillment are achieved through contributing to the betterment of society. Better to be hated for what you are than to be loved for something you are not. Things that will count, your health and your achievements. Get after it, Jocko Willink. Those animals which are incapable of making binding agreements with one another not to inflict nor suffer harm are without either justice or injustice. And likewise, for those peoples who either could not or would not form binding agreements not to inflict nor suffer harm. To succeed, jump as quickly at opportunities as you do at conclusions. Failure is not proof, it is information. The soul is eternal and imperishable. It is not subject to birth or death. Bhagavad Gita You really don't want everybody as a friend anyway. Stay quiet about your goals. Soon your results will do all the talking. The only real limitation on your abilities is the level of your desires. If you want it badly enough, there are no limits on what you can achieve. Brian Tracy When thou seest Satiro, think of Socraticus and Eutyches or Hymen. And when Euphrates, think of Eutychio and Silvanus. When Alciphron, of Tropaeophorus, when Xenophon, of Crito or Severus. 
And when thou doest look upon thyself, fancy unto thyself someone or other of the king Azers. And so for every one, someone or other that hath been for estate and profession answerable unto him, then let this come to thy mind at the same time. And where now are they all? Nowhere or anywhere? For so shalt thou at all time be able to perceive how all worldly things are but as the smoke that vanisheth away, or indeed mere nothing, especially when thou shalt call to mind this also, that whatsoever is once changed shall never be again as long as the world endureth. And thou then, how long shalt thou endure? And why doth it not suffice thee, if virtuously, and as becometh thee, thou mayest pass that portion of time, how little soever it be, that is allotted unto thee? Do your best and trust the process. The harder you work, the luckier you will get. Never confuse motion with action. Let us rise up and be thankful. For if we didn't learn a lot today, at least we learned a little. And if we didn't learn a little, at least we didn't get sick. And if we got sick, at least we didn't die. So, let us all be thankful. Buddha Anyone who can make you angry becomes your master. Who dares nothing needs hope for nothing. You don't need to be better than anyone else. You just need to be better than you used to be. Wayne Dyer The best kind of revenge is not to become like unto them. The more we value things outside our control, the less control we have. Think of tomorrow, the past can't be mended. Enjoy present pleasures in such a way as not to injure future ones. Seneca There is no way to peace. Peace is the way. Problems are the price you pay for progress. If you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. Zig Ziglar When any shall either impeach thee with false accusations, or hatefully reproach thee, or shall use any such carriage towards thee, get thee presently to their minds and understandings, and look in them, and behold what manner of men they be. Thou shalt see that there is no such occasion why it should trouble thee, what such as they are think of thee. Yet must thou love them still, for by nature they are thy friends and the gods themselves in those things that they seek from them as matters of great moment are well content all manner of ways as by dreams and oracles to help them as well as others. If it keeps you happy, keep it quiet. If you can dream it, you can do it. When you realize how perfect everything is, you will tilt your head back and laugh at the sky. Buddha Have enough courage to start and enough heart to finish. No regrets, just lessons. No worries, just acceptance. No expectations. Just gratitude. Life is too short. You can't control people's behavior, 
but you can control how you respond to it. Jay Shetty Toys and fooleries at home, wars abroad, sometimes terror, sometimes torpor or stupid sloth. This is thy daily slavery. By little and little, if thou doest not better look to it, those sacred dogmata will be blotted out of thy mind. How many things be there which when, as a mere naturalist, thou hast barely considered of according to their nature, thou doest let pass without any further use. Whereas thou shouldst in all things so join action and contemplation, that thou mightest both at the same time attend all present occasions, to perform everything duly and carefully, and yet so intend the contemplative part too, that no part of that delight and pleasure which the contemplative knowledge of everything according to its true nature doth of itself afford, might be lost. Or, that the true and contemplative knowledge of everything according to its own nature might of itself, action being subject to many lets and impediments, afford unto thee sufficient pleasure and happiness, not apparent indeed, but not concealed. And when shalt thou attain to the happiness of true simplicity and unaffected gravity? When shalt thou rejoice in the certain knowledge of every particular object according to its true nature, as what the matter and substance of it is, what use it is for in the world, how long it can subsist, what things it doth consist of, who they be that are capable of it, and who they that can give it and take it away? Genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work. A sword can only be formed once it goes into the fire. Contentment is natural wealth. Luxury is artificial poverty. Socrates Do not let anyone ever make you feel like you don't deserve what you want. Don't depend too much on anyone in this world, because even your own shadow leaves you when you are in darkness. In the stillness of the mind, you will find your true self. Papaji Then is the soul as Empedocles doth liken it, like unto a sphere or globe, when she is all of one form and figure, when she neither greedily stretcheth out herself unto anything, nor basely contracts herself, or lies flat and dejected, but shineth all with light, whereby she does see and behold the true nature, both that of the universe, and her own in particular. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path, and leave a trail. The world is a tragedy to those who feel, but a comedy to those who think. The trouble is you think you have time. Buddha. Being human means having doubts and yet still continuing on your path. He that cannot reason is a fool. He that will not is a bigot. He that dare not is a slave. If you don't think you're disciplined, it's because you haven't decided to be. Jocko Willink The natural properties and privileges of a reasonable soul are that she seethe herself, that she can order and compose herself, that she makes herself as she will herself, that she reaps her own fruits whatsoever, whereas plants, trees, unreasonable creatures, what fruit soever, be it either fruit properly or analogically only, they bear, they bear them unto others and not to themselves. Again, 
whensoever and wheresoever, sooner or later, her life doth end, she hath her own end nevertheless. For it is not with her, as with dancers and players, who if they be interrupted in any part of their action, the whole action must needs be imperfect, but she in what part of time or action soever she be surprised, can make that which she hath in her hand whatsoever it be, complete and full, so that she may depart with that comfort. I have lived, neither want I anything of that which properly did belong unto me. No company is better than bad company. No matter how nice or respectful you are, some people will still talk bad about you behind your back. Accept whatever comes to you, woven in the pattern of your destiny, for what could more aptly fit your needs. Marcus Aurelius Sometimes it's a blessing to not get what you want. Know your worth. Never put yourself in the bargain bin, or that's where others will value you. To live in the present moment is a miracle. The miracle is not to walk on water. The miracle is to walk on the green earth in the present moment, to appreciate the peace and beauty that are available now. Tishnat Han As for unreasonable creatures then, they had not long been, but presently begun among them swarms and flocks and broods of young ones and a kind of mutual love and affection. For though but unreasonable, yet a kind of soul these had, and therefore was that natural desire of union more strong and intense in them, as in creatures of a more excellent nature than either in plants or stones or trees. But among reasonable creatures, begun commonwealths, friendships, families, public meetings, and even in their wars, conventions, and truces. Now among them that were yet of a more excellent nature, as the stars and planets, though by their nature far distant one from another, yet even among them began some mutual correspondency and unity. So proper is it to excellency in a high degree, to affect unity, as that even in things so far distant, it could operate unto a mutual sympathy. But now behold, what is now come to pass. Those creatures that are reasonable are now the only creatures that have forgotten their natural affection and inclination of one towards another. Among them alone of all other things that are of one kind, there is not to be found a general disposition to flow together. But though they fly from nature, Yet are they stopped in their course and apprehended. Do they what they can, nature doth prevail. And so shalt thou confess, if thou dost observe it. For sooner mayest thou find a thing earthly, where no earthly thing is, than find a man that naturally can live by himself alone. Never argue with stupid people. They will drag you down to their level and then beat you with experience. People who do not understand your silence will never understand your words. Know thyself, ancient Greek aphorism. Don't say yes to everyone to make them comfortable. Check with yourself too before you commit. You cannot change the direction of the wind, but you can adjust your sails to reach your destination. How people treat you is their karma. How you react is yours. Wayne Dyer When you get an impression of some pleasure, as in the case of other impressions, guard against being carried away by it, but let the matter wait for you, 
and delay a little. Now consider these two periods of time, that during which you will enjoy the pleasure, and that when the pleasure has passed, during which you will regret it and reproach yourself. Next set against these how pleased you will be if you refrain, and how you will commend yourself. When, however, the time comes to act, take care that the attraction, allure and seductiveness of the pleasure do not overcome you. But set against all this the thought of how much better it is to be conscious of having won this victory over it. When you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. Perfect people don't drink, don't lie, don't cheat, don't fight, don't complain, and don't exist. He has the most who is content with the least, Diogenes. There is nothing more important to true growth than realizing that you are not the voice of the mind. You are the one who hears it. Not everyone wants to be your friend, and that's okay. You really don't want everybody as a friend anyway. In the stillness of the mind, you will find your true self. Papaji. Remember that the insult does not come from the person who abuses you or hits you, but from your judgment that such people are insulting you. Therefore, whenever someone provokes you, be aware that it is your own opinion that provokes you. Try, therefore, in the first place, not to be carried away by your impressions, for if you can gain time and delay, you will more easily control yourself. Let go and let life strengthen you no matter how much it hurts. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. Nature does nothing in vain. Aristotle. This quote reflects Aristotle's belief in the purposeful and teleological nature of the universe, where every part contributes to the functioning of the whole. Give back, even if it's donating your tag sale leftovers or handing a dollar bill over to someone less fortunate. Do it. It'll make you feel good. Prayers do not change the world, but prayers change people, and people change the world. Everything is transient, except the awareness that perceives it. Papaji. I continue my course by actions according to nature until I fall and cease, breathing out my last breath into that air, by which continually breathed in I did live, and falling upon that earth, out of whose gifts and fruits my father gathered his seed, my mother her blood, and my nurse her milk, out of which for so many years I have been provided, both of meat and drink, and lastly, which beareth me that tread upon it, and beareth with me that so many ways do abuse it, or so freely make use of it, so many ways to so many ends. You don't always have to be going, being and doing. It's really okay to just chill. Never say never because the days go by so fast and nothing stays the same. No man is hurt by himself. Diogenes. Accept criticism, but never accept disrespect.
pay attention to the negative signs that people give off and immediately disconnect from them. It will save you a lot of pain and more importantly, wasted time. To think in terms of either pessimism or optimism oversimplifies the truth. The problem is to see reality as it is. Tishnat Han. In another man's mind an understanding thy evil cannot subsist, nor in any proper temper or distemper of the natural constitution of thy body which is but, as it were, the coat or cottage of thy soul, wherein then, but in that part of thee, wherein the conceit and apprehension of any misery can subsist. Let not that part therefore admit any such conceit, and then all is well, though thy body, which is so near it should either be cut or burnt, or suffer any corruption or putrefaction, yet let that part to which it belongs to judge of these, be still, at rest. That is, let her judge this, that whatsoever it is that equally may happen to a wicked man and to a good man is neither good nor evil. For that which happens equally to him that lives according to nature and to him that doth not is neither according to nature nor against it and by consequent neither good nor bad. Don't moan, don't complain. Learn to be thick-skinned. Make the most of what you can. Adversity introduces a man to himself. It is amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. Harry S. Truman It is indeed very hard to move on, but once you do, you'll realize it was your best decision. People don't forget, nothing gets forgiven. In every moment, you are free to change your perspective. Muji. In what manner we ought to bear sickness? When the need of each opinion comes, we ought to have it in readiness. On the occasion of breakfast, such as relate to breakfast, in the bath, those that concern the bath, in bed, those that concern bed. Let sleep not come upon thy languid eyes before each daily action thou hast scanned. What's done amiss, what done, what left undone, from first to last examine all, and then blame what is wrong and what is right rejoice. And we ought to retain these verses in such way that we may use them, not that we may utter them aloud as when we exclaim Pian Apollo. Again in fever we should have ready such opinions as concern a fever, and we ought not, as soon as the fever begins, to lose and forget all. A man who has a fever, may if I philosophize any longer, may I be hanged, Wherever I go, I must take care of the poor body, that a fever may not come. But what is philosophizing? Is it not a preparation against events which may happen? Do you not understand that you are saying something of this kind? If I shall still prepare myself to bear with patience what happens, may I be hanged. But this is just as if a man, after receiving blows, should give up the pancratium. In the pancratium it is in our power to desist and not to receive blows. But in the other matter we give up philosophy. What shall we gain, I gain? What then should a man say on the occasion of each painful thing? It was for this that I exercised myself. For this I disciplined myself. God says to you, Give me a proof that you have duly practiced athletics, that you have eaten what you ought that you have been exercised, that you have obeyed the elliptes. Then do you show yourself weak when the time for action comes. Now is the time for the fever. Let it be born well. Now is the time for thirst well. 
Now is the time for hunger, bear it well. Is it not in your power? Who shall hinder you? The physician will hinder you from drinking, but he cannot prevent you from bearing thirst well. And he will hinder you from eating, but he cannot prevent you from bearing hunger well. But I cannot attend to my philosophical studies. And for what purpose do you follow them? Slave, is it not that you may be happy, that you may be constant? Is it not that you may be in a state conformable to nature and live so? What hinders you when you have a fever from having your ruling faculty conformable to nature? Here is the proof of the thing. Here is the test of the philosopher. For this also is a part of life, like walking, like sailing like journeying by land. So also is fever. Do you read when you are walking? No. Nor do you when you have a fever. If you walk about well, you have all that belongs to a man who walks. If you bear fever well, you have all that belongs to a man in a fever. What is it to bear a fever well? Not to blame God or man. Not to be afflicted at that which happens. To expect death well and nobly to do what must be done. When the physician comes in, not to be frightened at what he says, nor if he says, you are doing well, to be overjoyed. For what good has he told you? And when you were in health, what good was that to you? And even if he says, you are in a bad way, do not despond. For what is it to be ill? Is it that you are near the severance of the soul and the body? What harm is there in this? If you are not near now, will you not afterward be near? Is the world going to be turned upside down when you are dead? Why then do you flatter the physician? Why do you say, if you please, master, I shall be well? Why do you give him an opportunity of raising his eyebrows? Do you not value a physician as you do a shoemaker when he is measuring your foot or a carpenter when he is building your house, and so treat the physician as to the body which is not yours, but by nature dead. He who has a fever has an opportunity of doing this. If he does these things, he has what belongs to him. For it is not the business of a philosopher to look after these externals, neither his wine nor his oil nor his poor body, but his own ruling power. But as to externals, how must he act, so far as not to be careless about them? Where then is there reason for fear? Where is there then still reason for anger, and a fear about what belongs to others, about things which are of no value? For we ought to have these two principles in readiness, that except the will nothing is good nor bad, and that we ought not to lead events, but to follow them, my brother ought not to have behaved thus to me. No, but he will see to that. And however he may behave, I will conduct myself toward him as I ought. For this is my own business. That belongs to another. No man can prevent this. The other thing can be hindered. The truth is, everyone is going to hurt you. You just got to find the ones worth suffering for. There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. All you need is love. Love is the flower you've got to let grow. John Lennon Your deepest, darkest moment may be the best thing that ever happens to you. You cannot open a book without learning something. You have to make a decision that you are going to become better. David Goggins As they that long after figs in winter when they cannot be had, so are they that long after children before they be granted them. Believe in yourself 
and the rest will fall into place. There is nothing more unbearable than idleness. Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle, Plato. Life becomes so peaceful when your anger for the people who hurt you turns into sympathy for them. The more you spend clinging to the past, the less likely your future will be any brighter. Only the present moment contains life, Thich Nhat Hanh. Fit and accommodate thyself to that estate and to those occurrences which by the destinies have been annexed unto thee, and love those men whom thy fate it is to live with, but love them truly, an instrument, a tool, an utensil, whatsoever it be. If it be fit for the purpose it was made for, it is as it should be, though he perchance that made and fitted it be out of sight and gone. But in things natural, that power which hath framed and fitted them is and abideth within them still, for which reason she ought also the more to be respected, and we are the more obliged, if we may live and pass our time according to her purpose and intention, to think that all is well with us and according to our own minds. After this manner also, and in this respect it is, that he that is all in all, doth enjoy his happiness. Only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Embrace solitude is a time for reflection and self-discovery. Nothing is needed by fools, for they do not understand how to use anything, but are in want of everything. Marcus Aurelius Act as if you were already happy, and that will tend to make you happy. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. The most basic condition for happiness is freedom. Here we do not mean political freedom, but freedom from the mental formations of anger, despair, jealousy and delusion. As long as these poisons are still in our heart, happiness cannot be possible. Tish Nat Han Hippocrates, having cured many sicknesses, fell sick himself and died. The Chaldeans and astrologians, having foretold the deaths of divers, were afterwards themselves surprised by the fates. Alexander and Pompeius and Caius Caesar, having destroyed so many towns and cut off in the field so many thousands both of horse and foot, yet they themselves at last were fain to part with their own lives. Heraclitus having written so many natural tracts concerning the last and general conflagration of the world, died afterwards all filled with water within, and all bedaubed with dirt and dung without. Lyte killed Democritus, and Socrates, another sort of vermin, wicked ungodly men. How then stands the case? Thou hast taken ship, thou hast sailed, thou art come to land, go out if to another life, there also shalt thou find gods who are everywhere. If all life and sense shall cease, then shalt thou cease also to be subject to either pains or pleasures, and to serve and tend this vile cottage. So much the viler, by how much that which ministers unto it doth excel, the one being a rational substance and a spirit, the other nothing but earth and blood. Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all.
you'll see the most clearly at your life's darkest moments. Non est ad astra mollis eteris via. There is no easy way from the earth to the stars. Seneca the Younger. Whoever wishes to keep a secret must hide the fact that he possesses one. There is no other land, there is no other life but this. Our intention creates our reality. Wayne Dyer We can understand the will of nature from those things in which we do not differ from one another. For example, when our neighbor's slave has broken a cup, we are immediately ready to say, Well, such things happen. Understand then, that when your own cup gets broken, you should react in just the same way as when someone else's cup gets broken. Apply the same principle to matters of greater importance. Has someone else's child or wife died? There is no one who would not say, such is the way of things. But when someone's own child dies, they immediately cry, woe is me, how wretched I am. But we should remember how we feel when we hear of the same thing happening to other people. A person who doesn't make mistakes doesn't make anything at all. Overtrusting, betrayal, masturbation, loss of energy, stress, hair loss, overthinking, depression, saying no to important things, revenge, ruining your own life, observing, increase in wisdom, forgiving, healing, letting go, peace of mind. Quid quid Latin dictum sit, altum viditur. Whatever is said in Latin sounds profound. Latin joke. When true virtue is lost, good nature appears. When good nature is lost, justice appears. When justice is lost, decency appears. The rules of decency are only the semblance of truth and the beginning of all disorder. See people for who they are, not who you need them to be. Sometimes people don't want to hear the truth because they don't want their illusions destroyed. Friedrich Nietzsche But in the world, at one time men shun death as the greatest of all evils and at another time choose it as a respite from the evils in life. The wise man does not deprecate life, nor does he fear the cessation of life. The thought of life is no offense to him, nor is the cessation of life regarded as an evil. And even as men choose of food not merely and simply the larger portion, but the more pleasant, so the wise seek to enjoy the time which is most pleasant and not merely that which is longest. And he who admonishes the young to live well and the old to make a good end speaks foolishly, not merely because of the desirability of life, but because the same exercise at once teaches to live well and to die well. Much worse is he who says that it were good not to be born, but when once one is born to pass quickly through the gates of Hades, for if he truly believes this, why does he not depart from life? It would be easy for him to do so once he were firmly convinced. If he speaks only in jest, his words are foolishness as those who hear him do not believe. Everyone falls down. Getting back up is how you learn how to walk.
we are all the bad guy in someone's story. The harder the conflict, the greater the triumph. George Washington Act as if it were impossible to fail. Always be able to support yourself financially, mentally, and physically. Accept responsibility for your life. Know that it is you who will get you where you want to go, no one else. Les Brown Man, God, the world, everyone in their kind bear some fruits. All things have their proper time to bear. Though by custom, the word itself is in a manner become proper unto the vine, and the like, yet is it so nevertheless, as we have said. As for reason, that beareth both common fruit for the use of others, and peculiar, which itself doth enjoy. Reason is of a diffusive nature, what itself is in itself. It begets in others, and so doth multiply. If life were predictable, it would cease to be life and be without flavor. There are times when you see someone for the last time and don't even realize it. Watch out. You'll never know the true value of the moment until it becomes a memory. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Aristotle. This quote reflects Aristotle's belief that complex systems possess emergent properties that cannot be fully explained by analyzing their individual components. Here for a good time, not a long time. Decide. Much is expected from that to whom much is given. You have to do the work. You have to hold the line. You have to make it happen. Jocko Willink. On every occasion when something happens to you, remember to turn to yourself to see what capacity you have for dealing with it. If you are attracted to a beautiful boy or woman, you will find that self-control is the capacity to use for that. If hardship befalls you, you will find endurance. If abuse, you will find patience. Make this your habit, and you will not be carried away by impressions. Quiet people rarely become rich because you make money by talking to others. So start talking. Boastful speeches are the first sign of weakness, and those who are capable of great things keep their mouths shut. If you accomplish something good with hard work, the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. Musonius Rufus Do not pretend to be better than you are. Live life at your own pace. Be proud of how hard you are trying. Usually when we hear or read something new, we just compare it to our own ideas. If it is the same, we accept it and say that it is correct. If it is not, we say it is incorrect. In either case, we learn nothing. Tishnat Han Against the quarrelsome and ferocious, the wise and good man neither himself fights with any person, nor does he allow another so far as he can prevent it. 
and an example of this as well as of all other things is proposed to us in the life of Socrates, who not only himself on all occasions avoided fights, but would not allow even others to quarrel. See in Xenophon's symposium how many quarrels he settled, how further he endured Thrasymachus and Polus and Callicles, how he tolerated his wife, and how he tolerated his son, who attempted to confute him, aid to cavil with him. For he remembered well that no man has in his power another man's ruling principle. He wished therefore nothing else than that which was his own. And what is this? Not that this or that man may act according to nature, for that is a thing which belongs to another, but that while others are doing their own acts, as they choose, he may nevertheless be in a condition conformable to nature and live in it, only doing what is his own to the end that others also may be in a state conformable to nature. For this is the object always set before him by the wise and good man. Is it to be commander of an army? No. But if it is permitted him, his object is in this matter to maintain his own ruling principle. Is it to marry? No, but if marriage is allowed to him, in this matter his object is to maintain himself in a condition conformable to nature. But if he would have his son not to do wrong, or his wife, he would have what belongs to another not to belong to another. And to he instructed is this, to learn what things are a man's own and what belongs to another. How then is there left any place for fighting? to a man who has this opinion? Is he surprised at anything which happens, and does it appear new to him? Does he not expect that which comes from the bad to be worse and more grievous than what actually befalls him? And does he not reckon as pure gain whatever they may do which falls short of extreme wickedness? Such a person has reviled you. Great thanks to him for not having struck you. But he has struck me also. Great thanks that he did not wound you, but he wounded me also. Great thanks that he did not kill you. For when did he learn, or in what school, that man is a tame animal, that men love one another, that an act of injustice is a great harm to him who does it? Since then he has not to him who does it. Since then he has not learned this and is not convinced of it. Why shall he not follow that which seems to be for his own? Your neighbor has thrown stones. Have you then done anything wrong? But the things in the house have been broken. Are you then a utensil? No, but a free power of will. What then is given to you in answer to this? If you are like a wolf, you must bite in return and throw more stones. But if you consider what is proper for a man, examine your storehouse, see with what faculties you came into the world. Have you the disposition of a wild beast? Have you the disposition of revenge for an injury? When is a horse wretched? When he is deprived of his natural faculties? Not when he cannot crow like a cock, but when he cannot run. When is a dog wretched? Not when he cannot fly, but when he cannot track his game. Is then a man also unhappy in this way, not because he cannot strangle lions or embrace statues, for he did not come into the world in the possession of certain powers from nature for this purpose, but because he has lost his probity and his fidelity? People ought to meet and lament such a man for the misfortunes into which he has fallen, not indeed to lament because a man has been born or has died, but because it has happened to him in his lifetime to have lost the things which are his own, not that which he received from his father, not his land and house and his inn and his slaves. For not one of these things is a man's own, but all belong to others, are servile and subject to account, at different times given to different persons by those who have them in their power. But I mean the things which belong to him as a man, the marks in his mind with which he came into the world, such as we seek also on coins, 
and if we find them, we approve of the coins, and if we do not find the marks, we reject them. What is the stamp on this Cistercius? The stamp of Trajan. Presented. It is the stamp of Nero. Throw it away. It cannot be accepted. It is counterfeit. So also in this case. What is the stamp of his opinions? It is gentleness, a sociable disposition, a tolerant temper, a disposition to mutual affection. Produce these qualities. I accept them. I consider this man a citizen. I accept him as a neighbor, a companion in my voyages. Only see that he has not Nero's stamp. Is he passionate? Is he full of resentment? Is he fault-finding? If the whim seizes him, does he break the heads of those who come in his way? Why then did you say that he is a man? Is everything judged by the bare form? If that is so, say that the form in wax is all apple and has the smell and the taste of an apple. But the external figure is not enough. Neither then is the nose enough and the eyes to make the man. But he must have the opinions of a man. Here is a man who does not listen to reason, who does not know when he is refuted. He is an ass. In another man the sense of shame has become dead. He is good for nothing. He is anything rather than a man. This man seeks whom he may meet and kick or bite, so that he is not even a sheep or an ass, but a kind of wild beast. What then would you have me to be despised? By whom? By those who know you? And how and how shall those who know you despise a man who is gentle and modest? Perhaps you mean by those who do not know you? What is that to you? For no other artisan cares for the opinion of those who know not his art. But they will be more hostile to me for this reason. Why do you say me? Can any man injure your will? Or prevent you from using in a natural way the appearances which are presented to you? In no way can he. Why then are still disturbed? And why do you choose to show yourself afraid? And why do you not come forth and proclaim that you are at peace with all men, whatever they may do, and laugh at those chiefly who think that they can harm you? These slaves, you can say, know not either who I am nor where lies my good or my evil, because they have no access to the things which are mine. In this way, also, those who occupy a strong city mock the besiegers. What trouble these men are now taking for nothing. Our wall is secure. We have food for a very long time, and all other resources. These are the things which make a city strong and impregnable. But nothing else than his opinions makes a man's soul impregnable. For what wall is so strong, or what body is so hard, or what possession is so safe, or what honor so free from assault? All things everywhere are perishable, easily taken by assault, and, if any man in any way is attached to them, he must be disturbed. Expect what is bad. He must fear, lament, find his desires disappointed, and fall into things which he would avoid. Then do we not choose to make secure the only means of safety which are offered to us? And do we not choose to withdraw ourselves from that which is perishable and servile, and to labor at the things which are imperishable and by nature free? And do we not remember that no man either hurts another or does good to another, but that a man's opinion about each thing is that which hurts him, is that which overturns him? This is fighting. This is civil discord. This is war. That which made Eteocles and Polynices enemies was nothing else than this opinion which they had about royal power, their opinion about exile, that the one is the extreme of evils, the other the greatest good. Now this is the nature of every man to seek the good, to avoid the bad. Correction does much, but encouragement does more. Stop letting other people take advantage of you. Learn to say no and understand your rights.
Wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for kindness. Seneca All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Work hard in silence and show your skills at the job you get rather than criticizing the job. Peace is present right here and now in ourselves and in everything we do and see. Every breath we take, every step we take can be filled with peace, joy and serenity. Thich Nhat Hanh. Sift their minds and understandings, and behold what men they be, whom thou dost stand in fear of what they shall judge of thee, what they themselves judge of themselves. If you want to help yourself, find someone worthy to serve. Through service, you gain experience, contacts, and a reputation as a reliable and accountable ally. It is only through an apprenticeship that one becomes a master. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. To bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. Seneca Live every day as your last, because one of these days it will be. If someone is trying to bring you down, they are already below you. In the end, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years. Alan Watts Remember the fable of the country mouse and the city mouse, and the great fright and terror that this was put into. If you believe it will work out, you'll see opportunities. If you believe it won't, you will see obstacles. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. The truth is, like a lion, you don't have to defend it. Let it loose. It will defend itself. Augustine of Hippo The world is boring for boring people. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. To think is to practice brain chemistry. Deepak Chopra As we say commonly, the physician hath prescribed unto this man riding, unto another cold baths, unto a third to go barefoot. So it is alike to say, the nature of the universe hath prescribed unto this man sickness, or blindness, or some loss, or damage, or some such thing. For as there, when we say of a physician, that he hath prescribed anything, our meaning is, that he hath appointed this for that, as subordinate and conducing to health. So here, whatsoever doth happen unto any, is ordained unto him as a thing, subordinate unto the fates, and therefore do we say of such things, that they do simvenin, that is, happen or fall together as of square stones, when either in walls or pyramids in a certain position they fit one another, and agree, as it were, in an harmony, the masons say, that they do simvenin, as if thou shouldest say, fall together, so that in the general, though the things be diverse that make it, yet the consent or harmony itself is but one. Listen more than you speak, 
for wisdom often comes from silence. The saints are the sinners who keep on trying. Three things cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. Buddha. You are the only person who can make yourself happy. Life isn't fair, but it's still good. You can get everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. Zig Ziglar Within ten days, if so happen, thou shalt be esteemed a god of them, who now, if thou shalt return to the dogmata and to the honoring of reason, will esteem of thee no better than of a mere brute and of an ape. The best thing I ever did was stop telling people what's going on in my life. Be proud of how hard you are trying. We have four problems. Overthink, overtrust, overshare, overlove. The forms are eternal and unchanging, and they are the true reality. Plato. This quote encapsulates Plato's theory of forms, which posits a realm of perfect and unchanging entities that serve as the blueprints for the world we perceive. Start saving your money. Happiness depends more on the inward disposition of mind than on outward circumstances. To imagine is to create. Neville Goddard Is any man so foolish as to fear change, to which all things that once were not owe their being? And what is it that is more pleasing and more familiar to the nature of the universe? How couldst thou thyself use thy ordinary hot baths? Should not the wood that heateth them first be changed? How couldst thou receive any nourishment from those things that thou hast eaten, if they should not be changed? Can anything else almost, that is useful and profitable, be brought to pass without change? How then dost not thou perceive that for thee also by death to come to change is a thing of the very same nature and is necessary for the nature of the universe? Avoid disappointment, expect nothing from nobody. To be the best, you must be able to handle the worst. Talk doesn't cook rice, Chinese proverb. Be grateful always, because it can always be worse. Our wounds are often the openings into the best and most beautiful part of us. If you don't like how things are, change it. You're not a tree. Jim Rohn Have I done anything charitably? Then am I benefited by it. See that this upon all occasions may present itself unto thy mind and never cease to think of it. What is thy profession? To be good. And how should this be well brought to pass, but by certain theorems and doctrines, some concerning the nature of the universe, and some concerning the proper and particular constitution of man? Before a new chapter is begun, the old one has to be finished.
To be always fortunate and to pass through life with a soul that has never known sorrow is to be ignorant of one half of nature. An idea that is developed and put into action is more important than an idea that exists only as an idea. Buddha Courage is like a muscle. We strengthen it by use. Happiness is not something you postpone for the future. It is something you design for the present. To acquire true self-power, you have to feel beneath no one, be immune to criticism, and be fearless. Deepak Chopra What is the law of life? When a person was reading hypothetical arguments, Epictetus said, This also is an hypothetical law that we must accept what follows from the hypothesis. But much before this law is the law of life that we must act conformably to nature. For if in every matter and circumstance we wish to observe what is natural, it is plain that in everything we ought to make it our aim that is consequent, shall not escape us and that we do not admit the contradictory. First, then, philosophers exercise us in theory, which is easier, and then next they lead us to the more difficult things. For in theory there is nothing which draws us away from following what is taught. But in the matters of life many are the things which distract us. He is ridiculous, then, who says that he wishes to begin with the matters of real life, for it is not easy to begin with the more difficult things, and we ought to employ this fact as an argument to those parents who are vexed at their children learning philosophy. Am I doing wrong then, my father? And do I not know what is suitable to me and becoming? If indeed this can neither be learned nor taught, why do you blame me? But if it can he taught, teach me. And if you cannot, Allow me to learn from those who say that they know how to teach. For what do you think? Do you suppose that I voluntarily fall into evil and miss the good? I hope that it may not be so. What is then the cause of my doing wrong? Ignorance. Do you not choose then that I should get rid of my ignorance? Who was ever taught by anger the art of a pilot or music? Do you think then that by means of your anger I shall learn the art of life? He only is allowed to speak in this way who has shown such an intention. But if a man only intending to make a display at a banquet and to show that he is acquainted with hypothetical arguments reads them and attends the philosophers, what other object has he than that some man of senatorian rank who sits by him may admire? For there are the really great materials, and the riches here appear to be trifles there. This is the reason why it is difficult for a man to be master of the appearances, where the things which disturb the judgment are great. I know a certain person who complained, as he embraced the knees of Epaphroditus, that he had only one hundred and fifty times ten thousand denarii remaining. What then did Epaphroditus do? Did he laugh at him, as we slaves of Epaphroditus did? No, but he cried out with amazement, Poor man, how did you keep silence? How did you endure it? When Epictetus had reproved the person who was reading the hypothetical arguments, and the teacher who had suggested the reading was laughing at the reader, Epictetus said to the teacher, You are laughing at yourself. You did not prepare the young man, nor did you ascertain whether he was able to understand these matters, but perhaps you are only employing him as a reader. Well then, said Epictetus, if a man has not ability enough to understand a complex, do we trust him in giving praise? Do we trust him in giving blame? Do we allow that he is able to form a judgment about good or bad? And if such a man blames anyone, 
does the man care for the blame? And if he praises anyone, is the man elated, when in such small matters as an hypothetical syllogism, he who praises cannot see what is consequent on the hypothesis? This then is the beginning of philosophy, a man's perception of the state of his ruling faculty. For when a man knows that it is weak, then he will not employ it on things of the greatest difficulty. But at present, if men cannot swallow even a morsel, they buy whole volumes and attempt to devour them. And this is the reason why they vomit them up or suffer indigestion. And then come gripings, defluxes, and fevers. Such men ought to consider what their ability is. In theory, it is easy to convince an ignorant person. But in the affairs of real life, no one offers himself to be convinced. And we hate the man who has convinced us. But Socrates advised us not to live a life which is not subjected to examination. Just be real, it saves everyone's time. Educate your children to self-control, to the habit of holding possession and prejudice and evil tendencies subject to an upright and reasoning will and you will have done much to abolish misery from their future and crimes from society. By practicing self-discipline and devotion, you can transcend the cycle of birth and death. Bhagavad Gita Be brave to stand for what you believe in, even if you stand alone. He who is wise is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. The only true freedom is the realization of your own being. Nisargadatta Maharaj Spend not the remnant of thy days in thoughts and fancies concerning other men, when it is not in relation to some common good, when by it thou art hindered from some other better work. That is, spend not thy time in thinking what such a man doth, and to what end, what he saith, and what he thinks, and what he is about, and such other things or curiosities which make a man to rove and wander from the care and observation of that part of himself which is rational and overruling. See therefore in the whole series and connection of thy thoughts that thou be careful to prevent whatsoever is idle and impertinent, but especially whatsoever is curious and malicious, and thou must use thyself to think only of such things, of which if a man upon a sudden should ask thee, what it is that thou art now thinking, thou mayest answer this and that freely and boldly, that so by thy thoughts it may presently appear that in all thee is sincere and peaceable, as becometh one that is made for society, and regards not pleasures, nor gives way to any voluptuous imaginations at all, free from all contentiousness, envy, and suspicion, and from whatsoever else thou wouldest blush to confess thy thoughts were set upon. He that is such, is he surely that doth not put off to lay hold on that which is best indeed, a very priest and minister of the gods, well acquainted and in good correspondence with him, especially that is seated and placed within himself, as in a temple and sacrary, to whom also he keeps and preserves himself unspotted by pleasure, undaunted by pain, free from any manner of wrong, or contumely, by himself offered unto himself, not capable of any evil from others, a wrestler of the best sort, and for the highest prize, that he may not be cast down by any passion or affection of his own, deeply dyed and drenched in righteousness, embracing and accepting with his whole heart whatsoever either happeneth or is allotted unto him. Perceive failure as a vulnerable teacher and a stepping stone to success. Dost thou love life? Then do not squander time, for that's the stuff life is made of.
Non scolai sed vitae dishimus, we learn not for school but for life, Seneca the Younger. Keep your fears to yourself, but share your courage with others. Life is short, live it. Love is rare, grab it. Anger is bad, dump it. Fear is awful, face it. Memories are sweet, cherish them. The future is created in the present moment. Neville Goddard Of finery in dress A certain young man, a rhetorician, came to see Epictetus with his hair dressed more carefully than was usual and his attire in an ornamental style whereupon Epictetus said Tell me you do not think that some dogs are beautiful and some horses and so of all other animals I do think so, the youth replied. Are not then some men also beautiful and others ugly? Certainly. Do we then, for the same reason, call each of them in the same kind beautiful, or each beautiful for something peculiar? And you will judge of this matter thus, since we see a dog naturally formed for one thing, and a horse for another, and for another still, as an example, a nightingale, we may generally and not improperly declare each of them to be beautiful then when it is most excellent according to its nature. But since the nature of each is different, each of them seems to me to be beautiful in a different way. Is it not so? He admitted that it was. That then which makes a dog beautiful makes a horse ugly, and that which makes a horse beautiful makes a dog ugly, if it is true that their natures are different. It seems to be so, for I think that what makes a Pancratius beautiful makes a wrestler to be not good, and a runner to be most ridiculous, and he who is beautiful for the pentathlon is very ugly for wrestling. It is so, said he. What then makes a man beautiful? is that which in its kind makes both a dog and a horse beautiful. It is, he said. What then makes a dog beautiful? The possession of the excellence of a dog. And what makes a horse beautiful? The possession of the excellence of a horse. What then makes a man beautiful? Is it not the possession of the excellence of a man? And do you then, if you wish to be beautiful, young man, labor at this? the acquisition of human excellence. But what is this? Observe whom you yourself praise when you praise many persons without partiality. Do you praise the just or the unjust? The just. Whether do you praise the moderate or the immoderate? The moderate. And the temperate or the intemperate? The temperate. If then you make yourself such a person, you will know that you will make yourself beautiful. But so long as you neglect these things, you must be ugly, even though you contrive all you can to appear beautiful. Further, I do not know what to say to you, for if I say to you what I think, I shall offend you, and you will perhaps leave the school and not return to it. And if I do not say what I think, See how I shall be acting, if you come to me to be improved, and I shall not improve you at all. And if you come to me as to a philosopher, and I shall say nothing to you as a philosopher, and how cruel it is to you to leave you uncorrected. If at any time afterward you shall acquire sense, you will with good reason blame me and say, What did Epictetus observe in me that, when he saw me in such a plight coming to him in such a scandalous condition, he neglected me and never said a word? Did he so much despair of me? Was I not young? Was I not able to listen to reason? And how many other young men at this age commit many like errors? I hear that a certain Polmon from being a most dissolute youth underwent such a great change. 
Well, suppose that he did not think that I should be a pulmon. Yet he might have set my hair right. He might have stripped off my decorations. He might have stopped me from plucking the hair out of my body. But when he saw me dressed like, what shall I say? He kept silent. I do not say like what, but you will say when you come to your senses and shall know what it is and what persons use such a dress. If you bring this charge against me hereafter, what defense shall I make? Why, shall I say that the man will not be persuaded by me? Was Laius persuaded by Apollo? Did he and get drunk and show no care for the oracle? Well then, for this reason did Apollo refuse to tell him the truth. I indeed do not know whether you will be persuaded by me or not. But Apollo knew most certainly that Laius would not be persuaded, and yet he spoke. But why did he speak? I say in reply, but why is he Apollo? And why does he deliver oracles? And why has he fixed himself in this place as a prophet and source of truth, and for the inhabitants of the world to resort to him? And why are the words, Know Yourself, written in front of the temple, though no person takes any notice of them? Did Socrates persuade all his hearers to take care of themselves? Not the thousandth part. But however, after he had been placed in this position by the deity, as he himself says, he never left it. But what does he say even to his judges? If you acquit me on these conditions that I no longer do that which I do now, I will not consent, and I will not desist, but I will go up both to young and to old, and to speak plainly, to every man whom I meet, and I will ask the questions which I ask now, and most particularly will I do this to you, my fellow citizens, because you are more nearly related to me. To wish to be well is a part of becoming well. Focus on what you can control and let go of what you cannot. Do not train a child to learn by force or harshness, but direct them to it by what amuses their minds, so that you may be better able to discover with accuracy the peculiar bent of the genius of each. Plato Every animal with blood in its veins and horns on its head will fight when it is attacked. If a man knows more than others, he becomes lonely. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. Friedrich Nietzsche, Beyond Good and Evil To stir up a man to the contempt of death, this among other things, is of good power and efficacy, that even they who esteemed pleasure to be happiness, and pain misery, did nevertheless many of them contemn death as much as any. And can death be terrible to him, to whom that only seems good, which in the ordinary course of nature is seasonable, to him, to whom whether his actions be many or few, so they be all good, is all one and who, whether he behold the things of the world being always the same either for many years or for few years only, is altogether indifferent. O man, as a citizen thou hast lived and conversed in this great city the world, whether just for so many years or no, what is it unto thee? Thou hast lived, thou mayest be sure, as long as the laws and orders of the city required, which may be the common comfort of all, why then should it be grievous unto thee, if, not a tyrant, nor an unjust judge, but, the same nature that brought thee in, doth now send thee out of the world, as if the praetor should fairly dismiss him from the stage, whom he had taken in to act a while. Oh, but the play is not yet at an end, 
there are but three acts yet acted of it, thou hast well said, for in matter of life, three acts is the whole play. Now to set a certain time to every man's acting belongs unto him only, who as first he was of thy composition, so is now the cause of thy dissolution. As for thyself, thou hast to do with neither. Go thy ways, then well pleased and contented, for so is he that dismisseth thee. Don't make one person the center of all your happiness. Don't make them the reason why you are happy, because once that person walks away from your life, you're left with nothing. You can tell more about a person by what he says about others than you can by what others say about him. Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it, if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. Marcus Aurelius Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Trust wisely and not blindly. When you are inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bonds. Your mind transcends limitations, your consciousness expands in every direction, and you find yourself in a new, great, and wonderful world. Dormant forces, faculties, and talents come alive, and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. Wayne Dyer What is wickedness? It is that which many time and often thou hast already seen and known in the world. And so oft as anything doth happen that might otherwise trouble thee, let this memento presently come to thy mind, that it is that which thou hast already often seen and known. Generally above and below thou shalt find but the same things, the very same things, whereof ancient stories, middle-age stories, and fresh stories are full whereof towns are full, and houses full. There is nothing that is new. All things that are, are both usual and of little continuance. He who knows and pretends not to know is on top. Who without knowledge pretends to be knowledgeable, he is sick. Do not put off important medical checkups. To be even-minded is the greatest virtue. Heraclitus You're the only person who has to be with yourself 100% of the time, so start liking yourself and who you are. Man conquers the world by conquering himself. Don't be distracted by criticism. Remember, the only taste of success some people get is to take a bite out of you. Zig Ziglar Once you have adapted your body to plain simple living, do not make a show of it. When you drink water, do not declare on every occasion that you are drinking water. If you want to train yourself to endure hardships, do it by yourself, away from other people. Do not embrace statues, but if you are ever thirsty, take a mouthful of cold water and spit it out without telling anyone. Nothing is worth more than this day. In the face of adversity, Remember that diamonds are made under pressure. You came empty-handed and you will leave empty-handed. Bhagavad Gita
We live in an age when unnecessary things are only necessities. Don't let people know too much about you. Most people don't care, and some secretly want you to fail. When another person makes you suffer, it is because he suffers deeply within himself, and his suffering is spilling over. He does not need punishment. He needs help. That's the message he is sending. Thich Nhat Hanh. I will attach myself as a minister and follower to him. I have the same movements as he has. I have the same desires. In a word, I have the same will. There is no shutting out for me, but for those who would force their in. Why then do not I force my way in? Because I know that nothing good is distributed within to those who enter. But when I hear any man called fortunate because he is honored by Caesar, I say, what does he happen to get? A province. Does he also obtain an opinion such as he ought? The office of a prefect. Does he also obtain the power of using his office well? Why do I still strive to enter? A man scatters dried figs and nuts. The children seize them and fight with one another. Men do not, for they think them to be a small matter. But if a man should throw about shells, even the children do not seize them. Provinces are distributed. Let children look to that. Money is distributed. Let children look to that. Praetorships, consulships are distributed. Let children scramble for them. Let them be shut out, beaten, kiss the hands of the giver, of the slaves. But to me these are only dried figs and nuts. What then, if you fail to get them, while Caesar is scattering them about? Do not be troubled. If a dried fig come into your lap, take it and eat it, for so far you may value even a fig. But if I shall stoop down and turn another over, or be turned over by another, and shall flatter those who have got into chamber, neither is a dried fig worth the trouble, nor anything else of the things which are not good, which the philosophers have persuaded me not to think good. Show me the swords of the guards, See how big they are, and how sharp. What then do these big and sharp swords do? They kill. And what does a fever do? Nothing else. And what else a tile? Nothing else. Would you then have me to wonder at these things and worship them, and go about as the slave of all of them? I hope that this will not happen. But when I have once learned that everything which has come into existence must also go out of it, that the universe may not stand still nor be impeded, I no longer consider it any difference whether a fever shall do it, or a tile, or a soldier. But if a man must make a comparison between these things, I know that the soldier will do it with less trouble and quicker. When, then, I neither fear anything which a tyrant can do to me, nor desire anything which he can give, why do I still look on with wonder? Why am I still confounded? Why do I fear the guards? Why am I pleased if he speaks to me in a friendly way and receives me? And why do I tell others how he spoke to me? Is he a Socrates? Is he a Diogenes that his praise should be a proof of what I am? Have I been eager to imitate his morals? But I keep up the play and go to him, and serve him so long as he does not bid me to do anything foolish or unreasonable. But if he says to me, Go and bring Leon of Salamis, I say to him, Seek another, for I am no longer playing. Lead him away. I follow, that is part of the play. But your head will be taken off, does the tyrant's head always remain where it is and the heads of you who obey him? But you will be cast out unburied. If the corpse is I, I shall be cast out. But if I am different from the corpse, speak more properly according as the fact is, and do not think of frightening me. 
These things are formidable to children and fools. But if any man has once entered a philosopher's school and knows not what he is, he deserves to be full of fear and to flatter those whom afterward he used to flatter. If he has not yet learned that he is not flesh, nor bones, nor sinews, but he is that which makes use of these parts of the body, and governs them, and follows the appearances of things. Yes, but this talk makes us despise the laws. And what kind of talk makes men more obedient to the laws who employ such talk? And the things which are in the power of a fool are not law. And yet see how this talk makes us disposed as we ought to be even to these men, since it teaches us to claim in opposition to them none of the things in which they are able to surpass us. This talk teaches us, as to the body, to give it up, as to property, to give that up also, as to children, parents, brothers, to retire from these, to give up all. It only makes an exception of the opinions, which even Zeus has willed to be the select property of every man. What transgression of the laws is there here? What folly? Where you are superior and stronger, there I give way to you. On the other hand, where I am superior, do you yield to me? For I have studied this, and you have not. It is your study to live in houses with floors formed of various stones, how your slaves and dependents shall serve you, how you shall wear fine clothing, have many hunting men, lute players, and tragic actors. Do I claim any of these? Have you made any study of opinions and of your own rational faculty? Do you know of what parts it is composed? How they are brought together? How they are connected? What powers it has? And of what kind? Why then are you vexed? If another, who has made it his study, has the advantage over you in these things. But these things are the greatest. And who hinders you from being employed about these things and looking after them? And who has a better stock of books, of leisure, of persons to aid you? Only turn your mind at last to these things. Attend, if it be only a short time, to your own ruling faculty. Consider what this is that you possess and whence it came this which uses all others and tries them and selects and rejects. But so long as you employ yourself about externals, you will possess them as no man else does. But you will have this, such as you choose to have it, sordid and neglected. Sometimes we create our own heartbreaks through expectation. He who is to be a good ruler must have first been ruled. To avoid criticism, say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. Aristotle. There is no enjoying the possession of anything valuable unless one has someone to share it with. Don't react in anger immediately. Wait for it to subside. What is said or done in anger is irreversible. When you are inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bonds. Your mind transcends limitations, your consciousness expands in every direction, and you find yourself in a new, great, and wonderful world. Dormant forces, faculties, and talents come alive, and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. Wayne Dyer What they have done they will still do, although thou shouldst hang thyself. First, let it not trouble thee, for all things both good and evil come to pass according to the nature and general condition of the universe, and within a very little while all things will be at an end. No man will be remembered. As now of Africanus, for example, 
and Augustus, it has already come to pass. Then secondly, fix thy mind upon the thing itself, look into it, and remembering thyself, that thou art bound nevertheless to be a good man, and what it is that thy nature requireth of thee as thou art a man, be not diverted from what thou art about, and speak that which seemeth unto thee most just, only speak it kindly, modestly, and without hypocrisy. Control your finances, or lack of them will control you. The world is a tragedy to those who feel, but a comedy to those who think. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Ralph Waldo Emerson Making mistakes is better than faking perfection. Never limit your view of life by any past experience. Letting go gives us freedom, and freedom is the only condition for happiness. If, in our heart, we still cling to anything, anger, anxiety, or possessions, we cannot be free. Teach not Han. That logic is necessary. When one of those who were present said, Persuade me that logic is necessary, he replied, Do you wish me to prove this to you? The answer was, Yes. Then I must use a demonstrative form of speech. This was granted. How then will you know if I am cheating you by argument? The man was silent. Do you see, said Epictetus, that you yourself are admitting that logic is necessary? If without it you cannot know so much as this, whether logic is necessary or not necessary. The man who asks a question is a fool for a minute. The man who does not ask is a fool for life. See people for who they are, not who you need them to be. We are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more in imagination than in reality. Seneca Keep your fears to yourself, but share your courage with others. Today is the oldest you've ever been in your life, and the youngest you'll ever be again. Don't worry about failures. Worry about the chances you miss when you don't even try. Jack Canfield From my brother Severus, to be kind and loving to all them of my house and family, by whom also I came to the knowledge of Thracia and Helvidius, and Cato, and Dio, and Brutus. He it was also that did put me in the first conceit and desire of an equal commonwealth, administered by justice and equality, and of a kingdom wherein should be regarded, nothing more than the good and welfare of the subjects, of him also to observe a constant tenor, not interrupted with any other cares and distractions, in the study and esteem of philosophy, to be bountiful and liberal in the largest measure, always to hope the best, and to be confident that my friends love me, in whom I moreover observed open dealing towards those whom he reproved at any time, and that his friends might without all doubt or much observation know what he would or would not, so open and plain was he. If you hate, then you have been defeated. Learn to trust your first instinct on decisions. Nothing exists except atoms and free space. Everything else is opinion. Democritus.
It is not a mistake anymore. It is a decision. Numbing the pain for a while will make it worse when you finally feel it. We have more possibilities available in each moment than we realize. Tishnat Han. Will this querulousness, this murmuring, this complaining and dissembling never be at an end? What then is it that troubleth thee? Doth any new thing happen unto thee? What doest thou so wonder at, at the cause or the matter? Behold, either by itself is either of that weight and moment indeed. And besides these there is not anything. But thy duty towards the gods also, it is time thou shouldst acquit thyself of it with more goodness and simplicity. Do not tell anyone what you think or what you know. Keep your secrets to yourself because a friend of today could be an enemy by tomorrow. Success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. It is better to perform your own duties imperfectly than to master the duties of another. Bhagavad Gita The only time you should ever look back is to see how far you've come. You are confined only by the walls you build yourself. To be free, you must transcend the illusion of separation. Papaji Of Diognetus, not to busy myself about vain things and not easily to believe those things which are commonly spoken by such as take upon them to work wonders, and by sorcerers, or prestidigitators, and impostors, concerning the power of charms, and their driving out of demons or evil spirits, and the like. Not to keep quails for the game, nor to be mad after such things, not to be offended with other men's liberty of speech, and to apply myself unto philosophy. Him also I must thank that ever I heard first Bacchius, then Tandasis and Marcianus, and that I did write dialogues in my youth, and that I took liking to the philosopher's little couch and skins, and such other things, which by the Grecian discipline are proper to those who profess philosophy. Never give up on something you really want. It's difficult to wait but it's more difficult to regret. Never say maybe. If you want to say no, say no. The fates lead the willing but drag the unwilling. Clinthus. One of the most important things you can accomplish is just being yourself. Do not be emotionally attached to anyone. People change. Even your best friends may probably turn into strangers one day. The ego is a social institution with no physical reality. The ego is a collective social fiction. Alan Watts Remember that that which sets a man at work and hath power over the affections to draw them either one way or the other way is not any external thing properly, but that which is hidden within every man's dogmata and opinions. That, that is rhetoric, that is life, that, to speak true, is man himself. As for thy body, which as a vessel or a case compasseth thee about, and the many and curious instruments that it hath annexed unto it, let them not trouble thy thoughts. For of themselves they are but as a carpenter's axe, 
but that they are born with us and naturally sticking unto us. But otherwise, without the inward cause that hath power to move them and to restrain them, those parts are of themselves of no more use unto us than the shuttle is of itself to the weaver, or the pen to the writer, or the whip to the coachman. Effort never goes in vain. Keep to yourself. Stay away from idiots. Stupidity is contagious. When you reach the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. Franklin D. Roosevelt In the face of adversity, remember that diamonds are made under pressure. You have three choices in life. You can watch things happen, make things happen, or wonder what the hell happened. Change is inevitable. Progress is optional. Tony Robbins Not to be slack and negligent, or loose and wanton in thy actions, nor contentious and troublesome in thy conversation, nor to rove and wander in thy fancies and imaginations, not basely to contract thy soul, nor boisterously to sally out with it, or furiously to launch out as it were, nor ever to want employment. For a man to achieve all that is demanded of him, he must regard himself as greater than he is. No one cares except family. Start saving your money. Don't spend it on homes you can't afford, fancy cars, and running your credit cards to the max. In the end, you'll be much happier. To be wronged is nothing, unless you continue to remember it. Confucius Haters are confused admirers who can't understand why everybody else likes you. Being defeated is often a temporary condition. Giving up is what makes it permanent. You don't need to be better than anyone else. You just need to be better than you used to be. Wayne Dyer As thou thyself, whoever thou art, were made for the perfection and consummation, being a member of it, of a common society, so must every action of thine tend to the perfection and consummation of a life that is truly sociable. What action soever of thine, therefore, that either immediately or afar off hath not reference to the common good, that is an exorbitant and disorderly action. Yea, it is seditious, as one among the people who from such and such a consent and unity should factiously divide and separate himself. By selfish impulses, to kick against fate in the present and to mistrust the future, Change before you have to. The struggles you face introduce you to your strengths. Epictetus Your friends want you to do good but not better than them. As is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is but how good it is, is what matters. To realize your dreams, you must first imagine them as if they have already been fulfilled. Neville Goddard Will either passengers or patients find fault and complain, either the one if they be well carried, or the others if well cured. 
do they take care for any more than this? The one, that their shipmaster may bring them safe to land, and the other, that their physician may affect their recovery? Resilience is knowing that you are the only one that has the power and the responsibility to pick yourself up. Rather go to bed without dinner than to rise in debt.